what it was posted as. <clears throat> Doug, whenever you're ready to start, if you'll just wave to me, I'd go for it. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to call the meeting to order at, uh, for the Board of Selectmen at uh, 540. Okay. Yep. Yes. <laughs> How about the fruit committee? <laughs> That's on the side. Is the Board of Health? Not yet. That'll be your Board of Health. No, you are the Board of Health, health right? But, but I hadn't called that part of the meeting to order yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I expect my we, we may need that chair. We may need that chair for Jay, because I think he's coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Jay Wallace. Well, that's all right. They don't, have to, sit here. they don't have to sit together. Well, but he needs to be at the table. <laughs> we we, we like to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it just bring in the one. Legally, we're not a. Is there a personal meeting for the finance committee or not? No. So we're. we're all this set, is we're just safe. personnel and select boards yeah. for, for 530 to 630. And then 630, it's the same. We're safe. Board. See, we don't have to have a, meet, a posted meeting, and you can talk all you yeah. want. Can I talk anything? Really? Can Absolutely. I be like the selectman to come to the finance committee and talk Absolutely. to them if they want? <laughs> <laughs> or the capital improvement committee? Yeah. That's the one. Are you complaining again? No, I'm commenting. State, stating facts. <laughs> True facts, too. Are we, are, we, are, we are we being publicized? Yes, yes the cameras are, are rolling. Okay. Which side of my face is getting? Is the cider getting hard? The that bald spot <laughs> up here. <laughs> and no, he's cut, he's cut the Wendy on this one. Okay. Do I sit next to Wendy? They make sure the round be on television. That's right. <laughs> Most people can't hear me. Oh, I'll put it back for you. Do we want to wait a little bit? No. Okay. All right. Um, we're getting down to the, I want to say short strokes because there's still a lot of them left, but we need to actually focus on um, what we're going to do about the town administrator's position how we're going to um, tackle it, solve it, and resolve where we are at this point in time with it. Would somebody take notes that Tom's name isn't on there? <clears throat> well, we had the important stuff. I'm not sure which memo you're talking about at this point. But anyways, <clears throat> so um, we haven't done this in a lot of years, so I'd like to open up the floor to discussion as to where we, we think the kicking off point should go and what are the most important things to get accomplished uh, in a, achieving the uh, goal of hiring a new town administrator and whether the administrative roles are... Um, changed any with the personnel that we've already hired and as in other words it, it's open field at this point from my point of view, uh, our report as to what they thought after interviewing some people in the town and I'd like to carry that forward to look at how it should, should progress and um, at what speed so at that point, um, I'll open it up, and if nobody talks, I'll continue to talk. That's their punishment. So, uh, anybody have any points, thoughts, or? Wait a minute. You mean I have to talk into this? We'd like everybody to be able to hear. Okay, you can probably hear anyways. Uh, yeah, introduce yourself. Oh, sure. Skip Olmstead, member of the Finance Committee, member of the Personnel Committee. Let's go around the table. Joanne Carney, member of Personnel Committee. Marie Guerin, member of Personnel Committee. Dave Wolfram, Select Board. Mark Gilmore, Select Board. Wendy Foxman, Interim Town Administrator. You're Bob sitting here. from the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. I don't know if I should be up here or not. But yeah, a former Select Board. Any, a former, select, like former School here. Committee like member. Many, many years at the town. And you brought the apples. You can stay. <laughs> feels that they have a real valid thought they want to bring into this is welcome to come to the table. This is not exclusive by any chance or any thought. So the closer you are, the better you can hear, the more input we'd like to take. This is just focusing on where we go from here. 
it's a pretty good size endeavor, and uh, we'd like to make sure it gets done uh, correctly because we'll be hopefully um, enjoying it for a long period of time. So. Okay, so I had basically two major concerns with the report. One, uh, the, some of the people were or not interviewed, and I'm not sure why or, or what, but I thought there were a number of people who probably would have had a fair amount to say and uh, who had substantial experience in the town who weren't interviewed. And I'll just read off the names rather than say. Uh, <clears throat> and this is strictly in alphabetical order. Uh, Tom Clark, whose name is not on here but was supposed to be on there. Uh, John Cudair, current assessor, uh, former selectman, former Frontier School Committee member. Let me read off what these people did. Ken Cutterback, current school committee member, former school building committee member, and former planning board member. Uh, Robert Decker, current Frontier School Committee member, current DDIC member, former school committee member, and former planning board member. Gordon Oakes, former finance committee member and former town accountant. Uh, me, uh, Skip Olmstead, current finance committee member, current personnel committee member, former school committee member, former school building committee member, former Frontier School Committee member, former DDIC member, and former planning board member. John Paturic, Sr., current finance committee member, current personnel committee member, current DDIC member, former selectman, former school building committee member, Mary Raymond, current uh, school committee member, or, yeah, current Frontier School Committee member, former school building committee member, and David Rords, who's here, who is a current assessor. All of these people have 20 or more years' experience in either elected or appointed positions for the town. Uh, they weren't interviewed. I thought they should. Uh, essentially, uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of the, the report that I thought was was kind of boilerplate, and, and uh, you know, maybe that's good or bad. I'm not sure. The town, in the report, the town was compared with the other 196 towns with populations greater than 5,000. Uh, in that group, Deerfield may be, is one of the smallest, and it may be the smallest, and I didn't think it made a whole lot of sense to compare us with all the other towns. If we were talking about comparing us with towns, I think it should have been restricted to towns with, say, population between 3,000 and 7,000, and towns within the western four counties, Worcester, Franklin, Hampshire, Hamden, five counties, and Berkshire. Uh, but be that as it may. There were several areas that I agreed with the report. <coughs> we, uh, <coughs> and I, this is going to take another about, about a minute, and then I'm going to stop. If that's... Well, by, by, I don't mean to shut anybody off or anything, but the, the issue is that I think that if we're going to tackle this, have all that information dumped on the table without being able to sift through it is going to be very detrimental to the you, process. You've got a I know I haven't yeah, yeah, had it, but in the same token, we need to at least try to get some of these into a prioritized list okay. of what's, what we think is important. So please try to keep members at what you agree and items that are important so that we can actually start. Well, I guess my areas. point there was so how going. valid is the DOR report? And that is a concern, given the people who were not interviewed, given the towns that we were compared with. Uh, there were a number of recommendations that I did agree with. I agree that the job description needs to be rewritten. I agree that there should be a screening committee uh, to search out candidates for the permanent town administrator, but only after the job description is rewritten. <coughs> I agree that the town administrator needs to be evaluated on an annual basis. I agree with the recommendations outlined in this section called improving board of selectmen practices. I agreed in general uh, that members of the BOS, board of selectmen, should refrain from membership on ad hoc committees. And I agreed that the board of selectmen should relinquish their role as board of health. But those are, those are my opinions. They're not facts or anything, and everyone else could certainly have different opinions. There are a number of recommendations that I disagree with. I disagree that the position of town administrator should be formalized by a town bylaw. 
you know, I think the Board of Selectmen are perfectly capable of making the decision as to what the, ultimately what the position needs to be and what they need. I disagree that the salary of the town administrator should be increased above that of other department heads. It should be in the same salary range. And I disagree that expanding the Board of Select from three to five serves any particularly useful purposes. Uh, the long and the short of it is that my preference would be for a town administrator who would be considered, I guess, a weak administrator. A what? A weak, weak. as opposed to a strong administrator. And that has to do with the authorities granted that person by the position. It has nothing to do with physical strength or yeah. stamina and, and process. It, the week is just uh, as we do now with uh, um, other positions. A weak position means you don't have hiring and firing authorities is one, an example. So it would be directed by um, the position, the job description. Um, I think that weak and strong used to be a form of trying to formalize what the job description was without coming up with a job description. I'm hoping that we can focus on the job description and not worry about whether we categorize them one way or another because I think the connotation, as just an example, is um, a negative connotation without really good merit. I think the job description should describe what the person's duties are and that the position would be entitled representative of what their duties are. <clears throat> so I'd rather not get caught up in that if we can help it at all unless it helps people understand the differences between one attribute and another. Um, any of these points that you want to emphasize or amplify um, or you have disagreement with points to them or where do we go from here? Thank you. Good evening. I'm Marie Guerin from the Personnel Board. Um, I do want to make one comment about what Skip mentioned in terms of salary for the town administrator, although I think we have to go back to a more philosophical question. But just for that one point, um, I do agree with him in terms of the salary does not in terms of my experience, the salary does not have to be higher than those people that you supervise as long as the supervision is designated as administrative supervision. I think that would have to be pointed out, not supervision directly over the person where you're doing uh, the evaluation um, or bringing up disciplinary charges or whatever. It has to be strictly administrative supervision. Therefore, you could maintain the salary as lower. But I think um, philosophically what I'm, and I'm new to the personnel board, um, what I think needs to be done is um, the board of selectmen, I would think, would need to have a discussion about what exactly they want and how much time they can donate to the management of daily operations at the town. That, I think, is the basic question, which would make either for a week or, or even having an administrator or not having an administrator. So I think um, that is what I would like to see done, a discussion around that with comments from the Board of Selectmen on that. Thank you. Want to go first? <laughs> sure, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I said you want to go first. Oh, I'll go first. <laughs> I have no problem. Um, I haven't got the managerial skills or, or mindset that I would like to say that I could claim victory in this in this arena. But um, the time that I've been here, I've uh, felt that the position itself. Um, became way too much of a hodgepodge of things and really no direction, and that's part of the Board of, Board of Selectmen's issue, but at the same time, we're still trying to run the ship, and this gives us a chance to actually change how we ran the ship. My gut feeling and what we did when we started hiring um, the new police chief and the new um, highway director was to hire somebody that had managerial skills of personnel and um, Money, money restraints, and could do um, 
review of plans, procedures, could make up policies, uh, actually do some of the HR that needs to be done at the department level. And they were paid appropriate, in my estimation, were paid um, in that light, having those duties and those responsibilities. <clears throat> During the time of the, the two individuals, the police chief and the fire chief, uh, the police chief in the highway garage, or what is his name, the director of safety, or I keep changing the title, but Sean Patterson's position. Um, it should have relieved some of the pressure in, in our office because they should have been able to take over a lot of the um, controls and reviews and approvals of things that were done out of the Board of Selectmen's office, uh, contract renewals and those type of things. Um, but we were never able to um, break down the barriers of that division of labor. It was so intertwined in the day-to-day -day routines of what the, what the um, town offices were doing. Um, and we never really had a good administrative uh, support structure that we could farm out the people that needed to go help support other groups and things that I thought. And again, this is my observations from what I'm seeing, and I'm not here 40 hours a week by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I really felt that that was something I could not um, or did not achieve was getting that definition of what are the descriptions, what are the jobs, how do they really work. Um, and that's why we are where we are now is I'd like to see us bring it around to what is really the expectations of the jobs. Um, and I honestly believe that um, we can't afford to have a bunch of managers. We need to keep them focused with the right number of people reporting to them and them reporting to the appropriate way to get the job done. So yeah, I think the Board of Selection needs, the Board of Selectmen needs to change the way they do business uh, to make sure that um, that management skill is um, understood and we don't have um, more than one boss for any individual, in my opinion. You only have one boss. Um, and in that case, you always have somebody that's uh, accountable for the process. We had round robins going from, from offices, not even people, but from offices. And that lends to nobody being responsible because the office is not going to change anything. It's got to be down to the management skills that happen. So that's what I'm looking for out of this process. Whether I'm right, wrong, and different, we'll see as we go through this endeavor because I sincerely hope that we drive to something that's beneficial to the town of our size. And I want to thank Skip for making a, a, a really good observation and putting the, the ground rules out a little bit because this is just a document of suggestions and thoughts for us to, to digest. Where I spend five to ten hours a week dealing with this stuff, uh, these guys spent two weeks trying to digest what we've been trying to understand for many years, and they just scratched the surface, and this is just something to help us. It's not something to drive us. It's not the rules, and it's not the, 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 the Bible in which we should live to. <clears throat> Deerfield should create its own uh, destiny in this process, and I'm hoping that we can um, achieve that process through here. Okay. Um, I agree with Mark on a lot of points. Um, you know, as a part-time board, it, we cannot facilitate a $14 million a year budget. We need somebody that can run a budget. Um, we're here to help the town along. We don't really run the town. We have managers in town that do that. Um, I don't believe in the real strong position that the DOR says for the administrator, but I don't really believe in the weak one either. The administrator should be the HR director for the town. Right now we have a lot of separate departments in town that handle the hiring, firing practices differently. Uh, with a town like this, you can't afford it because once one department does it, it sets a precedent for all the other departments. We have to have a consistent 
policy throughout. Uh, you know, I was absolutely amazed by the job description. Uh, this is probably one of the longest job descriptions I've ever read that said the least. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I, I went through it several times, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, you know, somebody had way too much time on their hands with the typewriter. The current one. The current one. And, you know, it's, um, and here again, you know, I, I do have some management background, and, you know, I view the Board of Selectmen as more like a Board of Directors for a corporation. And then we have to make and appoint the appropriate people there. Uh, you know, when it comes to the budgetary and things like that, we need a stronger administrator that the department heads know that the budgetary things go into the administrator and those all copulated together so they can come together as a unit to the Board of Selectmen. And we don't have to be going to all the different boards and trying to compile everything because it really gets confusing. You know, it's, I, I've only been doing this job for a short time, but um, I've sat on a couple meetings that there's two, three boards sitting together, and it's, you know, if it wasn't for Tom's apples, I'd probably go crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things that just, you know, you don't have that continuity in the things that you have to look at. Um, you know, and here again, it's the hiring and firing practices of the managers in the town. I think the Board of Selectmen has to have the influence on that. We have to make sure that we are hiring strong people. But we also have to rely on, like, the personnel board, you know, uh, looking at the personnel that we're hiring and making sure that they're doing the right checks behind them and everything and that we have the right candidates put in front of us so that we can make a logical decision. You know, it's... Uh, you know, it's not politics. It's just running the town the way the town should run. And it's, uh, I think we've got a number of challenges. Obviously, this year we've got a lot of people leaving and we have to hire. Uh, we've, I think we're making an appointment tonight. Yes. For, it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. So, um, yes. but, you know, that's a first step. Uh, I'd like to present a uh, letter from, from Bruce St. Peter's. He's with we, we have the letter here, and as soon as David gets through with his um, section of this, we'll come on up and we'll talk about it. Okay, we'll. Yep. Yeah. It's just. Uh, we this said Wendy, uh, but if uh, either one of us could perhaps read it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. That'd be good. Just let David. Uh, and, you know, it's. Um, sure. Thank you. So we don't break his thoughts up in the middle of this, and then we'll move on to yours. You know, it's. You know, we're all working together here, and our common goal is to make sure that the town is run as well as it can and be as stable as it has been in the past. You know, um, uh, Skip put out quite a, an illustrious list of people that have been involved with the town, uh, that helped guide the town and things. Some of the things I don't agree with, some of them I did. But, um, you know, it's the way it is. So, you know, it's... I think with the short time that the DOR did work in town, they did a halfway decent job. The only problem is I think a lot of what they put out is a boilerplate that they put out to a lot of different towns. So that's just my opinion. So, it, uh, yeah. so that's all I have to say right now. Did we hit any of the points you were looking for? Yes, we did. Thank all you. Right, thank you. David? You want to no, no, you're good. It, 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 it's up to you. I'll, I'll be happy. Okay. Come on up. Yes, Thank Bruce St. Peter's called me this afternoon and wanted to me to review it. And I said, go ahead and present it. It's from you. So then I gave it to Dave to share as being on the Board of Assessors. Ms. Foxman, I have read this, the report of Town Administrator Position Report Assessment dated October 2013 by DLS. I believe that it, re that it reasonably accurate in its obs observations and conclusions. I agree that the town needs to have a strong administrator, and I think that the recommendations one to eight of all deserve consideration as they are, have all been an inherent problem to the efficient operation of the local government. Although the present system has worked to date, the town needs to look forward to as to how to be more efficient and responsive to its residents and neighbors. 
there does seem does, there does not seem to be a commitment by its residents to operate the town has been as has been the case with the present and past select board. This has been quite evident with the past few elections and especially the more recent when there was not even a contest for an open seat. Now that there has been a substantial and continues to be a personal turnover with new people, it would be an opportune time to give serious consideration to changing governance and management style. There seems to be an opinion that the previous problems with administrators is the norm. The fact is that an administrator, strong or weak, is an employee under the policy direction of the select board. Therefore, with annual performance reviews and a clear set of directions as advised by the report, an administrator or an employee can be applauded or disciplined. In the interim, he or she can manage operation of the town while the select board focuses on broad policies and major decisions. There also seems to be some resistance to increasing the salary range. Are we saying we expect a town administrator that manages the entire town to be paid less than individual department heads? There are also some grumbling that the town can't afford it. The town took over one million from free cash for fiscal year 2014 with no plans as to how as to balancing next year's budget. I would assume that a strong and independent town administrator would have seriously addressed the potential budget shortfall. Items seven and eight, I think, are, are very important. Item seven appears to have serious, seriously overloaded the time requirements of the select board. Those expectations, along with almost quite, that al almost require someone to be retired or have a forgiving employer to meet the, uh, the expectations. With consideration to adopt those recommendations, maybe there would be more interest in running for a position on the select board as time requirements and re responsibilities of those items are daunting. Item eight is extremely accurate and should be adopted. I believe item nine should possibly be brought to the town, to the next town meeting. I do not believe the board should be expanded, but there are some people that believe it should be expanded. On appendix A, sample town administrative job description, it appears to be somewhat complete. However, I strongly disagree with items E and I those two items are interfering with any power and or authority of the personnel board to review or recommend for any personnel to be re reduced. I would like the personnel board to become stronger if there, are, if there becomes a strong administrator. I am sorry that I cannot attend this meeting tonight to present my visions in person. Bruce St. Peters. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. What, what are number eight and nine? Number eight is the one that talks about um, uh, rotate, rotate rotating the board of selectmen yeah. chair. Okay. Nine is expanding the board from three to five. Three to five, right. Yeah. And seven is the one that talks about uh, Where's the board of health? improving the board's practices. I'll step aside. I think he has a lot of good thoughts here worth considering, and uh, I think it's well done. I agree with with uh, Thank you. Thank you. What do we want to say? Does the, where's the board of selectmen? What would they like to have happen? I mean, it's really under your direction, the rest of us. Well, this meeting is for us to get information to give good direction. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, I personally, I call the meeting. I feel that it's necessary for us to listen to what the townspeople want and what the person, and have the personnel board hear it at exactly the same time. And get direction for what we think is important. I'm not up here looking for somebody to tell me how to do it. I mean, I appreciate Mr. St. Peter's points of view and everything else, and I read the documentation and I have opinions on those. And I, sh I appreciate his opinions, 
But I'm not looking for somebody to dictate what we think we should do or shouldn't do. It's what does the town really feel are the key points that need to be addressed in this change of personnel at this point. It's hard to make a lot of changes when we have people that have been in this town in employment for upwards of 30 years. Um, and the last, the first two that went had 30 years plus. So giving them directions on how to do their job from this position, we didn't really keep pace with the times because they did their jobs. There wasn't need for that reprimand or that review or that process. Maybe towards the end, times changed enough that we wish we had done something differently, but it wasn't the time to make the changes. We now have an opportunity to make changes. We have a uh, interim in place that has negotiated a few of these things that, uh, through the process. We have a chance to listen to the, to the people. As I said, I have my opinions. I've driven my opinions to figure out whether I'm right or wrong for the last two years, but they're not everybody putting me into the process. And I'd like to hear those before I ask for directions or help or support to achieve the goals that really the town should be achieving, not an individual should be trying to achieve. My, I guess the question really was the personnel committee. From my point of view, I kind of thought what we need to do is to rewrite the job description. Absolutely. But, the point, but, you know, rewriting the job description, and I'm going to use the words weak and strong again, from the basis of a strong administrator or a weak administrator, it, it's a different, Absolutely. different animal. So yep. I guess we, those are the kinds of things that I think if you want the personnel, and you want the personnel committee to write the job description. Right. I'm asking you to wait till we hear from the town yeah. before I give you my interpretation of what I think is on the table. Is that what this meeting is for? That's this, what this is not meeting. the entire town. No. What I see is um, an absence of, we, we have some people's opinions, which are all valid. Every right. person's opinion is valid. We need to bring these in to come up with a list of criteria mm -hmm. that we bring then forward and say, this is the list. What do people in town believe should be the criteria for the town administrator? And there's criteria for a describing how somebody's going to do their job. There's also criteria for how they're going to perform their job. Correct. And so that's where I see an opportunity with uh, a new position, with any new position in town, that we should have that. We're going to describe and we're going to say how you're going to perform that. There also seems to be an absence of a clear chain of command and line authority mm -hmm. that needs to be tightened. Um, and we need to factor into there those um, competencies that include leadership skills, people skills, consensus building that perhaps wasn't there before in the town administrator that we need when they're going to have an oversight, if not direct line authority, over department managers, department heads. There needs to be that uh, that go he, that person's going to be a go-to person. If yeah, and going back to whether it's a weak or a strong, absolutely. But in the same token, um, I respectfully disagree that the go-to person needs to be the town administrator. I think that the department heads are capable of being go-to people to cover their region of what needs to happen and the well, well, again, that, that's an opinion where we're not deciding tonight what, but, what is going to okay, be Okay, so I but, misunderstood. I thought you were giving me an instruction no, but that it, it's it sounded like, like everyone else had had an opinion. So we need to take all those together Thank and you. come up with, with a master list and then have another meeting the, where town people, it could be either on the web, it could be in the, in the written... Well, anybody form, that somebody could have an opinion there has to be then a time where we're, you're going to cut that off saying this is what we have for a list of criteria this is perhaps from personnel board the uh, position description and then have people weigh in on opinion and we go from there but it can't go on for months and months because the That's, interim town administrator is right. not going to be here and I don't think it serves any purpose to keep no, and I, I think that Discussing this it. is a this was a grassroots way of getting to the people. It's going to be in the newspaper. It's going to be at 
the local establishments. It's going to be pretty well publicized by the end of the week. And the misunderstandings and the understandings will be amplified through the town. If it looks like we've got a big void, then we need to have another meeting. But if it's people coming in with their opinions and expressing them to us, we can put those into the categories and manage that and look at what, it, what are the important things that we need to consider that the townspeople are looking for. Um, and this, that in this type of setting, there's no way you can um, reach everybody and no way that you can make sure that it's not just a small click of two or three groups of people who want to um, change the face and they get together and orchestrate and, and administrate uh, a document that makes it look like it's vitally important. Whatever we do, um, we need to make sure that we um, balance it and, and look at what we can what we can expend at it. Um, I just wanted to say that when the provision um, for the question was given up, um, the last person the resigned. resigned, and there was a space. I did talk to Bernie, and I was willing to take out papers to run for that position on Julie Polacco. Um, and But I'm also a town employee, so I was looking for just to fill in the spot for nine months so that someone could come up and want to run. But then David went through and I said, well, I'll step back and then he can run and then he'll get an idea of what the position entails. Um, he'll find out if he wants to run. People can see what a new face has to offer. Um, and so while it wasn't, you know, he, he didn't have anyone to run against, but there was, it wasn't a case that there was no one else out there. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, when I was in that process, um, my husband ran into Carolyn and Carolyn was very clear about saying it's not just a part-time job, that it's a big commitment. And I had a chance to meet her the other day, and she re reiterated that fact. She made it sound like it was more of a full-time job. And just from that alone, I think that um, having five selectmen might spread that burden um, amongst the selectmen if it's such a big job. And then the other thing that I would throw out is that our population is much more diverse than it used to be. Um, and the three people that are uh, on the select board now are all grandparents or close to grandparents. And um, we don't have <laughs> someday maybe grandparents. Grandparents age. But age of there's a chance that, you know, there's 40 years old, 40 year old people out there. And the thing is, is we've got really solid select board members. And we don't necessarily want to get rid of them, but we do want some new blood. So how do we get the new blood in without hanging ourselves out to dry if we unload the old guys? So that's why I'm thinking five sounds all right to me. We're here to deal with the interim <laughs> administrator's position. Right, right. But and the thing I, about it is I, I've... It was already brought up in the morning. Yeah, so I'm just it's part of the DOR report. That. But that's all. I'm, I'm trying to curb it from going yeah. again. I'm not yeah. chastising anybody. Please, I hope everybody can can leave the the um, personal thought of this. As you know, it was not. I don't think anybody said that it was a problem with getting people to sit into the chair. It was somebody's opinion in that it's not personal and it's the it's factual. And I hope people could just say that. Listen, it is what it is, and let's change it. So. Okay. Um, Dick wants to speak, and can I speak after him? Or would you oh. like me to go first? I, I, I'm capable of seeing all okay. this. I really yeah, am. No, I just want to. Not my problem. Problem. Okay. Oh, I have no problem with you. <laughs> I, I'm joking. I, first, I need to uh, respond to Julie. Jay, will you? Turn it over. If it, has to do, if it has to do with five selectmen, I don't want to hear No, it. you're not going to hear you. five selectmen. We'll pick that I'm up at a later give date. I'm not going to any opinion about any of that DOR report, okay? First, I want to tell Julie. Introduce yourself, Dick. Oh, Dick Kalachewski. He's, he's probably, he's the, the 
I'll I'll run down. I'll run down that. My first uh, board member was I was a member hey. of the planning board. We don't have the time. Just we remember, you <laughs> with Tom Clark Come on, Miller, move to your move to your point. Board of Selectmen, Zoning Board, Building Commissioner, Board of Health Agent, Animal Inspector. Yeah. Now, I want to point out something that's very important to this meeting. I think you are going way too fast. Miss Wendy is not going to stay much longer. I do not want to see the boards rush into hiring the permanent town administrator. If Wendy won't stay until this can all be resolved, I would suggest that you hire another interim town administrator so we don't rush into something we have to live with forever. I'll take, the, I'll take that as a friendly um, observation and discussion, but we don't have any of the meat and potatoes on the table, so I don't want to predict how much time it's going to take. Well, that's what I want to do right after Wendy, okay? And, and then, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, uh, I there just, was somebody else raising their hand. I just wanted oh, to acknowledge I, it. I, I just wanted to say the same thing. The job description needs to start with the Board of Select one. The, the elected board officials, but I think the personnel board should be writing job descriptions of what's expected of a member of the board of selectmen. That should start at the top and then go to the administrator. We'll take it as a note, but I, I, uh, I, I would, <laughs> it's, it would be nice to have, sort of, but I don't think there's the, unless there's something in the law that uh, says that you define the job description of the board of selectmen. I think we ought to stay away from it. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Wendy Foxman. I'm the interim town administrator. I've been here since July 1st, and I'm having fun, and I'm enjoying working with all of you, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I have over 30 years of experience working with dozens of communities, hundreds of select boards, and all kinds of officials in local government in Western Mass and across the state. <clears throat> I want to point out uh, that the current job description reads, and this is several years old, and it may be earlier than 2009. What did I do with it? Because this seems to be an area of dispute. But it says that the statement of duties include that the employee is responsible for, for the provision of administrative and supervisory work overseeing the services provided by all of the town's departments, commissions, boards, and offices under the jurisdiction and policies of the Board of Selectmen. So it's the way it is. That's the job that exists. I understand that there are concerns in the proposed description that uh, the Department of Revenue has offered uh, related to appointing and hiring and that kind of thing. I, I certainly understand that concern, and I think that's definitely a no negotiable item. Um, but I would suggest that the personnel board <clears throat> take the proposed job description, pair it with the old job description. I agree with DOR. It's, and others who have said it's very long and it's cumbersome, um, but go through it and then make a recommendation to the board for their consideration, and, and that way we can, move to more, we can move forward more quickly. As you know, I'm anxious to move on, uh, and I would like to see a search committee formed, but yes, we do need a position description in place in order to even begin the hiring process. So... Um, that, that's the main thing I wanted to say. Thank you. Hi, I'm Keith Finan. Uh, I'm one of the newer members in town, so I don't think it's my place to, to say what we want. Uh, I'll make two observations, though. One is, in the last 20 years, the complexity of running any organization has gotten incredibly more and more complex and more demanding, especially when you've got 33 square miles of land and 5,000 residents and a school and all sorts of stuff. Um, so I, I just throw that out there as an observation, particularly as it relates to people who are volunteering their time in terms of running the board and the responsibility that, that entails. The other observation is that as I read the job description for the town manager, I saw an incredible amount of responsibility focused on that person, but no authority or very little authority. And frankly, I'm not sure 
what kind of talent you can get with that bifurcation of responsibility and lack of authority. So I just suggest that as you think about how you write the next job description, you need to be clear about what it is you're asking he or she to do and how you expect them to be able to accomplish that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I, I would just say that I understand your, your concern and tend to agree with it. They're not including There are three members of the, uh, of the personnel committee uh, sitting here tonight who have significant human resources backgrounds. So I think that there's a competent group to start from to put that job description together. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that we need is some direction from the selectmen as to what they think the position ought to look like. No. <clears throat> My name is uh, Ralph uh, Healy, and I'm uh, chairman of the uh, new DPW facility site down here. And uh, I've been in town now for about um, 12 years. Uh, I've gotten to know John Pachurk Sr. and Carolyn Ness quite well. Mark, I know you somewhat. We haven't had any real detailed discussions. And I've certainly read all of this information. I'm kind of aware of things as they've been going on over the last number of years. And I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I just felt I, I really need to. Uh, as some of you know, I, I had a relatively large business that was uh, maybe $10 million in sales when I sold it in 1998. This town is around, what, $14 million? 15 million a year. Hopefully less, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, to me, it is a business. Uh, it's a large business. And I have great, great concern for the uh, Board of Select People. Uh, you all are doing this amongst other things in life. I feel as though, as it's been said here tonight, it's a major undertaking running a town like this today with all of the constant rules and regulations that come into place, and I think it's way too much. I think the board should be more of an advisory position overseeing a town administrator. I strongly support a, I don't want to get into the details of weak or strong or salary or that type of thing, but I think you you really need, in all fairness to the managers, a, a town administrator whom they all go to. You need one point contact. I do believe, as I had in my own company, that each manager needs to be strong. They've got to have good personnel uh, skills and held accountable to that. But they need somebody that they can go to on any moment of a day. And that person needs to be quite skilled in knowing a lot about the state rules and regulations. So it's a very detailed kind of a job. I think the board should be able to back up and watch the overview of the town. My policy as president and owner of the company was, number one, safety. Then, number two was obviously the uh, direction of the business and where we were going and, and overseeing that. But I really counted on a general manager to execute the day in and day out details of the business. and. I know there's a lot of emotion in this. I understand pretty much through the papers or verbally where you all stand, and I'm not critical of that, but I, I do feel bad for the board because I think it's, it's just way too much to take on. And this notion that the town administrator is like dictatorial or in control or taking over, not by a long shot. Every town should break down to bylaws, rules, and regulations. And when that town administrator doesn't have those to go to, then it's time for them to propose it, go to the board, and get clarification or create the rule for it. But it's not an arbitrary, I'm in charge and I can do what I want. I think that it does have to follow the rules. And so from my own experience and having a, a very successful company and good managers and good employees, I think uh, the proper way is to change. Now, I concur with what uh, Richard is saying, that this maybe can't be done overnight, but I would strongly encourage that you do move in that direction. Thank you. Mark? 
Thank you. Yes. I just have a small point to make. You're Sarah Woodbury, uh, library director. And I, um, I've been trained as a librarian. I can't write an RFP. Um, so I need someone to go, uh, a go-to person uh, who knows the rules that uh, the former speaker was uh, mentioned. Um, well, let, me, let me make it something, um, make an observation. <clears throat> when I first started, we had a, an engineer that worked for us through the county government and they helped us with the RFPs. Um, every one of you that has a concern about how something's going to be run or whether it's going to be run or dropped, they're all valid and those are the things we want to make sure it doesn't get dropped. But the reality is Deerfield of the size of it cannot sustain having everything that is needed at its fingertips. It needs to create policies, procedures, and uh, a workforce that's cable capable of using the resources available to it to do the job. A lot of people have advocated for a specific thing. We're looking for a road to go, and whether it's the um, the policies, procedures, job descriptions, or things that get you down that road um, is filled with partnerships or um, engineering firms or people to get you there at a cost effective for what we need in place is what we need to kind of focus on, not on the simple desires of one or two processes. Um, and I, I hear what everybody's saying. I, I empathize with the thoughts. Um, but you have to understand that I'm looking for this committee to come together with a thought process that's going to change some of the things which we have been very lacking, which is the policy procedures and statements of that nature. <clears throat> and whose responsibility is it to write those things and whose responsibility is it to charge those things and who's to carry them out is something that's been very hard for the Board of Selectmen to, to uh, identify or define. And we've had many um, changes in the description of the administrator uh, from a secretary to a administrative secretary to a administrative controller to, and every year, couple of years we changed the title and kind of changed the job descriptions and we've never sat back and said what do we really want them to do. We adopted uh, thought processes that weren't Deerfield. And what I really am going to try to achieve is what is Deerfield and what does it need. And that those things need to be echoed through this process and we don't need to pay for a lot of things that we don't need because I think when we start putting engineering staff on, when we start putting other stuff on, you're going to find we can't afford it. We're not that big. So please understand, I'm looking for solutions, and those solutions come with a balance. So unfortunately, that concludes the hour that we had set aside for this portion of it. Um, I would really encourage anybody that has uh, feelings or um, questions or concerns to ferret them out. You know, if you've got a point that you really want to see driven to to ground, please get, either get with me, get through the office, um, and as the ones that have been read, there's not anything that's going to be banned from the discussion, and I hope that the person that was talking about the five selectmen, I don't see the five or three is going to make a difference on the administrator's position at this point in time, um, because we don't even know what that looks like, and I can't build it on something that has to be elected at a town meeting vote. So. I'd like it to stay focused on the administrative position. We'll gladly take a, and start a folder on how many board of selectmen members there has to be and whether the chair rotates or not. Uh, so please bring those questions to us or comments to us also. But right now we really need to focus on um, the administrator's position. Um, as for you guys, I don't know when your next meeting is going to be. Um, December 15th. Is, is it possible you have a posted meeting for the personnel board right now? Uh, December 15th, 6.30. Can you, could you continue that in another location and they could go on with their meeting? 
Because you got all you got a bunch of people here. I don't he know wants to know if the meeting is on. that's today is a is we posted. Have it meeting. in this room. Uh, and right? no. Have it in this room. Well, I don't no, know. They're going to take it. He wants to know if he can continue the meeting in another the room from you. I haven't been able to speak yet, and you're you're cutting off discussion. Um, I don't know if anybody else does. But this is an important. This is as important an issue as most anything in town. How many people have comments they'd like to to share at this point? They've all spoken. I mean, it's just me. Well, I'd like to say something. I, I was here. I didn't say you could. I didn't say you could. Sit down, sit down John. He's first. Sit down. Go ahead. Go ahead. We have scheduled public hearings and stuff, oh. so we really do need to. Quickly, sir. I, I, I really am not even sure about what this first part of the select board board's meeting is about. However, I must say that the select board and the people's voice in the town of Deerfield must have the ultimate say when it comes to the town administrator. They need to be the final voice in a decision other than day-to-day -day operations. That's it. Thank you. Very simple. You want to speak? You got a couple minutes. No, no, all I'd say is, is you know, I, I've worked with all four of the town administrators. I was here when we hired Robert Crosby, who was the first full-time administrator. And I said at that time, I wouldn't be a selectman unless we did have a full-time administrator. I just think we need to have a clear role of duties of the administrator as well as the selectmen and their interaction. And I'd be willing to work on it, give you input. That's all. But I think we need a clear role and we need a, you know, a, it, it, you've got to define what the Board of Selectmen are. They're, they're mainly policy making and years ago, 20, 30 years ago, they were the only people here that, that got things done. And you can't have Board of Selectmen calling up the, you know, the highways, or maybe you do. I don't know. You've got to decide whether you want the Board of Selectmen calling up the, the sergeant in the police department and telling him to go look for speeders. And meanwhile, what is the, what is the, uh, this is just a suppose. I'm not saying it happens, but things like this used just, to happen. I just want to make sure that Booth, Booths isn't watching this when you tell her there was nobody here until you had a town administrator. Because <laughs> she's going to come ring your ears. But I mean, you've got to define what, what the select board is. Because well, I think they do some of the things that they used to do years ago without an administrator. And now you have an administrator and you're expecting them to do certain I, things. I agree. And I think that as with the administrator, that was a problem with here. There was real no de definition of where the lines of demarcation yeah. was. Um, I didn't have any problems with what I thought the Board of Selectmen needed to be, but I understand from recent conversation there may be a difference of an opinion, and yes, we're going to have to beat those into a thought process that makes it um, very clear as to what the what the job description is. Yeah. And, you know, not so much write it out, but because it is an elected position, but understand what the duties and what we think are the responsibilities. Um, because those can be defined by the town. It doesn't have to be defined by well, that's, mass that's, general that's law. That's my concern that, that I would say it, had, it should be a bylaw, what this position is. Otherwise, when, when Robin Crosby was hired, there was, there was um, people wanted to vote down the salary and get, but abandon the position because they didn't like the person. And that could happen again. Well, it can happen. Because you don't have a... We've, we've had that rec a lot recent years from that. That was 20 some odd years ago. We had the same thing happen four years ago or five years. That's what this is all about. This is what democracy is about. We're gonna, our thing is to try to minimize that type of riff and have the town run smoothly. But we do have to call this because we have hearings that we have to do. I just have one comment to add to Tom's. And, you know, one of the problems I see and is that as a board, we need a focal point for discussion with people outside the board. We can't, as individuals, go to, say, Yankee Candle. Each of us go and talk to them about something. We should be group. It should be a board decision, and then we should instruct the administrator or whoever the designated is to go and make those discussions. That's, you know, because we're just facilitating. And what happens is, She's and I've seen it. We're deciding. Yeah. If we're, if 
I'm seeing instances where in different individuals from different departments are going to different places in town and requesting things for the town. Well, that shouldn't be happening. That happens with the nonprofits. Yeah, it, that shouldn't happen. That should be, you know, all, whether it's, you know, whatever department it is within town should be coming through the Board of Selectmen and we should be instructing, you know, someone such as Wendy to see if she can open that line, that dialogue. That way, the nonprofits or Deerfield Academy, Yankee Candle, whatever, don't have a half a dozen people coming in asking for money. You have one person representing the town that is doing that. That's the only way the town should function, because you know it's um, you know it's like this out here. It's very good that Deerfield Academy is doing that, but as a board, I don't think we ever had a discussion on it. Maybe I'm wrong. So, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's not right. So, and I think that's where the strong administrator is, the stronger than what we have is important. Uh, we're gonna cut it off at that point. I do wanna make sure that you, Keith, you understand that that's very much appreciated. It was a surprise to some of us when we drove in and saw that it was almost finished. And, but the thank you goes to the completion and the, the fact that our kids have a really nice place to be. So we'll deal with the other part. So <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so I, I, again, anybody has opinions? Um, okay. Can I just share one more thing, an observation? Quick, very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> so it seems like Gabby Richard Harrington, I've been on state and regional boards that were growing and had all kinds of changes. We spent a full year documenting what we actually did so there was a clear present job description, and we spent the whole entire year documenting one calendar year of our policies. And it sounds like that's a big confusion here. So how you hire somebody that's managing the town when you don't have clear documentation of what you do and how you do it seems a little bit backwards to me. We're not disagreeing. Thank you very much for the input. Now, I have to move on to a Board of Selectmen's meeting because we're now 13 minutes late for the first hearing. So if you guys want to take it to the back room there and further discussion or whatever you'd like to do, I need to make sure that we are move on to the agenda of the, per, of the Board of Selectmen, starting with uh, railroad crossing. So if you guys want to go talk for a couple of minutes and take a few people with you, great. No, no, no. We'll take a few people with you. It's okay. There are people here for, for the other agenda. Yeah. She's still over at the. Did she? Because she wasn't there. They were waiting. I don't know. Did she? You know, she's there. You've seen her. No, I do not see her there. I just. Hey, Dick. Can you go over and see if Carolyn? We don't want her to come to the meeting. We just want to make sure she's okay. Yeah, she had that other. <laughs> She'll be here in about thirty seconds. Seconds, <laughs> yes. You, you know what? <laughs> You're not allowed to talk to her. Mm. <laughs> I make sure she gets there and does some investigative reporting so we can find out things that we couldn't mm. otherwise find out. Uh, extremely helpful. She is very helpful, but not on this subject. Mm. She's biased. She's you. She is on big this big one, the one we're on right now. Are you talking about me or her? You. I, I think it should be stay the way it should, and you should find someone you like and can work with. And can have the backs of the town employees mm. and... That's, That's bingo. All I want to say. Yep. And you can appoint everyone you want. <laughs> I don't care about appointing anybody. Huh. All right. No, I think it ultimately should be the board. But it's like on Barb, you should. You're recommending to us, and we're making the appointment. Do the work. And, and that's yeah. You say you ask questions. And yeah. If we can't answer them. We go back to the drawing. Right. <laughs> okay. So, that was all on tape. <laughs> yeah. All on tape. Yes, it was. Yes. So, Do we have someone from the railroad yes. crossing from Mass DOT? Come on, gentlemen. Tim Doherty and, and some uh, designers. Do you have the handouts that you want to get to? Yep, let's sit right here. Sit by microphone, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. You can. I have extras. You have extras too? Okay, yeah, good. I made some extras. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And it should be in your packets as yeah, well. Yeah, I've got them. Yeah. The which package? Your, your active mail. Your, your gray one. 
attend an act, uh, agenda active. Sure. Here you can, here's I got quick, it right here, right on top. Easy. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. It's in sequential order what's happening, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not either, so don't, don't go there. <laughs> Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves. Uh, Tim Doherty with... Uh, Tim Doherty with the Massachusetts. Need to move, yeah. need to move the mic a little closer oh. to you. <laughs> it will resound. Uh, Tim Doherty with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, uh, the Rail and Transit Division, and uh, I'm basically the project manager for the Knowledge Quarter project for MassDOT. And we wanted to come and talk to you and talk to you know the community about a project that we have here in. Uh, you know, component of the Knowledge Quarter project, which is uh, uh, the rehabilitation of 49 miles of railroad from Springfield to the Vermont line that would bring Amtrak service back to the, the line through Greenfield. Um, so I, I can talk a little bit about the project if anybody, if anybody wants to know, but the, I guess the, the key thing in, in, this is quite amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very disruptive what it is. <laughs> it's very disruptive. Okay. Yeah, but wait, but this, I mean, you got to admit, this is pretty good stuff. It's very good no. stuff. Had to bribe state officials to make sure they. Uh, oh, so you're being bribed now <laughs> on TV. No, 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 no. I like you. I'm meeting you next get, door. Did you get that? Okay, Kat. <laughs> can you write that out without too much trouble? <laughs> You know, putting coffee in Danish in front of a former <laughs> cop is not a good thing. <laughs> You're just starting the meeting. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we just want to make sure you're all right. I didn't see you there. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I was, okay. um, we, we did get a commitment from Kurt Wood. He's the undersecretary for. We're on um, TV and it's just. Yeah, okay. Stay, stay on task. Um, so so what, what we're here today to talk about is a couple of a couple of the grade crossings in Deerfield, uh, which we have uh, been working with uh, the town, uh, Wendy and uh, previously Bernie, to develop uh, some designs for those crossings. Uh, gone through a couple of different iterations, and, and we're here just to sort of, for informational purposes, to give you sort of an update of what we came, or sort of the sort of what we've come up with. Uh, we think that we, you know, that it does a lot of really interesting things for um, sort of South Deerfield, the two grade crossings, one is Elm Street, which is in the center of town, uh, and the next one is Pleasant Street, uh, up by the school. In the project that we're working on, we're, we're working on 24 different grade crossings between Springfield and Vermont. Um, certainly these presented some interesting options, and so I think we've spent a lot more time on these two, um, sort of recognizing the importance of Elm Street for the community, and then some of the particular challenges with Pleasant Street, uh, and believe that we've come up with a really elegant solution for both of them, um, and, and we can talk a, talk a little bit about that. But I think one of the things, you know, in the, you know, sort of in our observations, and then in the conversations we had with um, the folks in the town, was uh, to provide a, a level of uh, pedestrian access over them, uh, and also just sort of focus and um, sort of more define the, those two, two areas. Um, I think the other thing that the first and foremost thing, which is, which I don't really, you know, sort of need to talk, or remind myself to talk about is, is that, that both of these are designed in the, as safe as possible when it comes to uh, making improvements to them in terms of uh, adding um, gates, lights, uh, audible warning, bells, um, uh, signage, um, and, and the different things that we need to do to make sure that they, you know, meet the highest standards for, for, for what's needed there um, and that the designs reflect that. And we spent a lot of time sort of tweaking the sort of street and roadway work, but, you know, on, on top of that as well. But we wanted to come up with uh, some really interesting uh, and I think really uh, well put together uh, designs for these two grade crossings. Can I? Oh, sorry. I yeah. just wanted to talk about number one, the change in in freight uh, and passenger, right, right, and the speeds and the times, if you could. Right. <laughs> one of the things, uh, and I, I sort of mentioned that in the introduction. The re the reason we're doing this project and we're doing this project in in Deerfield is um, Massachusetts and and the Ma uh, MassDOT received a grant for seventy two million dollars from the Federal Railroad Administration to make uh, improvements on this 49 miles of railroad. Um, 
to basically allow the Vermonter, which is the train that currently runs, you know, a couple miles or a couple miles east of here in Amherst, back over to the line here where it traditionally ran, uh, and it it would allow you know uh, station stops in Greenfield, Northampton, and Holyoke. Um, so South Deerfield's in again, or Deerfield's in sort of in the middle, depending on on which way you're going. Um, the other advantage of that is is that the uh, line would be um, <coughs> probably see uh, additional freight freight use, not a significant amount, but uh, and that the freight speeds would 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 increase, and that the quality of the track and things like that would also increase. Um, those improvements are you know already underway. Um, we've done uh, put in seventy five thousand ties. Um, installed the rail uh, and a bunch of grade crossings north of Greenfield. Um, we've also, uh, you know, done a bunch of different other works, and we've had a lot of materials delivered, and, and the project is expected to be complete, or uh, planned to be complete at the end of 2014 to allow the trains to run, the passenger trains to run, and then we're going to do some work after that in 15. That's okay. great. Um, not to be a real fly in the ointment, but that's kind of my character. Uh, did you investigate opening Conway Street back up and closing Pleasant Street? We did. I mean, that was sort of a, a question that came up uh, sort of early in the early in the conversation. Did a little bit of research in terms of what what was going on there. Um, one of the challenges that, that that we sort of faced is 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 it's very difficult to reopen a grade crossing. And then the other thing that we recognized is that Conway Street um, is actually Conway Street where it crosses over the railroad is a, a pretty significant uh, brick culvert or bridge and so that any work to reopen the road would probably require that bridge to be replaced and the time and expense was sort of outside of the scope of the project at the time and so you know i think we've what we decided to focus on instead was making the sort of safety and um improvements and and adding a pedestrian sidewalk to pleasant street mm -hmm. um and i think that you know that uh should certainly uh work for the initial time and i think you know certainly as we look at conway street and have, you know, have a long-term conversation with the town we'd be you know willing to potentially have another conversation about that yeah i just you know to me it's a safety concern um, I don't like the Pleasant Street crossing. Um, you know, having our school children being transported in the individual cars going across there all the time, um, that's a real safety concern for me, even with the current layout. Uh, I realize with the, the gates and everything, it's going to mitigate it some, but, you know, it's uh, Mrs. Barrett's here, who is a superintendent of schools. Um, I don't know if she has any opinions on that Pleasant Street crossing, but I assume she probably does. <laughs> um, you know, I haven't talked to her about it, but you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just, I don't, it, here again, it's just my personal, and you know, to me, it just never made any sense when they actually closed this one and left that other one open. Ironically, they closed it because of the elementary school here. Right. And now the elementary school's over there. And so we would really like to have this one open. So if we can get on a list, um, um, you know, so it's not forgotten. Well, no, and I, I you know, I, I, you know, sort of had a conversation uh, earlier today, and sort of, you know, believe that that's something to certainly consider. You know, as we go forward, um, the Commonwealth has made a significant investment in this property, this asset, the service. So we're going to be around for a long time, and you know, as we look at a bunch of different different things, different elements, you know, that's going to come back up again, and. You know, it's certainly worth, uh, you know, having, you know, keeping that, keeping the, uh, keeping the question there. Um, Does that go on our regional transportation plan that the FERCOG organizes every um, five years? It would go, it could, it. Oh. Hi. <laughs> I would be included. I mean, we do include potential projects. We're supposed to look at a 25-year time horizon. Um, um, so, so can we re formally request that be on the, added to the list? Would that be okay? Sure. We'll okay. be updating the transportation plan starting next October. Okay. So if that would be just really great if you could 
put, you know, I mean, Wendy will follow up with a note. Not in October. <laughs> no, 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 no. Send out, follow up a note from this meeting, just formally requesting, um, just formally requesting that. There will be a, you know, a big public outreach. I know, but things, things get forgotten. Do you have a sign-in sheet? Do I, I don't know who this person is. Oh. Um, who are these people? Oh, he did introduce himself. She was talking about the other. Okay. He didn't. I don't know who you are. <laughs> well, my name John Rose, planning board. I do know. Who you are. <laughs> Just can't recognize him without his hat. <clears throat> um, may I speak? If I said no, would it make any difference? Yes, it would. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. There was not a lot of planning that went on when the grammar school was put in over there. Um, it is a problem. There's no doubt. We have had discussions. I've been on the planning board for, I don't know, too long. Um, 20 years of at least discussions. We have had discussions about, you know, can we make that one way? Can we do this? Can we do that? Uh, the, the Conway Street Crossing, as this gentleman said, that's a problem. There, there has to be a solution to this that we can get through this because it is important for this trail system to happen. It is happening. It's good for the valley. It's good for the state. It's good for the country for this to proceed. Um, so what can we do? That's well, I, I think if we, as Maureen said, they're, they're going to update the transportation request plan next in October and so if Wendy just sends her a note to remind her to you know make sure that gets included um, I, th I think that's that's start of the process right I mean that's probably I, I, I think that's a really good place to leave sort of a perpetual footnote that you're always thinking about it and I mean and, I mean that's, I mean it's a formal way of doing what what I said which is we're gonna remember it and look at it I mean, that's how we get the Stillwater Bridge on there. You know, the get a number in the Stillwater Bridge <coughs> issue. Yeah, that's a home run. Yeah. Um, just so it doesn't yeah. get forgotten. Um, We're going to put signs and plaques up on Don't Forget. I know. Um, Sorry, are, you, are you done? Oh, oh yeah. No, no. Um, I have a simple question. Sure. If the crossing isn't safe to put a road back, way back across it or it's going to require a lot of work. How does that delineate between the fact that most of the weight that's on that culvert is going to be the trains? Right. I mean, I think, I think our quick observation was if you had, if the, if, the, if the bridge was designed for the wear and tear of the train and then you add the wear and tear of the road, you're at you're you're sort of doubling the doubling. It, it was designed for the road that was on it, right? With but, the train originally. But the say the bridge is two hundred or a hundred and it's probably one of the older bridges in the community. Okay, then I go back to my original question: If it's if, too dangerous to put the road, which is lighter vehicles, back across it, I, how can you consider it to be safe to run rail across it? I think it's a question. With what you're talking about, freight, increased freight and speed. I think it's more a question of it's, 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 they're different forces, and they, act, and, they, and they act differently. If I can just kind of help answer that question, really what's, what's been maintained is actually the, the portion that carries the railroad, and the approaches and stuff for the roadway have not been maintained and would have to be looked at to make it a complete uh, functioning if that was to be reconsidered. So the approaches would be more. We'd have to give consideration to how how the approaches and the and the highway. As I recall, looking at that once before, uh, the, um, the the roadway is also part of a bridge structure, and that needs to be looked at in its entirety as well. But the portion that carries the the, uh, the railroad has been maintained just for the railroad traffic. Nick, can I just point out one? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. By the way, re remind me to get a letter to them to fix the potholes. <laughs> but. <laughs> Marty. Marty Barrett, Superintendent of Schools. I'm here primarily for information sure. gathering, and I'm wondering if, because I have a lot of questions, sure. uh, as far as I looked at your schematics and your drawings, and I'm yep. having a little difficulty interpreting them, but it looks like there'll be some trees removed and roads widened and sidewalks added. Um, it is a rather steep curvature, and I know you're talking about flattening it um, or doing something to raise it to make it not quite as steep. There was something, something change like change the grade on the approach is what right. it looked. It looked like they were changing the grade on yeah. the approach. So is there going to be other informational opportunities to get some of these questions asked? I think, I think this is really the, and, and, and actually I may turn this over to Ron to go over the specifics of the, of, I mean, we can talk, I mean, they're, they're two very different crossings. And so I don't know if people, it might make sense to talk about them sort of one at a time. If we want to talk about Pleasant Street first, and we can talk about what the design considerations, and I, and I will say, um, you know, we've been to Deerfield and sort of gone through the iterations of this a, a number of times, trying to get, you know, the different feedback in here. So, um, Ron, if you want to sort of explain sort of the challenges there that, that, that we saw and then how we address those, which I, I think was trying to understand, understand what the existing conditions were, not, and then being respectful of those, making... I think the, the biggest improvement, which was right now, it's very narrow. And so if anybody that was a pedestrian or, or somebody who was walking over there, mm -hmm. there's no way to walk through there. And so, you know, that, that was sort of the, you know, sort of the big thing. But then also <coughs> to keep it very narrow so that you didn't increase the speed through that crossing so it has a natural effect right now where, you know, people don't go over that grade crossing very fast preserve that element of it by making it more convenient for pedestrians to use it, or safer for pedestrians to use it. With that intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I think you covered it well. Hi, my name is Ron Oblinas. I'm with uh, HDR, and uh, we've been working with Tim and the department on uh, design of much of the uh, track structure, including the grade crossings. Uh, and what we're here to talk about specifically tonight is Pleasant Street and Elm Street. And I'd like to be begin to note that we have been out a couple of times with uh, Wendy and uh, uh, Sean, and I, th I think John is not here tonight, the police chief. And they provided a lot of good comments. They're very much uh, in sync with, I think, a lot of things we looked at. And we took some of the specifics that they said, could we do X, Y, and Z, and went back and looked at that. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, for anybody that would like, there's, there's a couple more handouts here. I think the... The selectmen uh, have a copy if anybody would like. Um, so. okay, one's Elm Street, one's Pleasant Street. So, one of each. It's. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Ken? 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 Yes. For a minute? Yeah, shoot. Very sorry about this. It's, you know, <coughs> our, ske our schedule's being pushed, so I hope you don't mind. Okay. We deal with our own Okay. Thank you very much for understanding. It's not promising. I got that. We just can Oh. Questions? Oh, okay. Okay, everybody good? They're looking for there. Um, a couple of things. Probably the easiest uh, sheet to start talking to is the one that's on the very back. And that's one that has the, the railroad disc uh, on it. And this is a plan view. It gives a, a general overview of the layout that we've looked at. Uh, kind of going back a little bit what Tim said. Uh, exactly uh, as he described. You go out there today, one of the things that strike you uh, very quickly is there's no sidewalks. 
And in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, the roadway itself is very narrow. So uh, if you come up there and two uh, vehicles are coming at each other fairly quickly, uh, certainly there's uh, a lot of points of decision. The other aspect that was mentioned is the uh, grade crossing uh, profile. Uh, the roadway approaching it is very steep on uh, both sides and, and, and tails off uh, quite steeply. So as we looked at it, uh, the first thing that we decided we needed to do was improve uh, and create a sidewalk for pedestrians. And uh, as you can see, if you kind of just look at the curve, it doesn't follow the straight line uh, that now is there. What we did is there's a uh, gas um, crossing on the south side of the uh, crossing, so we use that as our uh, hold point, if you will, and move the all the expansion the across the crossing uh, to the north. So that made us uh, have to put a little bit of a horizontal curve in the uh, alignment, as you see here. We created a sidewalk that will be a raised curb, uh, asphalt just off the uh, roadway surface uh, to give a little give definition to the sidewalk comes up to the grade crossing uh, comes down to grade to go over the crossing then back up on the curb that continues down and blends in uh, uh, on either side of the crossing there's a few trees that uh, we noted here that have to come down uh, actually when I was out there looking at uh, earlier this fall uh, the ones uh, some of them are large but uh, appear to be dying trees anyway so uh, they need at some point to come down and to make this alignment as the couple has noted here that it would need to be removed the uh, was mentioned about that the profile if you can take a step back a little uh, there's a sheet that has uh, the profile uh, probably uh, two sheets back second sheet in maybe yeah, some of these co copies a little different, so. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be fine. Just sorry, I didn't know. Oh, it's the one here that has all the numbers uh, kind of a, in a vertical alignment. <coughs> and what this is, uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, this is looking at the profile, uh, essentially on sideways looking at the uh, profile of the highway cut through. We'll add a little bit of fill on each side so that the grade is uh, now smoother. Uh, still, will you know, be relatively uh, steep up over there, but uh, far improved as what is today. Uh, we still will have, as Tim noted, some strong uh, physical limitations or inducements to people to slow down just because of the grade and going up over. But it isn't quite the, the snap that it is now, uh, so that will be improved and... and uh, uh, that'll make a good a much better transition for our vehicles so really that's uh, with the additional note that there will be uh, uh, gates and uh, flashing lights and bells uh, installed there uh, that's really the the summation of the of the improvements there so uh, I would say any questions on that this does it, do you did, you see, did you see what it was? Right. Yeah, go ahead. I appreciate the fact that there'll be um, sidewalks for pedestrians, although I have to tell you there's very few pedestrians that um, use that walkway. Um, I'm wondering if you've also done a traffic study because there is a lot of traffic. Um, I'm actually concerned about the amount of traffic with the gate crossings and the high-speed railroads coming. So I didn't know if you had looked into that. No. Oh, fine. We had a meeting with some. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Clay Connor. I'm the assistant principal at Yerba Elementary School. Um, we had a meeting last um, spring with Chief Pachor, and um, we had somebody from, I forget her name, from Franklin County Regional Government, and we did do. We had observed um, pickup in the afternoon. I think it scared her. Um, because that's the issue. It's, it's really not trains going by our school because they only have trains going by our school. It's the traffic patterns that exist when there's pickup and arrival 
And if a train happens to be crossing, coming through, and the gates are down, that's going to create ha traffic problems and then a potential safety hazard. I think sidewalks will address some of that, um, but that is really what the problem is. Um, it's not that there's trains suddenly, because there's only trains three or four a day pass by the school. It's traffic that's going to result when drop off and pick up at the school. And we, we've been trying to find ways that we can look at that and these changes, how we can change some of the traffic patterns to encourage different back driving patterns. Um, I'd like to just clarify. My name is John Lowe. Uh, I'd like to clarify a point. Um, there are no less than uh, 10 children that walk through there every day, at least twice a day. Um, it is an absolute hazard. Uh, as we know from some planning board meetings where Carolyn Morris had said that we can address that. I'm glad to see that there's some improvement, but prior to the new administration. Uh, I've talked to the school board, I've talked to the police department, I've talked to Waz. That crossing is a, in the snow has gone as low as 13 feet. And the kids stop and walk. And we all agree the traffic is fast. And when there's kids walking, elementary school kids, twice a day, minimum, it's really dangerous. So I commend you on your plan, but I think, and the sidewalks are going to be great because it's a huge safety issue, which yeah, everyone great. seems to be talking about. <clears throat> do something about it. But I would like to see the, the sidewalks actually come down and then there'd be a crossing because the traffic is tremendous there. I'm, sorry, I, I, what, I'm not sure what you said meant by the last. Another pedestrian crossing so they can say. Well, just some kind of markings side, because the side where the school's on is <clears throat> a sidewalk. I'm still not sure what you. Oh, the sidewalk is on the school okay. side of the street. Yes. Right, but it stops, doesn't it, before? Yeah. And there's no, the mark. Just, Pedestrian crossing closer to the tracks. There's only one by the school where the crossing guard is stationed. And I think that's what you're talking about, right? A safer pedestrian crosswalk that crosses to Pleasant Street before the railroad tracks. <coughs> yes. See, what has to be considered. Identify yourself. Identify yourself, please. I am just going to do that. Thank you. To get back to what you're talking about, the chief and I went out last week and looked at that, put it on the sidewalk. Yeah. We were talking about it, the sidewalk down. So that's something we're going to probably do after this. Yeah. And, and I, I agree, and I didn't mean to no, no, you. Um, the issue is the ripple effect of the traffic going further down Pleasant Street towards Frontier. Um, and anybody that's sat out there and watched the cars that pick up and arrival see that we have temperamental drivers that get impatient and that's where there's room for error and that's when tragedy can strike. So it's really the plan has to think a little bit bigger about what's going to happen down the road, literally, um, away from the railroad path. That's what I think uh, something the town has to consider. And I know that Chief Pretoria has and we've talked about that in our meetings. Hi, my name is Darren Gray, I'm resident of a civil engineer too. Um, I'd just like to talk about a couple different topics related to this. One is the feasibility studies that have been done regarding the two different crossings. You're hearing a lot of different safety concerns here. I'm not hearing a lot to indicate that the railroad has taken a, it upon themselves to do thorough feasibility studies on the two different crossings and the costs associated with them. I think everyone here knows that train forces are a lot greater than a car as far as that existing culvert goes. And, uh, so to me, if the railroad doesn't do sufficient feasibility analyses on these two different crossings, there's an accident in the future, and it certainly seems to me that the railroad didn't do their homework and they're liable. And so I'd like to see more from the railroad on these two different crossings. Because uh, you know, basically right here, like the, the proposed changes at the, you know, the school, the change in the vertical geometry, which is better, it's pre-existing condition, I'm assuming, created by the railroad if you go back far enough. Um, it's going to help your sight distance, but it's also going to increase speeds. Um, if you're going to put in a sidewalk, let's do concrete to match what we have in town, not the Um It'd be better to extend it to the corner on the west side rather than stopping it right by those residences. 
Um, but could you talk about what kind of feasibility studies have been done on the tube crossings? Because uh, so far I've heard you guys took a site walk and that was about it. Sure. Um, I'll be frank, we did not look at the rationale of why the previous one was closed or why it's closed. And so therefore it didn't come up in consideration of improvements to uh, Pleasant Street. Uh, we looked at that as an existing condition and noted it needed substantive improvement. Uh, what we designed here, uh, we believe recognizes that. I do appreciate uh, the comments ab about traffic and uh, you know, elements within the school and the pickup. I think there's a lot of things that you could do as a town to mitigate some of that, and that could be done independently and uh, in concert with what we're doing. The gray crossing will be built over the next year uh, and service, uh, Tim, I think we're planning to start at the end of next year, is that? Yeah, right, yeah. So there's some time for you to make some, some internal changes. Uh, you could actually do some operational changes as far as making, Tim makes, made a good point. Uh, if you're worried about traffic, you can make uh, one-way traffic there at some times a day. Um, and there's some other options to do. So, but to get back to your original point, we did not look at Conway as uh, being reopened. Uh, there is, we did talk a little bit about it uh, when it got, got raised, and that uh, I'm not sure what, you, what would be the advantage, but every time there is a crossing added, uh, the, the current policy is generally two have to come out. Uh, the, we recognize that gray crossings are a potential um, safety issue. That's an extra school. Well, anywhere. Yeah. And so, so obviously, uh, you know, if there was consideration of Conway Street going back in, it would have to be looked at as to what's the rationale, what's the traffic, what's the safety of that versus this, and look at it in a whole other context. Okay, so that's exactly my question, was whether or not a feasibility analysis was done on those two, which is the first step in a design, and you're, the answer I'm getting is no. Correct. Despite the fact that the town has repeatedly raised concerns about this, I understand the previous town administrators had meetings with the railroad about it. So it seems that at some level it's not getting the attention I think a lot of people in the room would like to see. I, I think we did have a conversation with your previous town administrator and yeah, so and, 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 and laid out laid out the parameters that we the, the design criteria and parameters that, that we discussed today. And you know Proposed a uh, proposed something, and got some buy-in from from that, and we followed that iteration. I mean, you know, there. Th Obviously, the crossing as it sits right now needs improvement. Right, and the I, problem I, is, as I see it, is a safety factor. Is I know a lot of residents that won't go through there because it is a hazard. You do this fix, they're going to view it as okay. Now it's safer, and you're actually going to be increasing the traffic in front of that school. Well, I think that we were designing this. And it's going to be faster. We designed this to not change the speed, to not change the parameters of, of what people see from a car standpoint. What slows down most of the traffic on that crossing is as you're coming up into it, you can't see the oncoming traffic, so you have to go slow. By going out 50 feet the way you are, you're going to be able to visualize that, and you're not going to slow down as much. Um, we can adjust the profile if that would to try to to try to mit, to try to mitigate that. But I think you know, it's I uh, your points are the points are all valid, but there are certain points which are out of our control, in the sense of you can have people speed up because there's a little less of a ramp, um, but you have those people that are on the cell phone and those people that don't pay attention and those people who are really in a hurry to drop their kids off and the statement of being scared, I don't care if you had a super highway that ran down there with no uh, <clears throat> railroad crossing at the end of it, pick up and drop off at that school is scary. People are not paying attention. They're in their jammies. They don't care. They're on the cell phone trying to put makeup on, lipstick, uh, trying to read the paper, um, call their, you know, they're, they're just nuts. And it's parents trying to get their busy schedule together to do stuff that needs to be done. 
we're not going to solve that, and I don't think that they're going to solve it for us, but I think that it's very valid that we ask what can we do to change because it's not just going to be them changing, it's us changing our philosophy and our mindset because we can't move the railroad and we can't move the school and we've got to figure out how to get some balance in there. And what the people, what the two gentlemen had here was um, some balance that they arrived with the town administrator before um, when this process started. It doesn't stop us from bringing all of our concerns forward, but try to keep it in a, process, a thought process of, okay, we got a problem, how are we gonna fix it? And write them down as problems to be fixed. Um, I'm the first one to have the mindset that it'd be better to go over Conway Street, but that doesn't stop the five kids that, or 10 kids on the other side of the railroad tracks of having to walk all the way around through our yard back across a footbridge in the middle of the winter to get to school, they're going to cross the railroad tracks wherever they can cross the railroad tracks. Is that going to be safer? Uh, feasibility studies are probably something that would be nice to do, but um, I, I think we need to get focused in what is it we really want to achieve and start assigning those responsibilities to those people that can fix it. Um, Hindsight's twenty twenty. But nobody asked this question when that school was put over there 25 years ago. And so you moved the school. It boggles my mind. It absolutely boggles my mind. And now you're coming down, not you personally, but people are coming down on the railroad for doing something that is going to do nothing but increase traffic through this community in, 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 in the Pioneer Valley. It boggles my mind. John, John, the problem is things have changed, and what's somebody happened. Somebody should have asked. I wasn't here 25 years ago. Yeah, but somebody John, John, should, I would have asked that question. I guarantee you, I would have asked that question, and I probably would have got shot down. Oh, you're stupid. It's not bad. No, John, John, listen. We have school choice now, and for whatever reason, we have parents that drive their kids to school. But why you know, are so we support. Many people coming down on the. John. I know. We're, I know. I, we're I, not. I, we're not. not. And, but John, we have we have that. half empty buses. You know I'm that. About okay. Excuse me. We're talking about a railroad crossing. <laughs> I know, but and the, we're talking. And the thing about it, John, is you could go nth degree out there as to how stupid it was to put it where where it is. We ain't gonna fix it. So, so. And the railroad is comes to us with their hat and they said that they talked to everybody and they got what they needed from the police and the, hi and the highway and everything else and now this is a point for public input to see if there's some things we can correct and mitigate as this process goes forward. Um, I Honestly, the part I'm getting out of this just so that you get to the other side of it is I see that the town has some responsibilities of safety that we didn't do and that we're responsible for to fix. Right. But again, it still doesn't help us for one, asking for our very friendly um, partners in this process to be helpful in sick fixing some of the problems we have so we're not taking the full burden for it. So we're trying to meet a happy ground of where we want to have this discussion go and focus on the things that are fixable um, or at least achievable or maybe put on a tick list to, to deal with at a later date. But it's not, I'm. I know where you're coming from, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> that was my mind. It does mine too, and it boggled me. I was here and I asked those questions. I was told to be quiet for many reasons other than the roadway. Yes, sir. Yeah, it really it it is random. It is random. How many times would you say a day a freight train goes through that point? Um, on average, on average, on it's average. on average there are, there are, say one up, one down. On average, the maximum that you would see is one up, one down, or t basically two up, two down, or yeah, two trains that would go through. So four 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 movements through this project will add another Amtrak movement in the afternoon. The, the, the Amtrak train will be scheduled. That's one, one Amtrak going through all day? 
one going up, one coming down, and then one going back. It's, right. it's the Vermonter. Yeah. Right. And where are you going to have specific time when it's going to cross? Right, and the Vermont, the, right now the Vermonter schedule, I, I'm, I'm going to estimate this, but it's, you know, say 1 o'clock going down and 4 p.m., 4.30 going up. Which is not pickup time. But in, in the same token, they're improving the service not to keep it the same. They're improving the service to hopefully increase their traffic or their business and take some of this stuff off the roads that we are now transporting over our highways, which are clogging our highways. So if it gets successful, it's going to change with it, and we need to make sure we stay in pace with whatever changes they're making and whatever they're adding and not adding to the process. Jonathan, I'll get your next, Jonathan. Go ahead. In addition to the other concerns that have been shared by the folks here, I just want to put another piece on the table that we need to consider. I don't know whose responsibility it would be, whether it would be the towns or the railroad, but um, that railroad runs parallel. The tracks run parallel to the school and parallel to our recess and playground field. There are swing sets that are very close to a currently, we have a chain link fence that separates it. Um, there are areas of the fence which are cut out that my custodian keeps putting back together because it's easy for students to crawl through those um, and access the railroad right now, which is a huge safety issue and concern of mine. So my question is, are there plans for some sort of solid barrier or um, anything that would replace that existing chain link fence and do we need to start thinking of as a school of relocating about 120 students at recess on a daily basis and moving equipment to make sure that our students are safe during the day with five to six runs or whatever I'm hearing about the train. Well, I think, I think the, 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 um, the freight trains are running today, um, so it's it's basically the trains that you see today will continue to be here. They might, the expectation is they get longer. You wouldn't see, you you wouldn't necessarily see an increase in the number of trains. Um, <coughs> do you, do you own the train link fence or do we? It would be yours. Can we give it to you? No. Is to fix it? <laughs> but uh, that it, answers the question as to the barrier. Um, as for the road and and that aspect I, of it. I, I think a little bit of this is, is, it is everybody needs to, there's an education campaign that, that we always should be doing mm -hmm. and, and is really important, which is railroad tracks are not a place to go play. And even someone who did that as a child. Um, that was me, by the way. Yeah, it was me too, so. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still got the pennies, do you? Um, I mean, it, it, you know, it, okay. although when I was a little kid, I didn't have a Walkman or I didn't have an iPod. I didn't have an iPhone. I didn't have a cell phone. And, you know. You're even dating yourself with the first two comments. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but I think, I think, I think. The you didn't have what? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and I didn't have a snowmobile. I didn't have an ATV and all the other stuff that people are, are running into trouble. And, and so really, it, and f folks on TV, I mean, this is sort of the message that I've been talking about whenever I talk about this project is, you know, the train tracks are for trains, and if you're not a train, you shouldn't be there. Right. And, and it's really, really important because, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's sort of one of those things. It's like the back lot that you used to play in as a kid or the, or the woods that you used to play in. But in this case, it's really not that. It's really, you know, it's like, it's like playing on the street, basically. Well, the worst part is the rules have changed once the... Um, the high computer. speed. Once, once the high speed gets on there. Going from, you know, 10 miles an hour, I think, what is that, real 10 or 15, the DOT has it set at something like that, to 70 miles an hour. It's, it, it's a whole new ball game. And to try to educate, I think education is probably the biggest yep. part of this. Right. Um, 
And, and, and that's something that we're, we are committed to doing. I mean, that, it's something that's really important, and it's something that, that really happens all the time. And, you know, this is certainly an opportunity to, 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 to bring that up. I think... And that scares me the most. I mean, if you're, if you're an adult, if you're driving, you should be aware of this. Uh, young children going from point A to point B, that, that, that to me is the most important part of this. Um, right, scenario. right, and I, and I think that's why you know both these crossings. We haven't talked about Elm Street, which I actually would like to because I think it's really we've come up with some interesting solutions there, um, particularly on the pedestrian side. Is you know in both these cases, it, you know you need, you know there's a way to get across the railroad tracks where you're doing it in a safe way, um, fairly close together. I mean that's a really good a really good thing, um, and you know that's what. You know that's that's what we're that's what we want to do with this project is to is to you know try to address some some issues that are out, outstanding. You know, it's, I look at you know your designs, and I don't have a problem with at all with designs. It's yeah. just the actual right. And it, you know, again, I mean, it, some that's of why I would really like with it. <laughs> you know to have the Conway Street listed somewhere in somebody's and, list. Yeah. I, well, I think it's. You know, I mean, I think the other thing is is, is MassDOT on the rail side as um, you know a big presence in Deerfield, and uh, I've always had a good relation a good relationship with previous town administrator, and a bunch of good conversations with Wendy, you know, whoever that is, and um, we're always there, you know, to to give us give us a call. And Tim, on that, can I just kind of maybe add to that commitment and suggest that. Uh, the response would be to ask for somewhat you know, like the gentleman said a feasibility study not necessarily just just to look at the structures there but to, to rationalize why kind of look at all these questions all good questions that were, that were brought up tonight yeah uh, but I'd have to one of the things I'd say does Conway solve your problem for you kind of going back to a uh, comment made well, what do you do about the, uh, the people and pedestrians who want to use Pleasant Street does that replace that or not? Is that actually the good solution? So what I would suggest is that you ask for a, a thorough investigation of what is the right options. Uh, some of those may be some of the changes in around the station and, and your traffic patterns within the city. So what's the route, uh, what's the proper route for the feasibility study then would be? Well, I would actually, you know, uh, Maureen would, I think, uh, would be look for planning study, money, uh, and I'm putting words in in your mouth if you don't mind but uh so probably through county and uh, maybe some state well, I mean, options for i mean planning definitely money. if you know if you put a letter together it's with the email okay, okay. thank yeah. you i think that's a good good way to start has, um, i'm sure you have but has anybody run the scenario of going underneath pleasant street crossing for pedestrian pedestrian only? i'm not sure where the elevation the water it'd be is. it'd be a good swim no, no, no. I mean, don't say that, Mark. I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, I, you know, we, anybody, uh, I, we, the, we. Has anybody run that scenario? Yes or no? We, oh. no. Okay. We, <laughs> we haven't. Um, but the water but tables we tend to like underpasses. Too high. Three feet. But for pedestrian. For pedestrian, we like pedestrian underpasses. But, but the, I mean, the reason that that, I mean, one of the real compelling reasons in in sort of the conversations <laughs> is, is that, is that because the. Public safety complex, the fire department, is right next to there, and that's the direct access to the school. That's was sort of a compelling reason to hang on to that crossing. And so, how does that? How do, when you use Conway Street, how does that play into it? Okay, but, but did, did I not make myself clear? It, it'd be for pedestrians, yeah. For pedestrians, yeah. But that would have to be part of the feasibility study. Nobody has done that, yeah. but I but might. That's an option, and that would make pedestrians safe. And I, I think. With, with, especially with the elementary school, um, you know, uh, I think John Lowe said, you know, 10 pedestrians. But I, I think there's probably more than that uh, because you have, you know, people coming from my area of town that may or may not, and now they can't walk on the 91 culvert because beavers have dammed it up and you'd have to swim on the 91. Um, you know, you, you would maybe take that with your bike or your. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're dating yourself a lot. I've never been able to ride a bike through there. It froze maybe a motor, a snowmobile, but John. Walk my area of town, and I, 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 I
down under 91. Okay, you got to <laughs> In the winter. A couple of questions may have been answered. How fast is this train in the the Vermont? The, um, through, this, through this cross? You know, we haven't exactly completed the design speeds in terms of, you know, what the track configuration would, would allow, but 60 for passenger and potentially 40 for freight. And I think the, the, the important distinction there is speed really doesn't matter. It matters if you hit something. Well, no, but I mean, the thing is, is the difference between going 20 or 30 Train. and going 60, it's still going to have a significant impact on you. Well, some of us who can date ourselves remember the bud liners coming through. Yeah. And he went about the same speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and I think the other thing that's important to point out is, is that, you know, this is the resumption of a service that was here until 1950, or 1986. Darren? Um, on the design, looks well thought out, of course. Um, again, I think concrete sidewalk is much better for towns, you know, maintaining all the time when plows tear up a bituminous sidewalk. I don't think putting concrete is much to ask. I also think it should be extended to the corners on the westerly side. So people aren't stepping off into the street. What? I'm sorry, but again? Concrete. So so concrete, I, I get. And, and have it go all the way to the, the, in, corner. the corner of uh, North Street and Pleasant Street. So yeah, people are not yeah. stepping out there. The only problem with that is there's no sidewalk that goes down there. And, and well, we tried. Off, stepping off into Pleasant Street. Well, uh, uh, yes. But that's the condition now. What? What that what you're really asking for is a rebuild of the, the roadway or creation of something. So I think that's that's something that the town needs to take up. And if it's uh, something, the one thing that we were looking to address specifically, and I think it was raised before, is that uh, at the gray crossing itself, it's it's a narrow roadway to begin with. It's very much it's narrower than the existing roadway, and there's no place to go, if you will. Uh, and with snow banks, and I agree with that. I saw that myself a couple of times uh, and said, yeah, we certainly do need to fix this. So our attempt is to make the grade crossing itself safe sure. and you we taper it off. To nowhere, though, Pardon me? Up, if you give us a sidewalk to nowhere and someone steps off into that road, it's a problem with the sidewalk. I, I, think, I think one of the... Now, I do have more on, on this design. It's simple stuff, uh, just observations and possible sure, ideas. Sure, things. but... Can let, I continue, or do you want to... Let me let me yeah, sort we, of, I want to I want to jump back here. Is <clears throat> our our focus was to address the, the the railroad interface here, and was to set up a situation where the town could, at its own, whenever the town wanted to do that, phase in and add the other sidewalks on either for, for either crossing later. Yeah, but some of some things are better done in contiguous thought process. I mean, we're going to have sure. to take care of the road, and he's asking for sidewalk the sidewalk is not that far beyond where you're going to drop it off to get it to the corner we need to come up with a commitment to have the sidewalk go somewhere else because you're not going to carry it that way but i think it's reasonable to to have the sidewalk not step off into the main street of thoroughfare and take it down to a corner uh, but that's just my opinion it's much better on your dime than ours Oh, that's even good. That's I like that even better. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan. I, I would actually disagree with that, and I'll oh, tell yeah. you why. <clears throat> I wouldn't want a sidewalk ending in the curve. Well, right, right uh, now, please to explain to me now. why. <laughs> well, stop and think about it for a moment. Is is obviously where we transition somebody that has to get back in to walk on the edge of the roadway. Yeah. Is there sight distances? There's a. It's about halfway between the curve that comes around quickly and cars are going to be coming around. You can't see them, and and the and the roadway. So that's the, the the place we chose to transition from actually having a sidewalk to have to go back into the street. If I take that all the way down the curve, somebody's going to step off just as now someone's coming up potentially around the curve quickly and not see each other. So, you know, I don't think that's the the proper place to make that transition. I'll have to defer to the police chief if I, I he's still, still in the area. But. The um, you know, I, <clears throat> hopefully we'll take it back to the office and take a look at it as, as far as the site distance goes and all that. Take a closer look at that. Additionally, well, you, you can, I, I don't want to get into a, you know. Take a closer look at it, would be great. Additionally, striping the road, giving us like two feet striped off <clears> the <throat> sidewalk. So instead of having the center, lane, the center line right at 10 foot, 10 foot, give us two foot, like a little 
stripe off the sidewalk as well, keep cars a little further away from the sidewalk, and people are going to ride bikes too. Uh, doesn't seem to be any accommodation for bikes here. I know we don't want to widen it much, but with striping you can at least get the perception of the road being narrower and get the perception of giving more distance to the sidewalk. Common traffic, traffic common technique, see in the DOT manual, you know, very familiar. Ooh, I um, So if you could review that as well, I think that would be additional traffic calming. Um, there's not a nice signage about the railroad here. I think the signage package should get a thorough review too and see what else you can put in there. Obviously over signing, people look right through it, but there's not a lot of signs on there right now. A um, couple other items and I'll turn it over. Higher velocity means higher sound, means a higher impact on the schools. Um, I think, you know, we're going to talk about fence. One could argue that with a higher sound impacts from a 70 mile per hour train versus a 20 mile per hour train, one could consider a, a fence, but... Um, when you say a fence, what kind of fence? He's talking about something that... Solid fence. Solid fence noise that stops the noise. The noise bear. Higher noise impact on the schools. Um, and Mr. Gilmore, to your point, I, I agree with you like that it's important to determine the best path forward <coughs> and go uh, confidently in that direction. And that just brings back to like, the idea of a feasibility study and Mr. Feelings? Oh, Bolinas. Um, I, I appreciate you brought up the feasibility study again. The town did do an extensive study last year. It's downloadable online. Um, planners, engineer, I heard of the talented engineer on that one, right? <laughs> but, um, but that's available online. That was one of the things that was discussed in that study. So there's already been communities, state funding, I think federal funding went to that as well. It's available online, it discusses this topic. I don't know if you've got a chance to see that yet by any chance. I think we did yeah, review we that did, we did the review. town in the discussions with the town folks. Uh, they presented that they had been done, and what we were talking about was there's consistent. A study of you know, the options so that, that's been analyzed. There's there's also I guess a streetscape I'm plan about going. The options of where the crossing, the better crossing place would be for the railroad, an either or scenario, but that's in the study. It's discussed. So that the study you mentioned, like the town, they should invest some money or the community. It's been done already. So I think that would be a good thing to review. But um, again, I, I completely agree with Mr. Gilmore, just to determine the best path forward. But to do a quick feasibility analysis and concepts, designs, and quick budget estimate is not a big effort to do on well, the crossing locations. <coughs> I will leave it at that. Well, I, can you? Can I ask? We'll, we'll transcribe the meeting's minutes from this stuff. But if you give us a little more detail, either in an email or something, of what your concerns are, it'd be help us to keep them on track. OK, just safety. 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 Well, you, you swamped me with a few of your thoughts. So, <laughs> I, I, please, I'm asking for Darren. Could you catch just, up with my short, short I was term just memory? Say, could you email Wendy with um, just sort of a summary? Okay. That would help us do follow up. I, I think I think the sight lines as they increase. The I'm not so worried about the parents because I'm a parent now. I'm worried about the teenagers. The teenagers are the ones that seem to have more trouble slowing down there. They like the little jump right now. It's kind of fun. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I would invite this gentleman to come stand there with me, which I've done several times. It is really dangerous. You know, all those corners, that whole area. And I commend the railroad for getting the town to be a part of this upgrade process that some of us have been talking about for several years. So anything you do is better than what we have. But um, whether it's under or, quite frankly, over like they have in, in some cities like Boston where there's a, a ramp over. Just long term, it, it is, it's going to make some of us very nervous that uh, people have to walk. Whether they walk in the you know, middle of the street now, which is what stops traffic, or if they have to step off, like in this plane. We really should think about the long term and, and how we can solve the, the issue. Cause with all these speeds increasing, uh, it's going to become very difficult to uh, avoid a problem. Thank you very much. We're going to have to suspend. Well, you guys got everything you need? We we have uh, Elm Street. We would we have talked with uh, can folks. We, can we take a couple minute break? I've got a hearing that has to happen at quarter of. Yep. Um, if you guys can just step back for a second, we'll go through this very quick hearing and hopefully very quick hearing. Okay. And uh, we'll go from there and we'll talk about uh, Elm Street. Okay. Yep. Appreciate that. Sure.
Okay. But you're in your time. This is actually a license. Waltz. Okay. So now it's a public hearing. Walters. Yeah. Here. You can read it. Do The board of, board of selectmen will hold a hearing to consider a petition of Walters Propane to store an aggregate amount of 10,015 gallons of liquid propane gas in both stationary and mobile tanks on the property located at 225 Greenfield Road. <coughs> Assessor's map. 122, Lot 1, Map 123, Lot 23 in South Deerfield. The hearing will be held November 20th, 2013 at 745 in the main meeting room of the Town Hall, 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. A copy of a license um, application is available for inspection weekdays at the Slegman's office, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Thank you. Is there someone here from Walters? Come on up. Hi. Sure. Grab a seat. You want to bring you on up? Okay. What is that? What is it? Coffee cake. Okay. Coffee cake. Can you tell us about your application? Oh, well, the uh, put in for the application for to keep our trucks there. Uh, we have a total of three trucks. Could, maybe you could pull a little closer to the mic. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. Okay, so there's uh, three trucks maximum that would be parked there, and that would hold. You're always assuming the tanks are full. So one tank is a 3,400, one's a 2,400, and one's an 800. The rest of the cylinders that are stored there are empty. But we, for purposes of getting the permit, they have to assume they're full. But they're really empty. Okay. So I took a total of the three trucks plus whatever cylinders are there, which are assumed full, uh, but there, and then I, I totaled it to get to be that number, ten thousand. It was just a little over ten thousand. Okay. Anybody else on that? Um, do we have adequate fencing? You did, did you? Yeah. Can you talk about the fencing? Oh yeah. Well, the the, the air that one area for this is all contained. It has two doors sliding, you know, from both sides. So uh, it's a sliding type door, probably uh, at least 12 feet in length. So there's a 12 foot entrance on one side and a 12 inch entrance on the other side. 12 feet, 12 foot. <laughs> so there's adequate room for all trucks to drive either side. Okay. Um, the police chief, I mean well, the fire chief response. Oh, okay. Staying. Anything else you have to add? Uh, no, that's about as simple as it gets, I guess. Okay. Um, along with this, the fire chief um, the, for this district area has uh, called in his <coughs> approval of the process and plan and feels that there's adequate uh, fire protection um, requirements have been met. Um, so hearing, having that as information, is there any other questions or concerns at this hearing? Uh, I do believe that Walters Propane is providing a public service to our community. Uh, the only question that I would have is during the planning board meeting, we were uh, told that all on-site storage would be um, on, on portable vehicles uh, regulated by the DOT. Nothing that was um, on-site storage by permanent structure. Right. That is correct? That is correct. correct. Yes. No permanent structure. So that because that has the OT and exactly that's an MC three thirty one. Yeah. Well, I think they offer public service and energy is important and a locally family owned business is perfect. 
Thank you. <coughs> yes. Uh, Lois, I'm one of the owners of the adjacent lot behind on 12 Evans. And uh, I think I, I wanted to ask a question about the lighting. Uh, it's caused a little bit of light pollution on our property. But, it, yeah, if there's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, the existing uh, lighting is not so bad. We weren't going to plan on putting any more in. I'm not. That's a question. On the altered on that. Yeah. The light is there now. Just, okay. Excuse me. Uh, just for the uh, record, so that the people that are hearing this stuff, John, be quiet. Just for the record, the concerns was the back a boarding neighbor was concerned about light pollution from the facility. The owners, <laughs> operators said that they'd take care and make sure that it, the the uh, issues were taken care of in the neighborhood, and everybody seems to be pleased. Is that accurate? Thank you very much. That way, the person that describes these will can take notes. Yes. Hi, same property. Um, question about the hours of the vehicles going in and out. Mm -hmm. When are they? Twenty-four seven. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just you know, you know during the day we do it. Or like I would assume Monday through Friday when we get there in the morning. Some days more. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just, just, just a, a second. Hey guys. Hey, excuse me. We have to keep, we have to keep this so that we can actually put this. My understanding is the question is hours of operation. The individual up here is telling me that it is going to be day shift operation. They'll get there in the morning and be done. If there's an emergency, I do go there at night too. Right, but again, it's a f emergency application or problems. But normal operation is normal day shift operation. I can't say anything to that. <laughs> as long as you guys understand. Yeah, an operation would be it's just trucks coming and going. That, that's, right. it, that's it. Driving in and out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard Hillier, I live in 5B Evans Lane. Yes. I have two questions. When you, when you look at the site plan, there's a possibility of expanding that and putting in um, permanent storage tanks. Are there any plans in the foreseeable future, the next five to ten years, where you would contemplate putting a permanent tank, storage tank, in that facility? I don't remember that. All I, all I can say is on the planning board, we approved for the site plan portable truck-driven okay. tanks. That, I mean, I can't speak for Walter yeah. Propane yes. by any means, but that's that's what I believe has been approved for this application. Uh, special and, the, and they would have to have a, uh, a hearing and a permit process. Right. For anything permanent, anyway. The other question I have is: there any requirements uh, related to the fire department, any public safety, which require new training for anybody in the fire department, etc.? The purchase of new um, fire suppressing techniques, training equipment, etc. That would be required by the town because of this facility and because of its location. No, the fire departments are already trained in those areas of normal hazmat and hazmat operation function. So that, that it's not anything new. It's pretty common through in the region and they get good regional M MOU training. <laughs> anything else? Hearing anything else, I'll close the hearing. Um. Um, I make a motion that we support this application. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Thank that unanimous. Tilla, thank you very much for coming in. All right. I don't think that's. Did they, are they still here? Yeah. Come on, guys. We have the, is it 815? That's a, um, 815 is tax classification, and then you'll have to do the 815, we have the <coughs> 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 Oh, 
Uh, just Everybody for knows. just for those people that are uh, just joining us, because I saw some walk in, um, this agenda was packed. Um, we had a lot of things with a lot of requirements that were put in place, um, and we're working through them to the best of our ability. Uh, if we have an agenda, um, we're on the, the first 6:30 item. We're going to be a long night. And uh, we've done the hearing that just took place was a hearing that's required to be done on time because it's posted in newspapers and other events. The next item that we'll be breaking for will be at 8.15. We have to do the class um, tax classification. Please, I beg your forgiveness for, for allowing us to go this route. This is the best and expedient way for us to complete our work. So, gentlemen, the floor is back to you guys. Um, you want me to do this one quickly? Start, start, and then I'll just go through the design quick, and hopefully we can uh, let them get on their agenda. In, the, in Elm Street, this was a, a question of, of uh, from the beginning, a little bit more complex in terms of a crossing, and added uh, basically sidewalks on both sides, and then had to do um, a little bit more definition on the roadway surface or the roadway configuration to prevent people from making turns that would around around the, the the gates and so what we've added is a couple of islands uh in the in the middle of elm street raised to, islands raised islands uh, that we uh and sort of offered of uh potentially putting water in there if you want to put plantings in them so we can coordinate that with the town thank you i think i think the the, can you the pull the mic up closer to you oh yeah the the i mean i think the big thing that we recognized <laughs> from the beginning was that this is sort of a uh, entrance entrance point for the town um, and that it was very important to treat this very carefully uh, and come up with a, a really what I, I sort of from a planning perspective believe is an elegant approach that uh, sort of a, addresses that and, and, and funnels the traffic in. Uh, Ron, if you want to quickly talk, but sure. and then, then we could <coughs> respectful of your agenda. That's okay. Uh, uh, if I can go to our second handout which is uh, elm street and go to the last page again the same uh, plan sheet that has the uh, the railroad uh, x Does anybody need handouts someone have that we have extras up here okay uh really quickly kind of following up uh, what what tim had to say is that uh, we're looking to improve the grade crossing and provide a sidewalk uh, continuation and make some improvements in how traffic flows there, but also protect the movements uh, when trains are coming so that uh, cars are not tending to go around gates and, and uh, uh, not heed the warning devices. So a couple of things that we did do that, that the, as you can see in the middle, there's uh, raised barriers specifically. Mm -hmm. Kind of orient you uh, on the plan here. If you looked at the north arrow up, uh, and the very left-hand side of the, the sheet. <clears throat> that means we're coming from the west, going into town, uh, going toward the right. And uh, what we come to uh, first just before the tracks is the, the old freight house area. Uh, it's on the right-hand side there. There's an entryway there. Uh, that it, The way we configure it, it can be left and right-hand turns out of that. We go across the uh, grade crossing, and uh, Tina Place or Tina uh, Road Drive or what it is uh, right there. The one thing that we wanted to do here is not have a vehicle be able to make a left-hand turn. Uh, the gates on the other side would be down across the other um, uh, westbound um, lane. And it would be very easy the way that's configured so close to the crossing for somebody to turn uh, short of the grid gate arm and get in front of uh, that so we, we configured that so that'd be a right hand turn only and uh, so someone have to turn and go out there tina place as you know actually does have another it continues on and goes around and exits out onto the the parallel roadway so there's actually a lot of access ways for people that need to go out and make a, a westbound move uh continue to talk about uh, that great crossing area you then come to the end of that barrier <coughs> And there's a revision there to make a transition on the railroad street. 
and that's uh, I've gone to the lead center buildings right on the corner there <clears throat> what you see here is that uh, out there today is a very very wide approach to the uh, main street and the uh, kind of circular profile that you see there is is a definition of bringing a paved raised pavement and creating a, about a 24 foot wide uh, stop area and defining the roadway uh, there's a lot of pa uh, parking along railroad street uh, between the the travel way if you will and the railroad that we didn't want to affect we wanted to protect that but we wanted to define where uh, the the actual roadway movement was uh, we did consider and, and marked out uh, whether we can hold a, a trailer truck. We understand there's a lot of trailer truck movements down there. Whether we could hold that uh, for uh, a truck making a left-hand turn onto uh, Railroad Avenue and still clear the grade crossing. Uh, this allows for that. And also that's another reason to push that, essentially the definition of that roadway as far to the uh, east as we can. The other thing it does here is, again, going back to what Tim says, we're looking on the sidewalk size. It gives us a very defined sidewalk. Uh, you come across in front of the lead center. Uh, we have a short, relatively short uh, crossing for people to have to negotiate, go back up on a raise, and then back down uh, transition to go over the grade crossing. Immediately after that, we, we have a, another elevated sidewalk uh, down uh, in front of the ice cream stand and where it transitions to the existing uh, sidewalk areas. Um, really, I think <clears throat> that's the, the summation of it. Uh, I think we've tried to protect the movements, uh, but also provide you know, some, some definition. As Tim said, uh, the, the raised be medians could be, uh, have some water running out to it. If you would uh, like to install some planters on it or something like that, or uh, some particular definition that way. So with that, I'd uh, be open to any <laughs> questions. No. <coughs> there and I like it well, it's well thought out. You know, I, I would again encourage you to look at the, the downtown study because this is a, definitely a part of an area that was closely looked at. Um, traffic common has been part of that, and also, as, as you mentioned, Tim, the gateway into town. Yes, sir. And as part of that, again, I would say bituminous sidewalks are terrible, they don't hold up well. The islands themselves, I like the idea of planters. I think we should have granite curving there to match the downtown. Our goal as a town is to extend our downtown that way and better create that gateway. Petumas does exactly the wrong thing. Um, let's see, is, is there a right out of Railroad Street for a large truck, or is that? Yes. There is? Okay. Um, and I, I think that was about it. Again, look at that study. There's a lot of traffic common suggestions in there about just the road width, striping, that sort of thing, bike access. Um, but if we could do away with all the bituminous, I think we'd... Uh, your marked improvement aesthetically when all said and done. I agree with the Aaron concrete sidewalks and granite curb when it comes to the crossing. That way we can attach, uh, add to it with the same down the road. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to have to beat the cost of um, tearing that out. I mean, replacing it with the Um, get the message? Yeah, yeah. I All think right. I think uh, we we <laughs> wanted to. Uh, so we'll make sure that's on our hit list parade. And uh, anything? Any other questions for the gentleman? I just want to say that you know, if it wasn't made clear that we've had meetings with both public safety officials and and these folks, and had a lot of input from chief and fire chief and EMS and highway super. They keep referring to me. I had little to do with it except forcing them to come here and space the public, <laughs> which I felt was very important. <laughs> Forgive me, but I do. Thank you very much. Yeah, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk to you about this or and come out and talk to you about whenever you need to need so, us to do um, that. If, if Wendy sends you a follow-up letter, then, you know, these issues would be addressed more than likely? I, I, you could send us a letter. I think also the idea of sending it to the COG. Okay. Well, we'll send some to the COG we want done, but I think you got the message. We're looking for just a little bit more step up into the... You know, like the concrete. Concrete and, the, and in the center of town. The, yeah, I mean, I'll you know, certainly look at and that. 
I mean, I'm not expecting you to pick up all the all the burden. It's it's something the town wants, or I'm hearing the town wants, it, and it's it's plan and it's open space. Let's try to partner up and make something like that a little bit more realistic. Because again, as John said, if we don't do it now, we'll be tearing it up, and we have to do it over again. <clears throat> and then we have to wait for your six years of approval process to get it <laughs> done on the railroad. So the, I'd much rather the, have you do it the, now. One of the things that, I mean, sort of in, in this design was anticipating that, um, that we didn't want you to have to come back and touch this if you well, extended everything on the other side of it. So boom, it's done. Right. But what you... <laughs> <laughs> Did you but get the message? definitely have a longer well, I didn't hear that again. Then my turn. <laughs> All right. You bring forth and hopefully nobody says that. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. All right. Okay, I think we can squeeze Ken in maybe. Ken. Come on up. Thank you very much for patiently waiting. No, not at all. I'm uh Selectman myself, and we have an unbelievable number of miles of railroad, and we've had our own railroad crossing issues. Um, anyway, uh, I'm here. I'm Ken Elstein, and I'm uh, representing the Hampshire Council of Governments. Um, I'm here to talk about the Electricity Aggregation Program, which is our program, uh, which we are hoping will be born soon. Uh, for residential and business customers. Uh, so this is not about your town accounts. It's not about the school accounts. It's about residential customers. Uh, three times uh, the town of Deerfield has approved our requests. First, uh, at your uh, town meeting in April of 2011. Uh, second, you signed a petition in May of 2011. And then later that year, you signed the agreement that is in effect uh, in October of 2011. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work in Boston trying to get the approvals. Uh, this program has grown. When I uh, last was here, there were 22 towns. We're now up to 38 towns and cities, 160,000 people. Um, we are continuing our efforts based uh, for Deerfield and the other communities based on the uh, old contract. Um, we were approved by the Department of Energy Resources, and when it came before the Department of Public Utilities, they made uh, a couple of suggestions. Uh, first of all, um, with all the lawyers that have looked at this, and it's been a it's been a sub industry uh, of lawyers, um, they all were happy with having a single aggregation of 38 towns and each, all of the towns would have a single bidding process. DPU's lawyer said, oh no, you need to do 38 separate aggregations and we would act as agent. From the point of view of the customers, it would still be a single bid. Uh, everything would be the same to the residents, everything would be the same to the towns, we pay all the expenses, we do all the management, <clears throat> but we have to have lots of paper, 38 separate 85-page petitions, you have a draft copy, uh, DOER is finishing up its recommendations for changes which are really quite small. Um, but in order to make it consistent, make our contracts, our agreements with the towns consistent, we are asking you to sign a, an amended agreement uh, which takes into account this revised uh, structure of 38 separate towns under one umbrella. Um, the other major change there is that DPU has asked us to allow the towns to have more authority. Uh, we think probably most of the towns won't actually do that, but in fact, uh, when we do our bidding process, the towns will be uh, notified of the fact that we're going to be doing the bidding, making a decision. The decision will be in a very narrow window. Typically, we'd get the bids at 10 a.m., <coughs> excuse me, and by 2 p.m., we'd have to make a response. But the towns in individually would be allowed to decide that they don't like the bid 
and the result would be that their community, the residents in their town, would not be part of the program for the duration of that, that bid, whether it would be six months or 12 months. Uh, they would then go back to their utility, Wamiko and National Grid, respectively, until the next bid. Um, <clears throat> clearly, if a number of the towns didn't like the consensus, it probably means that the bid was, that our, dis our consensus decision was not a good one. And so we would probably just drop it all together and delay and do another bid in three months or six months based on what's happening in the energy markets. But it's, a, uh, it's in the contract, it's in the plan that uh, you'd have this opportunity to participate. We would obviously give you uh, an education in advance for whomever you would designate to be the person participating. Uh, it could be by telephone also, conference call, um, because you're not going to just have somebody walk in and hear all these numbers being thrown around and, oh, now what am I supposed to do? I'm representing the whole town. So we would, uh, we would set it up. We would tell you in advance what our thinking is likely to happen, what's happening in energy markets and the like uh, in advance. But this would be an additional authority given to the towns um, should they choose to exercise it. So the bottom line is, though, that um, in general, this will still save money, and the idea is still to be responsive as soon as, you know, to any changes in the energy market. Right? Yes, and okay. a few other things that we've decided more on the order of policy is uh, we've always said that the initial price would be lower than the existing rate. Um, we had some fancy footwork about possible penalties after the first six months. Uh, that's all gone now. No one will have a pen Anyone who wants to get out of the program can at any time before the program, after it starts in the first six months, and then after the six months, the six months is required by uh, state law. So at any time, any, end of any customer who wants to get out would be able to get out uh, easily, no penalties, um, and that would be typically an 800 number or uh, by returning our postcard. Um, so this is basically paperwork, like you said, so the rollout hasn't really changed. That's correct. Okay. Um, oh, okay. No, go ahead. I'm just wondering how you publicize this to the public. Uh, education plan is a big part of it. Uh, first of all, before once we get approval from DPU, we will be sending out a mailing to every eligible customer. By the way, Eligible customers mean anyone who has not yet chosen an outside supplier. Um, generally, the big box stores have outside suppliers. Uh, uh, commercial uh, customers, typically between about 30 and 60 percent of them have outside suppliers. Residential customers typically, uh, it depends on the town or city, but they are typically on the order of in the single digits, three to eight percent have outside suppliers. Uh, we've been getting uh, recently various offers, uh, airline mileage, credit cards, the like. Uh, our director uh, the other night, uh, Todd Ford, said that if you get an electricity contract and a credit card, you should be su suspicious of the electricity contract. I would add you might want to be suspicious of the credit card. but. Uh, we are local. Uh, we're the Hampshire Council of Governments. We, have this, we were born the same day as the Franklin Regional COG. Um, we are, we've been, uh, all of our money is local. Uh, anything, anything that, uh, that we do is, is here in Western Massachusetts. And uh, so this is a program beyond the, the existing programs of uh, the council. So when, um when do you have a plan on a mailing date now? Well, the, we once DPU gives approval. Which you think is when? Uh, Marie, what do you think? About uh, January of 2011? <laughs> um, I, I, it's been a while. My, my, my former boss. Um, uh, we're expecting DOER will, will approve it within the next couple of months. Uh, DPU then may take anywhere from a couple of months to many months to make its decision. Um, and you don't push de okay, know. the regulators in Boston. I mean, okay. So you'll um, let us know. But right? what will happen is, yeah, absolutely, you'll know. 
uh, we would do this bidding process, then do the mailer. Now, a mailing will go out to every eligible customer. It will have a return postcard, if it, which will explain it. It will have the current price and the proposed price, uh, and people will have the opportunity to say, no, I want to pay more to the existing utility, uh, which, okay. w as I said, we guarantee that initially, at least, it'll be a lower price. Um, and uh, <clears throat> then they have 30 days to do that, after which it, the, uh, the, the, uh, the new price would take effect at their next meter read. Okay. Um, I make a motion we approve this. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, unanimous, please. Thank you. Thank Jim, you. Thank appreciate you for your, sticking around. Appreciate your patience. Well, if you, there were two copies. If you sign both of them, you can okay. keep one, and um, I have another. Okay. <laughs> no. Maybe they're attached. Is, it oh, Is that one or two? That, it's six pages each. We can oh. squeeze that in. So. Are there two in there? There's two signatures. Papers. Okay, that's what he's looking for. You keep one and we keep one. We'll keep one. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but that's gonna, you're going to be getting another 85-pager once DOER finishes. Which this about they're changing been, about three pages of it. This has been a couple of years. It's yeah, been it's been a couple of years for you. Uh, my own town, Belchertown, approved this in 1998. <coughs> Bernie Kubiak said that he started working on this back in the mid 90s when uh, with the county. It's pretty crazy. You have to open the classification area, Mark. As soon as he gets done signing. Thanks a lot. Steal my pen back. Steal your pen back? Yes. One of them. And we're all set? Yeah, I'll fill it in. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. For those of you who have a scorecard, we're going to move on to the classification hearing, which is was we're about four minutes late for. <coughs> Town of Deerfield notice of classification here, and the uh, South Deerfield Board of Selectmen will conduct a hearing to determine the percentage of fiscal year 2014 tax levy to be associated with each classification of real estate and personal tax, personal property. I apologize. In, uh, confirm, in confirmation with the requirements of Mass General Law C.40 small s.56, uh, information on the projected fiscal year 2014 tax levy and classification of values are available by contacting the Office of the Board of Assessors. This hearing will be held in the main meeting room where we are now. In the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on Wednesday, November 20th at 8.15, which we're five minutes late for. Um, all interested taxpayers may present written oral information and data relevant to determining the fiscal effects, fiscal effects of um, available alternatives. Board of Selectmen. Gentlemen, please introduce yourselves when you come up because there's a lot of new faces I don't recognize. <laughs> Bruce St. Peter's uh, chairman of the assessors this year. David Roars, assessor. Thank you, Bruce and David. Thank you. Um, we have, a, um, have reviewed it and uh, uh, based on uh, the percentage of commercial in relation to residential, uh, our recommendation is that we stay a single rate again for this year. Uh, the effective increase on the average residential taxpayer uh, would be about $150. That's on a valuation, an average valuation of a, of a single family home of uh, $270,426. 
um, any desired shift. I just used a, you know one as an example. Uh, a um, 12% shift would, uh, which would uh, drop the residential rate by 54 cents, would increase the uh, commercial, industrial, and personal property rate by a dollar 65. Which so to, uh, it was only about 24% of uh, commercial, industrial, uh, personal property. We just feel it would be an undue burden on any on that uh, sector. Um, at this point, we have uh, looking at a rate of thirteen dollars and seventy-one cents, as against last year's of thirteen forty-four, which is a twenty-seven cent increase. But as I said, that would be an impact of about one hundred and forty-five dollars on the tax, plus another four dollars and thirty cents on the uh, CPA, for approximately one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, the excess levy capacity, right at this point would be uh, $6,564.13. That's less than a penny, so that's why we left that. Um, my understanding is that we used to do a vote on the uh, split rate, single rate first, and then do a vote to follow up with that. Um, do we want to have discussion of the hearing in between or um, well uh, is there anybody on the floor that has has any comments the, right, the, right, so you understand in front of us right now we have two questions one is whether we stay with a single rate um, or go into a modified rate that changes what the uh, um, indust industrial and Commercial, industrial, commercial and personal property rates would be changed to percentage-wise and take it away from the house real estate rate at this point. So that's the first question that's in front of us. The second one is once we've determined that, the, um, the assessors have given us a recommended tax rate to meet our obligations um, that we now have from the annual town meeting. Um, so does anybody have any questions about the first one, which is a split rate or a single rate? if we uh, choose to increase the industrial commercial rate uh, to make it more than, um, to make a split rate, if you will, we're, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. If, if the minimum wage gets increased to 11 bucks an hour, <coughs> by 160, and, and you do this, uh, it's just, it's going to be impossible to do this. Not just in the town, but the state of Massachusetts. Historically, um, the real reason for a split rate is if you have a single industry that's leaving and you want to nail it, you know, basically. Otherwise, there's no real justification for split rate. Okay. That being commentary, anybody else have any comments well, or concerns? I mean, that there really is no basis for my a split My comment rate. is it's just the opposite. If you have a large industrial base, you can absorb it. You can absorb it. Well, it was, yes. If There's you many reasons for doing it. Both of them are valid thoughts, but in this case, and um, I think if we project this correctly, it's the no assessors reason. and the Board of Selectmen have in the past always endorsed a single rate because of its fairness, and we appreciate the industrial part of the, the uh, pot that we have here, so to speak. So, um, hmm? <laughs> Excite them, yes. Okay. And that base has been dwindling. Yes. As we all very know, well know. We've, we've gone from almost 30% down to 24 at this point, and we're, we've got to make sure we stay friendly to a little bit of it at this point. So, right. Any other questions about split versus? All right. Do we, we have to close, close the hearing. Here. We have to close the hearing before we move on to that. So let's do the second section. Well, no, I actually. Well, no, we can just close the hearing. Close the hearing? Because once we've taken it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't think there's really any discussion. Do I have a motion to close the hearing? I make a move. Uh, I mean, I make a motion we close the hearing. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make that unanimous, please. I, I have a motion to. Yeah, I vote. Um, we, we adopt a single 
um, classification um, for the per, uh, real estate and personal property for fiscal 2014. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> and now setting the rate. Hmm? Is that typically what you do? Mm -hmm. Not have that that's well, the, uh, the well, I guess you could if you wanted to, but uh, that was what we once we set it as a yeah. single rate, right. it goes as that. I, that I proposed the single rate at 1371. Yep. I understand. Yeah. For those that do you need us to sign anything? Much. Okay, with that, if I could ask you, the board, to sign this and this is uh, just uh, saying that uh, you have been informed of the levy capacity of six thousand five hundred sixty four dollars at 13 cents and that the meeting was held on 11 20 2013 at 8 15 at the town hall do you have more than one do you have anything no, else just, you need to no that the rest of ours is our signatures Coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yourselves? Sure. Uh, I'm Gary Griswold with Bayer Material Science. I'm the uh, project lead for the expansion. And my name is Michael Petron, uh, project engineer with uh, Tie and Bond. Thank you. We have in front of us a request for sewer connection. Correct. Um, would you want to give us um, a short synopsis of where you're going? Did Sean join us? Sure. Come on up, Sean. <coughs> yeah, we um, we met uh, the last hearing in October um, to present and submit the application for Bayer uh, Material Science. Um, it was continued, so you would have some time to review the application, and we are back before you to answer any questions that you might have. Just give us a quick summary since there's a lot of people that are here now that weren't during the thing is what you're doing size wise and sure. load, bear, load and stuff of that nature. Sure. Um, uh, Bayer Material Science is, is uh, looking for uh, approval for a sewer uh, connection to the Industrial Park West uh, municipal sewer system. Um, <clears throat> they would be not extending the sewer but rather rather uh, 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 connecting with, with a pipe um, their flows are limited to domestic uh, wastewater at this point in time currently their system uh, the water that they take in for process water is evaporated on site um, and right now they are uh, sustained on on a septic system designed for about 1500 gallons a day that's the maximum daily flow um, so they are looking to uh, potentially abandon the septic system 
and connect to the to the public sewer system in Deerfield. Um, so what your application is, if I understand it correctly, is for the same amount you're abandoning from your septic system? Correct. So why do you need to abandon your septic system if it's the same rate of flow? They are currently catch that one. No, they, they, they they're currently I'm sorry. They they're currently uh, looking doing a feasibility study to expand their, their facility. Uh, ho hopefully doubling in size and with the septic system in place uh, it's it's a, it's a site constraint they're looking to to optimize their their facility expansion and having a septic system one um, takes up room that you have to reserve uh, on the property and uh, two could potentially impact uh, how their facility gets expanded copy of your septic design I have it for you and I reviewed the septic design the location perk test and I have all the information right here size of septic tanks leach field capabilities and so forth and <coughs> this is an informational thing that I'm mm -hmm. doing and I found the soil suitability to be uh, less than two minute an inch perk rate which is very substantial uh, for supporting a septic system I found the design and the septic design in the reserve area are capable of being doubling up if they're planning on a building expansion um, I don't see any problem with the soils in that area what I did was I reviewed their permit application and I requested from Mr. Petron, and he said it was okay to do a site visit in the plant to determine whether they have floor drains or any other things that could burden our sewer line in the event that we hooked up to it. And then I also looked at the request for an eight inch sewer line. And if we're only talking 3,000 gallons, 4,000, 5,000 a day, it seems like an eight inch line would be the improper line to use because an eight inch line would clog quicker with the slower flows than a four inch line so I'm sorry can you say that the again? sediment usually in larger diameter pipes mm -hmm. the curvature and the sediment settles to the bottom and yeah. usually this is where we have our sewer issues with when the flows are reduced to that amount but I also did the calculation on the water usage and this is the reason I I don't think I have all my homework done at this time for the board. The water usage is 208,000 gallons per month, correct? Yes. Okay. I calculated that back out by your working days, and if, unless I made a mathematical error, your evaporation rate is pretty high. And I just questioned on how you could evaporate that much water. It's like 300 and something gallons per hour it would come out to. And what happens when you don't evaporate this would be the question I would have for the board is where are you going to dump it? I'm, I'm not, every, every application, let me qualify this a little bit better. Every manufacturing facilities that's ever been in the town of Deerfield and every single commercial building is subject to checking for connections that could cause our sewer plant problem. And I just point out to the board that that needs to be guaranteed to the board how you're going to deal in the future with that. I also contacted the DEP to discuss the infiltration water flows. They do not have a problem with the quantity of water. They do not have the problem with the weight of the water because they also determine sewer plant flows by pounds, pounds per day, gallons per day. Those aren't the issues. The only issue is how do you control and how do we guarantee that this doesn't, there's three other buildings that are in that site. There's the Animal Eye building, the library building, and a closed engineering building 
and it just I want to point out that the DEP has pointed this also you need some kind of an agreement so everybody's not going to jump on a bandwagon after and claim a hardship and want to tap Deerfield sewer line so this is what I've turned up my investigation and I'd, I'd like to suggest that we get a little more input for what the process, manufacturing process and, and the water consumptions would be now and in the future and how we would handle a slug of water that had to be dumped. That's it. Do, do you have anything? On? I, I, I would answer, I, I guess, what is the question? Um, the, the question is that item 10 on our, on, your, on our application specifically asks for plumbing descriptions and drawings of uh, uh, schematics of the general plant and waste layouts, including a location of floor drains, manholes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you didn't submit any of that. We, we can provide existing here. We well, can provide existing uh, floor plans of, of the plumbing system itself. Um, I'm, we, we, we can. I'm just However, being the devil's advocate, but I oh, think I'm, we should have that information. Well, we should have that information. In, in, but I guess the questions I heard that, I, that are intriguing me from, I'm sorry to jump in, but uh, I'll lose it if I don't ask the question, um, <clears throat> is you're talking about 300 gallons an hour being evaporated away. 370. And you ask the question of an eight inch line, which with what their request is, yeah. would probably clog the line with as small a flow as you put in. Correct. Those are the questions I would like to hear the answers yeah. to. The other stuff of whether you got the right information or not isn't really pertinent to me at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, so in Industrial Park West, uh, there's an eight inch uh, sewer main. That's capable of carrying almost a half million gallons a day right. uh, within it. I'm not, I, I don't understand where you're coming from, and I'm, I apologize um, about concerns well, about clogging. The, the point is, yes. if you only need 5,000 gallons when you do all your expansion, why would you put a line in capable of a half million gallons? Oh, no, we, we, no I, we would not extend the 8-inch main. We would be putting in that, probably a one to two inch force main uh, from the property because we would be pumping. See, so that's, that, had, that was not until this minute clarified. Okay. Um, the reason that we didn't provide those diagrams, again, as I explained, we are in the process of, the process of trying to determine how best to expand the facility. Okay. At this point in time, we don't know what the potential layout of the building is going to look like, whether we have to add additional bathrooms, which we think we will have to. Um, so uh, rather than giving you something that exists today, well, I guess we could give you what exists today. However, we want to make sure that how we're getting the wastewater from the facility to, um, to the sewer system is, is accurate um, mm -hmm. and would present you with a, 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 a final plan of the facility once it's been determined how we're going to do that. So May I? In, in the meantime, we could certainly provide you with an existing plumbing, plumbing plan. Sean? Before we issue a permit to hook up to our sewer, we would probably like to see what you have planned for the future so we can determine what the flow in the gallons is going to be. That's all I have to say about it. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I'm not against it. I'm not. I'm kind of in the middle, but I want to see, like Richard said, I want to see some more facts as well before we... Yeah, I'm, I'm riding the same fence with Sean yeah. that we need to have all our information. So we've got a responsibility to making sure everybody has all the information. And I, I, I'm with him on that. I, I do have one more question, though, that kind of relates to the sewer. But I, I observed the drainage swales around the building and where the Deerfield line ends and then the drainage swale for edicts drainage swale, which isn't very far off. And it seems like if the road gets punched through there, the drainage swales could all wind up connected. And I don't know which way the water goes, uphill, downhill, or, and I'm not it's quite sure. It's a different sure. subject mm. at this point. I'm, I'm not sure if the weighty water from the, from the swales, the retention swales, would wind up in the dedicts retention swales. That, that's that's a question, engineering yeah, question. Yeah, but that that you can give to Dedick and 
we yeah. can get that well, on the table for a, another just discussion. Just a point that, uh, observation. I think, I think we need to, it, it's a good observation, and but we need to capture it and, and in the medium it needs to be in. Mike, did they have anything drawn up at, to date? Um, for the we, future expansion of the building? No, no. no. That's, that's, that's a process that we're going through okay. right now. Um, very, very uh, beginning stages. Um, we, we don't have anything yet. As soon as you that's, get that, could you get that to us? Yeah. yeah. But you're, I don't, I don't uh, if I understood you correctly, the line that you're talking about being a forced pumped line mm -hmm. at one to two inches, Correct. it has a limit to the amount of flow that it can be shoved to even in a forced line correct. That, correct that is correct does that that's, pre that's pretty limited what is the limit what is i guess what's important to me is it, uh, it we're talking about one component one industry coming to into the to the line and, and we're talking about that not being able to um, be a gateway yeah, be mike, a problem, mike be can a, probably answer this because it would be a pressure dosed scenario type system that you'd have to have storage capacity then to dose the plant, correct? It wouldn't be running continuous. No, it would, it would be dosed. Con would yeah, dosed, not a continuous run. Correct. So that, that limits the factor down to tank capacity and operation of the building. It's not a lot. Well, that's my impression, but I'm not an expert. No, so I want to make sure that when we ask these questions, we go from an eight-inch line to a one-inch line that's reality and talk about what are the realities of it. I. He can do it as well yeah, as I can. I, the mathematical calculations it's, it's, are easy. Bayer's intention to connect, again, just their domestic wastewater to the system, and that's what we'd, we would be sizing that pump chamber for and, and the line. By grinder? It, yes, it grinder. would be a grinder. Oh. Um, Dick, do you think you would be able to do an inspection um, and get all the information you need in, in the next two weeks? Sure. So right. I'd, I'd like Sean to be involved in it. Right. Well, the other thing uh, I, I haven't heard, and I hate to be the the negative aspect of this thing, but I haven't heard what what are the compensations for what we're doing. Uh, what do you mean? The fees? The fees. Uh, it, I mean, we don't have them on here, so I don't know. I've heard rumors of different things. I, will, if we I would need. To, I need to see what's going on over there first before we determine anything. That we just I, talked I, about. I guess my, you guys can correct me because you probably do this more than we do. Um, wouldn't those be determined before we approved a connection? Wouldn't fees be a discussion that should be the, armored out before we? The issue that the DEP suggested that, or, or told me to relate to the selectmen, there should be some municipal agreement for connection yeah. volume that maximum volume that they could do and also an agreement to disconnect because if you let it connect with no agreement to disconnect you can be locked in forever okay, so, now. whatever <laughs> well so you need that you need that agreement a legal agreement in okay place. now i'm going to embarrass the living out of myself who in the town of deerfield is responsible to, to derive this thing to come up with the agreement? Yeah. Well, we can get the hey, You won't leave quicker, will you, if I point to you? I think we need to, to I don't have, think that's a big issue, Mark. Uh, yeah, but I, I, really I think that it's issue. an issue to some of the people that are who would like to hear what's going on. And, yeah. and the way I would like to treat this, because our sewer treatment facilities, we have two that are under uh, underutilized at this point in time and we as a town need to figure out how to well, put, it, put it back into um, more design spec and utilize it and from a, we don't want to have somebody getting the impression we're doing it from a capacity it. standpoint it doesn't amount to anything it's less than it's, it's less it's than a half percent I read the, I read percent. a lot of the documentation but the, the thing is that's I, minuscule it's the, minuscule but the thing is you still need to hear you, you if I'm not getting the head with the, agree, the agreement is the most critical right and Sean hit the nail on the head with the cost so without those two items worked out they, whether or not they allow it or not is but I, I basically am in, in in favor of taking our facilities to the to a higher capacity as long as it fits and does not hurt our facilities so mm -hmm. um, but again I don't have 
what are the costs and and how do I control it? What what are the disconnects? How do I get that stuff in place um, so that basically we can move on with the process? I think when um, Richard and I go over and visit, we can sit down with them and actually have a little meeting and discuss these things and to get back to you and bring Don with you. Excuse me. Bring Don with you. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. One, we, we planned on it. One thing that uh, was discussed at the last meeting was uh, you were going to discuss this with town council also, and I don't know what came of that also. Well, I think that's where the request the for a municipal agreement came from. <laughs> <laughs> no, it came but, from DEP, actually. Okay. Um, we can't ask council to review something that doesn't exist. So we've got... I think it was uh, you were going to lean on them for recommendations as to whether we can disconnect what type of agreement or right. one one item that also came up was the fact that the sewer bylaw applied to Deerfield yeah. residences and perhaps not the, uh, a facility outside of Deerfield. So there's yeah, we understand there's some complications. Right. Those I think are. are doable and I'll, I'll I wasn't here so I apologize for not staying on top of that aspect of it um, I came late and I, I, I deeply apologize that I did this out of my control um, um, but I would uh, make sure that that gets to us in a in a question format so that and we answer it and get back to you um, I think when my you office. can come up with a um, agreement that our council can review yeah I, oh, I'm sorry. If people um, are going, huh? No, I'm sorry. Um, I think I think Wendy can come up with an, some sort of agreement that council can review and um, run it by you. Um, you know, because it would have a disconnect. I, 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 that to me was the most important would, thing for DP. Would that DEP? I, I guess what would dictate uh, the disconnect? What, what would be the, the condition? I think that for us it would be um, over over your stated usage. Okay. Without previous if, approval or, or without discussion, written understand or discussion. Right. And I mean, it wouldn't be because of, of um, any reasons other than the fact that you over usage, over usage, or improper. You sent us the wrong stuff. Yep. We um, traced it back to the fact that you sent us something that you weren't supposed that's, to send us. That's yeah. already happened at uh, the the former rule tool. I already did an investigation right. on there 15 years ago, probably, maybe even longer. But and we want to be able to. Uh, cool and water down that was wound up floating in our top of our sewer plant. It's uh, oil based Oil coolant. based coolant, right. right. So I would say that the reason for disconnect could be abuse of the system. Yep. And I, like I that. think as long as it's, it's, it's structured and in, in it, in it's uh, right. clear. Yeah. And I mean, uh, one of the things that we'd probably do because this is going to be fairly new to us, and it probably the technology is something we can use elsewhere, is we would probably ask for some frequency of testing of your pump station so that we saw what what panned out in that aspect of it. So. I would I would just like to suggest that I help I help Sean research this. He said he was going to help you research. Well. It. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's got the buck here? He's in charge of the sewer plant. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I think we could work together to come up with all, answer all the questions if, and work with uh, them to answer the questions. I, I, I just don't think, I, w I wouldn't be prepared to say yay or nay sitting well, here. without somebody answering the questions that were just brought up of our bylaw and um, one of the other questions that you, that's why I wanted you to make sure you. Disconnect, the disconnect thing. Well, the disconnect is, you've got that all under control, but uh, whatever our legal rules are by town meeting that would have to be changed or modified or discussed, I need to have a review of that. Or, or the agreement would state that, you know, they would be uh, considered also, also considered uh, residents of uh, com have to comply with, with the sewer bylaw. Yep. I have to say, um, I'm much feeling much better about it based on not an eight inch pipe I, no I, you know. no the, yes the, the existing main within industrial okay. park west has an so, inch but they're no they're i mean we were concerned the volume potential for volume but also um like dick said the you know sluggishness of of your small flow i mean it could be a potential problem all the time so, um that's good <coughs> it's nice that you are able to lecture the engineers on 
flow <laughs> flow compared. Well, so okay. uh, any other questions? We're sorry no, to be no, short. We've um, uh, the Bayer does have in place a, a confidentiality agreement for coming into the facility um, that that they would have to sign. It's not a problem. Okay. You, yeah, whatever. We can, we can wear dark glasses. <laughs> Whatever you, but, but and we'll keep the, so the people to a minimum. It, so there are no space. floor drains um, in the facility currently. Um, all the the process water again is is recirculated and contained within a separate system, and really the sanitary sewer goes to the septic system. Well, yeah, we're a very small quantity generator, so we uh, we are not rule tool. I hope not. <laughs> Any other questions? Part of it is just verification. Yeah. It's well, just it's, part it's, of it. Gentlemen, over there. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much. Questions will pull up. Oh, yes, yeah. we will. My question is in addition to checking out what they're, you've got to find out what, what is going to happen to rule tool with regard to our sewer capacity and also the oxygen pickle property. What happens if some business goes in there? And what happens if some business goes in a rule tool? And what is the capacity of our sewer plant when it gets to 80 percent? Whether we connect to these people or not, it's a problem we're going to have down the road. Absolutely. You got to, the problem's also going to be, don't forget, as a like when Pat like promised in the past, there's also commercial properties on Route 5 that still don't have sewer. We've been waiting now, I've been waiting for 30 years to get sewer up there. And it's, it's sad to see some how this town gets services before we get services. So I think if they're going to take into consideration the amount that they're going to put into the system, they also got to take into consideration what rule tool may or may not put in the system, and whatever's going to go in at Oxford goes in the system, and hopefully I get sewer up there, what I'm going to put in the system, is it going to reach 80%, <coughs> then we have to build a new sewer plant? Something to think about before you start giving services to another town. How little service it may be. We don't know what's going to be one inch this year, two inches next year. That would be part of the agreement. I think it's a, you know, if they pay, fine, but just take in consideration. You got, when that sewer plant gets to be 80%, you got a problem. <coughs> That's my understanding. And it's my understanding that, that is correct. It's my understanding that EDIC is opposed to this. Thank you. Uh, they're, they're, uh, <coughs> Objection is to the punching through of the road to the between the two. Uh, the meaning after that, they're opposed to the sewer and the road connection both. Um, so, they they own or they're in control of the. I understand they're in control of the industrial park. They should have some input to see whether whether we should connect to another a private industrial park in another town. Uh, they've. Uh, I know they've discussed the subject but we haven't got anything formally from them. And the other aspect of it is they do have a voice and they will we'll listen to it, but we still, as sewer commissioners, need to do it. We see it as the right thing across the board. So um, we're not going to ignore anybody. And, but we, can't, we cannot satisfy every single person that comes through the process. So we will. I just didn't take into consideration down the road. Well. Thank you. Shut it off. You're going to shut it off. Thank you. I, I also agree. Um, about 20 years ago, I bought the old Masonic building here in town, and I just wanted to add two bathrooms, and I was turned down by the Board of Health because our sewer plant couldn't handle the capacity. I own three commercial buildings on Route 5, and 25 years ago, I came to the Board of Health kind of representing landlords along Route 5, and we volunteered to pay for sewer line come down to the fire. We couldn't do it for the sewer plant, couldn't handle the capacity. But now we kind of got this straight and we still don't have sewer up there. Um, you still hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax revenue. Uh, we all have to pay in additional to our taxes we have to pay, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars to get our tanks pumped out. And if I could be mistaken, but I don't believe I am. The money generated from sewer permits do not cost, cover the cost of operating. So basically, <coughs> the taxpayer, the septic systems, I subsidize the septic I and mean, the sewer plants anyways. And this, it's really unfair. The sewer system is uh, op operates as separate um, line item. 
it it's self um pay it, yes. it pays for itself there's no there's no subsidy and we and we also have started to build up the fund to be able to expand it out to areas so it, it's the sewer is, system is and it is trying to, it's, it's, to accumulate enough money to to add and but again if your business people are willing to pay to do it it's, it's a, don't be so blunt <laughs> if you're willing to partner up with us <laughs> so that we can make things happen then you know it's it's a huge cost to run through this process and uh, we have some expertise on the board now that has some of the history from back to 30 and 25 years ago to actually um, stop um, to help us start addressing some of those concerns and, and seeing if there's some routes around it that will help us with that aspect. Like Doug said, though, it is, it is important because if you start allowing other communities to expand into our town, it really can limit you know what we can do. And I don't know, I mean, yes, we can maybe expand it, but that might be a larger process. And you know, there are a lot of businesses around and homes that don't have this service that you know, it causes a lot of hardships for the people. Uh, there are places in town where homes have sold, where the land just isn't large enough really to have a functioning septic system, but they're either kind of grandfathered or they just kind of go along that way. Uh, the sewer is not available to them either. Thank you. If we want these in okay. the minutes, we want these comments in the minutes, we should have people come up. Okay. This, these people were turned down 18 years ago, in my understanding, for application to connect to a sewer, right? Do we know why they were turned down before? Yes. Why they built the first septic system? Yes. The capacity at the sewer plant had a problem with the salt brine from the pickle shop, and at one point, 32 years ago, they put holding tanks at the pickle shop which people thought, some of them were, they thought were pickle vats, which in turn they were salt brine vats, which then they leached down the uh, salt brine at certain rates, at certain times of day and at night when the capacity of the sewer was not taken up by residential use. And the salt brine destroyed the bacteria, the bacteria. because we have an aerobic digester system that it killed the bacteria. What I mean, the building, the Bear Building, and the Whaley Industrial Park applied to connect to our sewer once before. Am I not right? 18 years ago. They I weren't. They, they weren't there 18 years ago. They weren't there 18 years ago. Well, when they built the building, they applied. In my understanding, it was turned down. I think. I think the capacity um, was only resolved um, once we um, were required by DEP to remove floor drains. Um, you know, people were um, you allowing that their sept, you know, from in their in their cellar, right, Dick? And that was that was really where we yeah. took down the majority your, of the capacity. So um, we still have infiltration problems, but um, is, that, is that why they were turned down from camp before? Well, we had no capacity before. There was a, there was a moratorium for, uh, established by the state. In 1979, I believe, and that moratorium ran forever. And then only when we did some um, I and I, I and yes, infiltration into the lines where we allowed certain connections, and then we had to go through the process of, of disconnecting 200 sump pumps off that yep. were putting in clean water and plugging all the illicit connections because that was only in 2005, maybe, and I was involved in cutting off those illicit connections. Uh, Dick had to go and inspect yeah, people's actually, homes, they actually. They weren't illicit. The town actually recommended it. Recommended it. In, in the 30s and 40s, they actually recommended to add water through floor drains to the sewer yeah. to do the exact same thing I was talking about with the 8-inch pipe, right. to keep the pipe to flush, flush down. it down. Yes. And we still have one street that we need to fix. It's still... And we, we still have, um, like June of this year, um, we um, had infiltration because of the storms uh, that came through in June. It was very wet. We had, um, it was almost a million gallon 
increase, wasn't it, correct? Well, from DEP, we had a letter. Yeah. So we still have infiltration problems um, even today, even though um, we've had general fixes and um, issues like that. So, I mean. It still a problem that somebody bought a real tool and came in with a high, high water capacity use over there, too. That's right. We could. We could still and have problems. We could put something in the oxy pickle property that used a great deal of water, too. So we have our sewer people in town that are on the sewer now. Think about that. That 80% thing sneaks up. You're absolutely correct. But that's why we're not talking about an 8-inch line. We're talking about a small 1-inch one one line. Make sure you shut it off. Yeah. And we will have that agreement if there's any abuse. Any other questions for us? Thank you for your patience. Um, we do appreciate it. Uh, it's been one heck of a I would it's suggest that Sean and I be in contact with them soon. We yeah. expect for you to be back here in two weeks. If, and if, if you, you can, can get please let Wendy, let know. Wendy know so that we don't schedule a meeting and, that's not, up, and waste that's their time again. Up to you guys Thank, to you. Schedule. So. Very good. Cool. Thank you very much. And again, thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll look for a plumbing plan. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Dick. Thank you very much. I know. I, I had, had one. <laughs> I got did you really? Yes, I did. I took the one that was right there. Yes. Just give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, please take one of these. My skin. There he is. I'm sorry to make you pull this over. Okay. I, I wasn't realizing I wasn't speaking. No one needs it so we can put it on the agenda. I think people need to go out and get a pumpkin cake. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a pumpkin break. Come get one. I haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. You guys cut it out. All right. We've done beer. New Leaf is canceled. We did the classification. We're going to do public hearing. Public comments, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take the big one. Take the plate. Take the plate. Who's got the Shh. Hey, it worked. <laughs> Very inappropriate. Not now. <laughs> All right. We're going to go into what we call public comment at this point in time. Um, Anybody like to? Uh... Yes, I would. <laughs> my name is John Rawis. Um, I'm a citizen of the town of Deerfield, and it's my understanding that the Board of Selectmen um, are the special permit process for the medical marijuana. Um, I would like to ask the Board of Selectmen when they consider the special permit process that, A, they make the special permit applicable to all state, federal, and local laws. Two, the person that signs the permit takes all liability that may come from uh, death or injury of a person, including rehabilitation. Um, somebody gets hurt in an accident, gets killed. That signature on that special permit takes full liability. I don't know what the legalities of any of this are. However, it should be taken into consideration by the Board of Selectmen. We, we Right now, uh, Dick and I have been working on a list of things that well, we I want to include, like to but I'm, 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 I'm not sure, John, um, if we can, how we can add that. Is that? No. How, how would we? we the, first one, the first one, which was that we make sure that they abide by all lo rules, regulations, state laws, and everything. State, local, and federal and laws. That are applicable. I mean, that's, that's understood. That's what that's the permit understood. is that goes to TPH. Yeah. So that's not a problem. The other one well, is. Because of federal, because it's not. Well, you can't federal. Not a federal law. There are no federal yeah. mandates for it. No. But we're, yeah, it does. It's, but they're not applicable. So, uh, the because problem is. Unfortunately, the drug trade attracts sociopathic people. It, people that don't care about human beings, life, it's, it's, it's absolutely horrible. 
John, the only thing I can tell you is John, we're working really, really hard. I agree with you, but the, the statement is that we have 800,000 people that, are dead, that get killed from prescription medication that is legal in the United States. It is not, it is not a, a thing we're not living with in everyday life. And the thing about this so aspect. let's add another. John, we, do every, John, we do every day. That's what saves some people's lives. It doesn't help everybody, but it doesn't hurt everybody. And what you're talking about is people who have the right to go out and take something illegally and create a, a mantra that is you negative. You're drinking your Kool-Aid, Mark. John, John, we're trying a very, very hard. We're working on this really hard, this okay? This is a medical application. This is not, this this is not a home stepping home. stone to legalization in 2014. Well, I know. And we need to be prepared. We need to plan. We don't need to put another school by the railroad track so we can argue about it 10 years later. I know. I know. Okay. It is addictive. Lady Gaga came out last week and said, I was addicted. <laughs> okay. That's because she got caught in the car with it, and that's the reason she got off oh, free. Oh, okay, so... Yeah. When you get caught, you can be addicted. But if you that keeps caught. you from getting to go to jail, yes. If you don't get caught, you're not addicted because it's not addictive. Okay. And I, I read that on the Internet, so John. we okay. got it made. I'm not alone on this. And John, I'll you're not leave. alone. Yes, People. I am alone on this. No, you're not alone on this. We're trying to be concerned. We're doing everything you can, we can. But we have to work within our... What is our yes, we have to work with it. I mean, the, the state of Massachusetts, in their infinite wisdom, or along with other states, say that medical marijuana should be legal. And okay. you know what? If it was going to be used for the, that specific person, per purpose, it would be fine. But the demographic in other states for prescription, well, it's not even a prescription. It's whatever it is, a card given by some Certification. Kind of, a certification. certification is between 25 and like 32 years old white white male really really well maybe there's a lot of back aches out there i yeah, don't know yeah undiagnosed I, back aches. Uh, undiagnosed pain. Uh, john we're, we're working with what we got okay that's all i can say and you know i'm working hard on this i've been going to a lot of meetings and the regulations are fairly extremely you know, it's not that you can just walk into any doctor's office and get a prescription for this you no you don't have to go to a doctor yeah, you do. Yeah, you do, John. You have to go to two. And you know, it's. And we do, and the, and the ones that are advertising, uh, we're 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 tracking down the one, like the one in Northampton that, for two hundred bucks, you can get your certification. We're already trying to, you know, make sure that those kind of places are or persons aren't operating. That they don't exist. I mean, the, we're we're filing complaints. We're and doing stuff as much as we can. I assume. The benefit of the marijuana on terminal patients. Where it's an industry of, that... I know it's an industry and I understand. I have a son that is a drug addict. He smoked on heroin. It drives me absolutely crazy. But thinking that this medical marijuana is a gateway to heroin is ridiculous. Okay? I've seen it. I have an uncle that was a district court judge that only could get any relief from marijuana that he actually got illegally because all the regular painkillers didn't work. I had a twin brother that just died a little while ago. It was the same case with him, John. I can't stand cigarettes. I can't stand any type of smoke. But when I see the relief, you know, I have to sit back and say, you know, yeah, you know, I, I see the problem with the Oxycontin. I see the problem with Percocets, which is very common. And so why don't we smoke heroin as, as medication? Why don't we... If you look at the studies from... So marijuana, yeah. stuff, even heroin, so somebody that is truly in pain, it is not addictive. It's only when they start using it, when they are not in pain, that it becomes addictive. I'm not justifying any of it because, uh, like I said, I have a son that is a heroin <coughs> addict. John, but, you know, we're, it's we're open to any suggestions you have. We're having an open list that we're working on. Dick, Dick and I are going to every meeting there is, okay? But 
and we're trying to come up with regulations that are reasonable and How's fair. How's the Department of Public Health doing with the whole thing? We, Dick and I just went to a meeting on Monday. It's a, it was a total bust because you know what? They haven't hired any staff yet. Right. So how's this going to be controlled? Well, the when the next phase, which is Thursday, the applications are due for phase two. They're supposedly using the permit money from the phase two applications to hire their staff. And we are supposed to have help um, after that hiring process, probably in December. Okay. We're talking, we're, we're going to make, make a field trip to Rhode Island with the health director from Northampton and um, the health director from Amherst, Dick and I are going. We'll go down, um, uh, if we have a license that's approved here for Deerfield, we'll go down to Rhode Island and visit a pharmacy and a dispensary, I mean, not a pharmacy, dispensary down there and talk to people down there. And we're going to, you know, we're doing as much research as we can. We're trying to be as thoughtful and as thorough as possible. We're doing everything we can to make sure there's absolutely not a penny, not a penny passed on to us as a town. We're absorbing the cost of these meetings right now up front. But, I mean, I feel like we have to educate ourselves. So that right now, that is an uncovered cost. And most of the time, Dick's driving, so it's his gas. But, <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're making every, every effort to do everything we can and be thoughtful <coughs> about this, okay? And that's the only thing I can promise you. We're, we're honestly concerned. We're working with, um, you know, John Pachork, our police chief. He's trying to be on top of stuff. We're, we're doing a lot of research, John. Okay, and I have an open list, and you know you can email me and call me, but I am not going to respond to every single email. I just am not even home. So Have I ever emailed you? I don't think I have. Yes, you've emailed me many, many times. Maybe you've forgotten, but I have not forgotten. And you have called me many times. And, and you've called me, and I've responded every single time. So please... Just have some faith in us trying to do a good job, okay? It's like my doctor told me. It's the ice cream that's going to kill me. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, John, seriously. That's what he said. Okay. <laughs> Please right. have some faith. Oh, okay, I know where I stand yeah. here. No, it's, and you have a valid point, and you have your opinion, and I, I value that opinion, but, you know, you know we have our opinions. Yeah. And, yes, I would like to see the hard narcotics, the class A's and stuff regulated the same way they have the regulations spent, spelled out for this stuff. So people can't go to every doctor that they around the corner and get a prescription for Percocet or Oxycontin. They're not going to be able to do it with this. John, we're really trying, okay? And we're, and we're, and we're, and we're complaining to DPH. We're telling them they're rolling out. I really think they care and are listening to what you have to say. Well, I really hope so. I John, I don't see how you can't think that. We ha we're investing the time. We are really making an effort. I have spent many, many hours going through this process, reading the documentation, listening to the people on both sides of the fence, and I... Well, it's not a joke. It is not a joke. It's, it's not, not a joke, John. And we're talking to the, all the towns across the, the state. We're, we're c connecting and networking and finding out what everybody's asking, what everybody's concerns are. We're, we're trying to get answers from D DEP. They know, I mean DEP, DPH, sorry. Well, they know that they are not organized. But there's anything, nothing we can do about it. I mean, that's what happens in these programs when they start up relatively fast. But the state isn't going to commit a lot of resources to this until they start collecting the fees. And they're starting to collect the fees, so they'll have the resources available to us. Yeah. And we're just trying to hang in there until then. And that's, we, are, we are making a real effort. And we can't expect the state to take care of us on this. It needs to be... John, we're trying to build, we have an open list. We're trying to build for all the contingencies. And like I told you, I absolutely am not going to pass a dime on to the, to the town because we can't afford it. We are using our free cash to cover our operational costs already. We, can't, we cannot absorb any more responsibilities so, um, without having them paid for. So we're, we're trying to 
you know, outline all our expenses. But uh, uh, this is new. So you have to give us a break a little bit because we're, we're trying to sort this out. But well, we are I'm not coming down on you as the select board personally. I'm saying that we need to cover ourselves as a town, protect our, our children, our unborn, future generations, because we don't know which the... John, my, 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 my grandkids are in this town. My, my grandkids are started school. So yes, don't, don't you think I care? I absolutely care. Oh, I would hope so. So don't worry. I, you know, we're, you just have to have some faith in us, okay? Please, and, and give us a little time. We're, we're doing everything we can. Honest. All right, well, thank you for your time, Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to take Aren't your you smirk. <laughs> I don't know how to take your smirk. I really don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. This has thank really you. taken up a lot of time, Don. Mm -hmm. I, I, really, yes. We has. We I have spent a lot of time on this, too. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I was just going to ask if we could move the meeting ahead. We are. Public comment meeting. You were repeating it to death. Mm -hmm. Come on up. We're not a strike. Oh no, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm uh, Jim Pashesnik. I own uh, JM Farms Patient Group, and we're here to ask you for a letter of support. For an operation we're going to have on 10 State Road. They can't hear you behind. Get a little closer to the mic. Okay. Yep. What's that? You need to turn up the mic. He's right on it. He is on it. Actually. Go ahead. Oh, okay. You You're okay. Okay. And we have a lease intact on for 10 State Road in South Deerfield. We're leasing the building. We have a lease that we're going to, if we get licensed, we're going to be there for at least 10 years, if not more. We don't plan on purchasing the property like you asked. We're going to continue leasing it. Mark Vallone owns it. So there's not going to be any um, non -profit. Yeah, tax relief or anything it's gonna stay on, on the, the property. And uh, my partner Nick, he uh, he's got some questions and answers for you also. My name is Nick Spagnola. I'm the vice president and uh, chief operating officer of this organization. Um, you know, ultimately, the the long term goal here is to is to to be here for the long term, right? And um, the only way to do that is to to be a good citizen and to work with you guys directly. Okay, and to be accountable directly to everyone here and to Chief Pacharic and to the citizens and ultimately to the patient base in Franklin County and throughout Massachusetts. Um, so, you know, accountability, we're here to, to make our intentions known and um, go about this the right way. We do understand that there is a, a regulatory burden and that DPH has not really made funds available or have, you know, have really assisted in this process as of yet. Um, so, you know, we are fully willing to um, pay any type of, of annual fee to make sure that the, um, the, the cost of implementing this program is not passed on to the citizens. Um, there's also, you know, it's not, it's not one-sided. You know, we, the first order of business we would like to do if there was a uh, license handed to us is a job fair and to, to get local citizens involved. Um, and to, to hire local growers and local farmers and people that could ultimately, you know, serve our organization for the long term as well. Um, the, the, the building, it's actually, I believe it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's 10, is it Greenfield? Ten, it's 10 Greenfield. 10 Greenfield, yeah. Okay, so it's 10 Greenfield Road, um, and we found a property within the district that was laid out, um, and instead of going it, going about it through owning it from the, the nonprofit and just playing the tax game and being tax exempt, it's, it's really best that we just lease it. There'll be taxes paid. Um, so there's no games there, okay? And also, the building needs a lot of construction on the inside. And we are familiar with the special permit process, and we'd like to, to start, you know, as soon as, as possible, really. 
Um, but just for, for numbers, I mean, the building will probably need somewhere between um, $30 per square foot uh, in construction costs. There's 15,000 square feet that we have. Okay, so uh, a round number, that's half a million dollars in construction for a local bidding process to begin. Okay, um, if there is ever any type of, of community complaints, you know, we're not going to hide behind attorneys. We're going to be here in front of you. To, to handle it and to resolve it. And ultimately, this is a new industry. So we're all trying to, to work this uh, together and, um, and to really make it work. And you know, lastly, the, the building, I think it is, it is ideal because the cultivation and dispensing site could be in one location. So there's not a lot of risk of transporting from a, a grow location to a retail storefront. It would all be in one location, and we'd be willing to work with uh, Chief Pacherik, uh, the Deerfield Police, on any type of robbery prevention, any type of anti-diversion prevention that, that would you know, really just ensure the safety of the community, of the building, of the employees, to really make this work for patients as well. So just a, a you know, general statement. We did also, and we have been working with this gentleman here, um, Kayvon, and he's been just really instrumental in helping us get through this and um, if you wouldn't mind yeah. Hi, my name is Kayvon Kalitbari I'm a owner of Denver Relief which is the oldest medical marijuana center in Denver uh, and second oldest in Colorado we've been open for about four and a half years and we are really well known uh, internationally and nationally for not what we do but how we do it and we've uh, really put an emphasis on community integration um, with our green team we've done uh, free bicycle wheelchair repair clinics for once a month for four years uh, perpetual food and clothing drives we do urban gardening efforts um, we coordinate volunteers uh, just a couple weeks ago to build uh, two greenhouses uh, for the large this third largest uh, urban farm in uh, the United States which is located outside of Denver um, we're sending a kid to college this year. Um, we are uh, collecting hygiene products um, when talking about um, addiction. Um, the largest needle exchange uh, in Colorado is a couple blocks from my house, and we recently took them on as a partner in collecting hygiene products and uh, providing volunteers for their needle exchange. Um, but we, we do all this because we, we understand that there, are, there is oppo opposition. There are people out there that, under, that don't understand the palliative effects of marijuana, the actual benefits that it can have, because what they're seeing is what's on the news and what's been carried down through this, these negative stereotypes and this, this false perception that's existed for so long. Um, I, I did want to comment <clears throat> And a couple of things the gentleman mentioned, uh, one of them was the federal. Um, recently, I'm sure you guys know, the Department of Justice issued a memo uh, that came out recently that said that any state that has a regulated system such as Massachusetts has, uh, really uh, operators such as these, these gentlemen would be, and, and the towns, um, would not be in trouble. They could not get in trouble for what they do as long as they uphold the, the, what, what those regulations are and, and follow that law. Um, so <clears throat> the, the federal is really a non-issue. Um, well, it's, that's it's just an executive way. order, though. It, it, it can it, be changed with a new president. It is, and, and, and that's true. And, yeah. and, but by the time there, you know, we do expect another 12 states to come online uh, with medical next year. At that point, we have uh, 36 states, I believe, in the District of Columbia. Um, uh, so it, uh, the snowball is coming downhill. Uh, the Gallup poll just came out recently. 58% of people in America believe in medical marijuana, or um, that marijuana should be legal for social use. It's 86% for medical marijuana, actually. Um, but I came out here to help th these guys. Uh, I, also in Connecticut as well, where we just uh, submitted applications for a dispensary and a production permit uh, last week. And we, we had what I consider our biggest victory uh, in Middletown, Connecticut. Um, we did something similar to this. We produced a white paper that talked about the, the uh, touched on the security concerns that the neighborhood had, the community integration pieces that I talked about, and we actually gained favor from the city council on a six to three to one vote uh, to approve our client for a lease of a city-owned building, uh, 15,000 square feet to grow medical marijuana uh, with an additional first right to 30,000 square feet. And we did that because of the because of our intentions and because of how we presented ourselves and, and what we wanted to get done in the community. Um, what, what Nick touched on with, with wanting to give money out, this, this is a nonprofit, and there are going to be extra funds there that do need to go to places. And I know that these gentlemen have not only committed to providing what you need for the town, but also in these community outreach programs and into the research and development of marijuana as a medicine. Um, so I, 
I want you guys to know that, you know, granted these guys don't know what they're doing right now. Uh, Jim's a great farmer, obviously. Um, but you know, this is, this is a different beast. It is, it is a different animal and it's going to take some time. Um, but they have, uh, executed a memorandum of understanding for an advisory services agreement, uh, with my, uh, my firm, Denver Relief Consulting. Uh, we've committed our resources for two years, um, during the construction process and then two years post, uh, their first day of retail sales to really stand by them and make sure that it's done properly, that it's done in the model that was expected of them. Um, it was about six months ago, we had a piece in the uh, Chicago Times, uh, executive director of our marijuana enforcement division in Colorado, Laura Harris, referred to us as the model of Colorado. And we, we, we take, we, you know, that's very important to us that, that people externally uh, in the government, in the community do view us uh, in that manner. And we've, we've really, we'd really like to, to bring that here. And I understand that, you know, I think Jim's the only local, only local applicant in in the county or is it just Deerfield no I think there's five applicants in the county right but how many are from what's that okay yeah I mean that's one of the problems with DPH is not clear in the application process um, we we have information on five but we don't know where the status is right now sure we we would certainly be willing to Know, give up some of our, our gross revenue to get this off the ground and to cover um, the regulatory burden. I know, you know we would be willing to, to do 2% to begin, and it's not like money suddenly is pouring in. I mean, there's a, a lot that has to get done to get off the ground. So I mean, 2% as we expand and as patients uh, expand, I think it's just something that we'd be comfortable with, that we would actually be able to do and be able to sustain our operation in the organization. And, you know, However, that money was used, um, whether it's to educate on the misuse of marijuana um, or for education programs or for scholarships, I mean, so be it. But you know, we're, we are here to ask for a letter of support um, for the application that is due tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. And, uh, you know, we hope to really gain your support. Is that customary? Uh, the letter of support? No, the percentages are fed back to the town. Yeah, it is. Um, so in Connecticut, for instance, uh, our client was uh, required to submit a research plan, a community integration plan, a substance abuse plan, uh, to talk about all these other concerns, to address these other concerns, and, and, and what to do to, to address them. And, and often, uh, as far as research goes, we can't really set up the type of research that needs to be done on such a small scale to do this, so they're providing money. So they committed a 15% a uh, of their net profit uh, to go to these programs. Um, so it's it's pretty customary. I, I would say generally it's a pilot uh, program, a payment in lieu of taxes, which I, I think that you folks weren't uh, too interested in. Is that, is that? They're, they're, taking, they're not taking the property off the tax rolls, so that, uh, they will be paying taxes to, via the, the lease. Okay. Doing. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it, it's, it's something that, you know, as someone who's transitioning, uh, Colorado is anyways, to retail, uh, we're getting we're getting hit with taxes pretty hard. Uh, this, uh, it's voters in Colorado just recently uh, in this month uh, passed taxes that would be 15 percent on the wholesale level for that transaction from producer to retail. An additional 10 to 15 percent on the state level as a as a sales tax. Additional 3.5 percent that can go up to 15 percent uh, in the city uh, for Denver, and then the existing 7.72 percent that gets added on top of that. So pe people are milking this, and 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 we. I think the taxes are high. I think they're a burden. I think they're unfair. But at the same time, I understand this is the first time that this has ever been done, and it's not going to be perfect. And we do have to prove to people that this can be done in a different manner than the perception has been. Um, I think it's Milford. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it was Milford. Maybe Dick can correct me. Um, that they were going to ask for a rehab clinic next door to the, um, you know, dispensary. Is that a normal? Would that is? Do they it, do that? It's in actually uh, backwards. In in Denver, we're required to be at least one thousand feet away from rehabilitation facilities. Uh, no, but well, <coughs> they wanted to, they wanted it to be. You have to run the rehab. You know the who whoever. You know, mar mar marijuana is. Uh, if you, this is, I mean, these studies are proven that it's one of the least addictive drugs that's out there. It's less. It's less addictive than caffeine and tobacco and alcohol. Um, I, I understand the gist of it, and I, well, I just wondered if that was a, I mean, to me, that would be like, how, how do you account for the success or 
or the accountability of, of a rehab center. So, I, I mean, I wasn't sure. I'm not interested in that. I, I wasn't, we, we weren't sorry. interested in that either, but <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't sure if that was like a normal request because that seemed mm -hmm. like. Um, We've, we're getting a lot of requests that are kind of all over the board and really they come down to what does that municipality want? What do they need? Um, you know, this, this is a great opportunity, I think, for the town of Deerfield and the county of Franklin to find those needs, address, uh, find where deficiencies are, where money could be used, and try to appropriate for that. I know a lot of people that are in, in other counties in Massachusetts are going after, um, you know, there's after-school programs that are in dire straits. There's different community programs, different charitable organizations that have been around for a very long time. It doesn't have to go to the city. It can go to these other organizations in need. And, and that, that's a very real possibility. It's, it's really where the deficiencies are and what you folks could use. We do have, um, you know, a Massachusetts physician. She's the chief medical director of the organization, so she will be there day to day to oversee patient intake, to educate patients as well, and to uh, to help supervise. So, um, one of the things that um, doesn't seem to be addressed that Dick and I had questions on: um, Were you um, going to do drug tests? And maybe this you can answer this question: drug tests on on your employees, not from a, whether they are. A from addiction level, but from um, the point of view that they would be working with marijuana, they would absorb it over time from a, this would be like a health and safety issue. Were you going to ask for, you know, inhalation masks or, um, you know, that kind of thing from a protect the employees? I mean, so was there any monitoring going on? It didn't see in any of your literature that that covered that. Sure, and, and, and just so you know, these, these gentlemen, and beyond what they presented to you, have a, a pretty robust set of policies and procedures that are no, I read, a stack I read in it. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, they, they've, they've been uh, refined over time as well. But there, there are all, yeah. there are proper um, pr procedures and policies put in place and protective measures to protect folks. Um, just so you know, you can't just inhale marijuana and get high. It's got to be decarboxylated. It's got to be activated. That's why people smoke it. And it's got to be heated to be activated. Um, but these, I, I think people would be surprised to get inside the, the, one of our facilities. And, and you talked about taking a tour. I'd be more than happy to set up tours in Vermont, Maine, or Washington, D.C. with you folks. I know folks that own centers there. And people that are doing it right, people that are doing it beautifully, but doing it more under the radar than you see in places like California. But you walk into these places, and they are medical facilities. We have people in our grow rooms that wear lab coats every time they walk in to protect, envi to, to protect the vir environmental control that we have in place. Um, that if you walk into a kitchen or a lab or a infused products manufacturing space, it, it's generally approved by the local health department. So it's following all the same procedures that say a kitchen would do or a, a, any food manufacturing facility. Um, we have uh, right now we're going through the process in Denver of creating um, certified machines, UL listed, CSA listed, closed loop extraction machines that are inside uh, essentially like paint booths. Uh, explosion proof they filter VOCs I mean this is this is getting becoming a very legitimate industry that every facet of a local government is getting involved in and we're going through that in Denver right now and we've been doing it for three and a half we our cultivation facility was the, the one of the first uh, cultivation facilities for medical marijuana in the country to be approved by a local municipality in the country so we've been through this process and that's why we're signed on with these gentlemen to help them get through this process and to answer any questions that you have. And I, I would always like to, I would like to offer whatever happens here to be a resource for you folks uh, down the road to just general questions, shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to answer them or provide literature and provide any evidence I can about the concerns that you have. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> this is a question that's probably unfair, but what does a letter of support commit the town to? <clears throat> um, it says that, well, I mean, it doesn't really commit you. I mean, it commits you to these folks. Um, but it's is it? Part of as long as they stay well, within the boundaries and the rules and regulations. Definitely. And, and, you know, DPH is, uh, we all know DPH's problems in the last few years, and they've had their own issues. And they have a, they have a, um, they need to make this happen, and they need to do it right. And when we're talking about the money that's going to be available in the program, $30,000, a non-refundable application fee times 100, <clears throat> 150 applications they're anticipating uh, getting submitted tomorrow, they're going to have the money, and this is going to be a very, very robust process. Um, but I think more importantly, <clears throat> these gentlemen understand that they have to regulate themselves. And we've always operated at Denver Relief to be 
to have as impeccable and professional operation as we can. We were featured on 60 Minutes and CBS Sunday Morning. I was on the front page of the Boston Globe a couple months ago, Chicago Times, not because of what we do, because of how we do it and the message that we have. And I, I just think that's important to remember that what we're doing, what we're trying to do with the direction that we're taking this is, is very different than what people have seen on the news. This is, this is a very different animal um, than what people are used to. Even people that have tried to learn about it, they still don't quite grasp what we are doing in these facilities. They do have these medical tones, and that's why I was so excited to get involved in Massachusetts as a consultant because of the medical community here and the fact that we can actually marry these two, that we can really develop research, that we can throw money at it collectively. Right now we're working on a, uh, this is aside from these guys, but I hope they're involved, um, is a fund, a research fund for the state of Massachusetts that all RMDs would actually put money into that would go to uh, that, that medical marijuana research. Yeah. And it's important to remember that I, I think these guys, uh, I don't know if they had it in the, the materials that they gave you, but we're getting away from cookies and brownies and candies. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to have infused products that are desirable to children. We're going to have infused products that are transdermal patches and inhalers and, and sublingual top, uh, uh, tinctures and oral sprays and bath salts and pills and CBD pills. Cannabidiol is the non, one of the non-psychoactive um, cannabinoids in marijuana, it, it, it doesn't have any THC, it's not psychoactive, it doesn't impair who you are and how you think. It's, it's simply pain relieving, inflammation reducing. And I, I've seen, Shaman, I've seen marijuana help hundreds and thousands of people. Uh, we've, we've served over 4,500 people at Denver Leaf alone in the last four years, and I just believe in it. And, and I think these guys do too. Well, we've been, uh, I think we've been advised um, by our lawyers. I know you're, so you're looking for a letter of support. I think we can write a letter of support in theory, right? No. What did, what did the our council? Advice from council is not to write any letter of support. You are a permit granting authority. You are a licensing authority. There's a potential for conflict of interest. And so the advice, and I've shared this with, with you from our council, is not to, because of the role they play in this process, mm -hmm. not Oh, I thought we, mm. we could write a, a general letter of support. Because we have other. I was to come up with something in the middle that she suggested. We're helping seven other teams through the process right now, and four of them have obtained letters of support from their local the municipalities. Board has a special permit granting authority. Okay. So they have other roles to play in this. They're not just select work. Do, do you lump a letter of non opposition in there? Do you, do you consider a, a non-opposition? I can't answer that, but right. I think they would not. It would be my advice when I'm speaking with counsel for them simply do you know, we would We would never ask anyone to do anything that they're uncomfortable with, but if you're not opposed to an operation that is going to look you in the eyes and be accountable and be here every single day, then I would, I would sincerely ask you for a letter of non-opposition at a minimum. And that, that is not supporting, you know, it, it is just that it's a letter of non-opposition. It's saying that you're not going to stop this from happening. You're essentially leaving it up to DPH to make that decision about the suitability of this site, the suitability of these gentlemen based on character and based on the merit of their application. This is a very robust scoring process that is thinking about everything. And they're, they're submitting a ton of information. I mean, this has been a very long process where they have thought of everything. And it's up to DPH to decide whether they're qualified. And, and you folks simply issuing a letter of non-opposition saying, it's up to you, DPH. I mean, to me, that's, that's very different from a letter of support. Uh, how does the board, uh, how are they able to, to uh, provide a letter of support when they really don't know much about your operation or you folks individually? And how did they pick your group over another group that might be interested? Well, the other group didn't show up tonight. And, um, you know, and also, I mean. No, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we have submitted um, operations manuals, policies, uh, procedures, and um, we've had, you know, meetings. We've had an open dialogue with Chief Pacharek, and um, I do understand, you know, a letter of, of support. Uh, maybe you guys feel that there's a conflict, but you have bylaws in the town. You've designated two districts here for properties, and uh, 
and we intend to do so with the, the lease that we have, but it's just a, a letter of non-opposition just saying that you're not opposed to um, this business being here. I just don't see you know, where the, the conflict comes from. But about understanding who these gentlemen are, I'm sorry. Do you want we have public comment. Well, I, you know, I have trouble getting my arms around the whole advantage of this to the town. I mean, you've you got a small employment <coughs> place that you're requiring. I mean, how many people work in this? Well, we're expected that for the, and we've done robust patient population analysis that, that take into consideration the qualifying conditions that we have here in Massachusetts as they relate to other states, and based on population, how many we can expect, and with the 15,000 square feet that they have in their lease, uh, with the additional 15,000 square feet that they have first right to, that probably should be adequate um, to take to take care of the needs and and if that facility is at 30,000 square feet um, quite a bit of it being production obviously it's generally by 80 percent would be the cultivation of marijuana I, I would anticipate that we're looking at 40 to 50 employees you know this includes we're, you know, you pay anything to the town besides property taxes or whoever the owner of the building would pay the property yeah and, the, and, the, and this is the issue part of as, there, there is I mean we we, we don't want to force any taxpayer here to pick up the resources for this. Um, there is you know, a proposed annual $90,000 fee, annual fee to, to maintain the license. Um, also, you know, giving up 2% of gross revenue. I mean, I think that is, is very fair to begin so our hands really are not tied behind our back and so that organization doesn't collapse. And, and as the patient base expands and as the organization does better and, and does well, and we can talk about increasing the, the percentage of, of, gross, uh, of gross revenue that the town gets so from us. where you have existing new, uh, facilities, you've negotiated with the town as to what type of fee? We, you we have not. Have not directly. We have no signed agreement. Yeah, the, saying where, there's, where there are other yeah, in, in, in other In other places, yeah, we have is generally a pilot program or a pay, payment lieu of taxes. Um, so it, it's something similar to what Nick was saying, where we're, we're on the front end agreeing to a certain amount of money as an annual fee or a monthly fee, a quarterly fee, uh, to make up for that as as a benefit for that city being there. Um, but you know, as I said earlier, I think there's many ways that that the town of Deerfield and, and the county of Franklin can benefit from this, and it's it's really up to the citizens to decide what they want. I, I just have trouble finding, seeing how uh, you can ask the town to to, to select your group. I, I think it has to do with... I, yeah, but we're not asking Sure, no, no, I, I think that's fair. I, I, the problem we have at this point in time is... Thank you. The problem we have at this time is that basically there is uh, nobody else here and the permits have to go in tomorrow. So that it well, wouldn't be picking... Permits need to go in, we need to act really fast. No, I, Nick, Nick, has has been, fast. Nick has been engaging with, with the city for, for a while now. Right, but the, but, yeah, well, they, but they come without having any brought anything to the town, so we get to we get to enjoy their their process of being here without even a discussion. Well, if the town has to. I, I, I would think the town would have to. That who they really, you know. I mean, you you folks might be the greatest people going, but to really get to know the the group and who it is to. Well, I, I think just the fact the, the fact that that Jim's a part of this team and that he has been such a stand-up member of the community that he has employed people that he has been a businessman, a landowner, a taxpayer in this town for so long has to be a testament to the quality of this team. I mean, he, they've they've brought together a lot of very quality people, and and it goes back to the legal team that they have um, working on this as well. I mean, they they have the best people in the industry working on their project right now, and and with that local tie with Jim, I, I don't know. I, I, I see these, the strength of these guys' team compared to the other teams that we're working with, and it's there. And the only thing that they're lacking is that unconditional local support, and they're not even asking for that anymore. They're, they're asking for a letter of non-opposition. And, and, and to uh, sum it up from, from at least my point of view on this is um, 20 to 40 jobs, industry being in the town, uh, having an understanding of what it really is, 
being part of that process are things you would want to consider as the positives and the negatives that go along with it. You need to, th th that's what they're asking. They're not asking for permission to run it because that comes from the Department of Public Health. They're asking whether or not we would either be against it totally, that we want to be part of it or not be part of it, or. It, it is a fact that the County of Franklin is going to get one regardless. That's, that's in question three. That, that's just going to happen. And I, I believe, you know, based on the, the non-show of the meeting tonight, that these gentlemen are the only representatives um, that we know of in the, the city of Deerfield, town of Deerfield, that is going for this. So it, it's pretty much down to, again, the merit of the applications. And it's either going to be in Deerfield or it's going to be in another town in Franklin that's benefiting from those folks being there. I, I can... Been to so many meetings, I lost track of them. But I'll give you a little input. This this is a three-phase process. First process, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, was fifteen hundred dollars to get an application, thirty thousand dollars for this phase to turn in the application. Mm -hmm. They're not approved. When they turn this application in, then they're subject to going through the background investigations, etc. When that gets done in January, I think. January 31st is the expected announcement date. Then there's a 50,000 fee to the state to obtain the license from the state. Then they need to obtain a license from the board. Then the board needs to assign a licensing fee. And the board has already been with the police chief, etc., and so forth. And that licensing fee is substantial to cover the cost. As I've been in some of these meetings and locally and the DPH and whatever, and the goal is of this board sitting there is that this town doesn't spend one penny of their money to attract that business or support that business. Is that Correct, Carolyn? Yes. We, we, we have an open list. So when he refers to a $90,000 fee, that's not the end. It's just the, what we have so far. What we have so far is a resource officer. Part of this is education and outreach. So um, we're going to do education and outreach, and, and we will be accountable for it by, through the police department. Um, again, this isn't anything that we've discussed as a board yet this is an open list that we're keeping so <coughs> it's subject to change but th some of the ideas that we're running across that seem real good is uh like i said a resource officer because then we we have the accountability and control of of education and outreach and, and protecting our kids um there is accountability there um we we have no idea and, and we're up front with this because nobody has any idea. We've been working with the Mass, um, you know, John Pachorek Jr. has been going to the Mass Police Chiefs Association. He's been, we've been talking to police, other police departments across the state. We have no idea what um, it's going to cost for the accountability part. So we're assigning a half-time detective to do the accountability part. Every time there's a discrepancy, whether it's a seed or a plant or whatever, that has to be documented to DPH. So that is an unknown. I mean, we don't really know what the time is. So that part can go up or down. Um, like I said, some of the other re things that we're hearing about, like the rehab things, we're not we're not really interested in that because it's we don't have control over it. So. What we're trying to do is come up with a realistic, fair um, list of things. One of the things is if there's a violation, the permit's pulled. All fees have to be repaid again, and you can reapply, but there's going to be consequences. There's not going to be like our liquor license or our tobacco licensing where you have these stages and punishment. This is pretty serious, so you know one of the things we're going to think about is yank the permit to operate. You're just shut down. Um, it's not transferable. 
Um, in other words, you can't transfer it to somebody else. There, you know, we just have a whole list of things that we're hearing. Every time we go to a meeting, we hear something <coughs> else that sounds good, sounds realistic, it sounds like it's protecting the town, we're adding it to our list. Once Dick and I have gone, and DPH has to hire staff, and they have to have some more public meetings. What we're doing is mostly networking with other towns, in particular um, Amherst and Northampton. We, we are meeting regularly with to make sure we keep on top of it. But we're all just generating a list. And then once we um, have an idea of what regulations, Wendy has given us um, several different uh, Boston and different you know models for regulations once we've gone through Dick and I have gone through them we'll bring them to the board and we'll have a board of health meeting where we'll look at the regulations so it, it's not this is this is not it's we don't have enough information to well, give I, that sounds good that you're researching all this and getting that information so I you know I, I don't know how you can how the, how one can I don't think we're going to commit tonight. It's not a commitment. No. Well, these folks are asking for us to. Well, we initially asked for the letter of support, but understanding that that's not on the table, just having the non opposition. Um, I, it, for instance, I was in Framingham uh, two nights ago, uh, meeting with their police chief, uh, with their city planner, and with their uh, depart uh, director of health. <clears throat> and they actually are uh, probably going to be issuing five letters of non opposition. So they met with these groups and understood that they were all having decent intentions and that they seemed like good people, they had good plans, that they seemed to have their ducks in a row, and they were going to let a, give this letter of non-opposition. It wasn't saying we support these folks. It's simply saying we're not going to try to stop them from going into our, our city or our town if DPH approves them based on this, this merit. Um, I, I do want to mention just the, the kid thing twice. Um, I, the kids keep coming up uh, in, in our regulated environment in Colorado. The Center for Disease Control government uh, entity uh, did a, a recent uh, study on Colorado and teen use, and we actually saw teen use decrease uh, two years in a row in Colorado uh, for marijuana. And the reason that existed is because we were in a regulated environment. People were growing less in their homes e illegally because they did have a place where they could safely access it. And if this RMD that gets selected for Franklin County does end up in a town that is other than Deerfield and that RMD, Registered Marijuana Dispensary, chooses not to deliver to Deerfield, which is possible, that opens up a patient need and it will be, folks will be allowed uh, on, per state law, you will have nothing to do with it. You have no, no, no way to stop it to grow in their homes. Would you rather have people growing in their basements all over town or do you want one central place that you can keep an eye on and that you can get a, a, a monetary benefit from? Dave, one of the things that we have um, would be a requirement would be that um, anyone um, that, ha oh, that has difficulty with transportation would have free delivery within our town. That would be one of the requirements of the permit. Um, we already said that. And the reason, one of the reasons that I was interested in having a dispensary in town is just for that reason. I think um, to have the unregulated certifications going out, um, we already had one person, um, you know, the police chief um, and, uh, had 97 plants in his home gonna, with I'm a gonna certification. I'm going to ask you, Carolyn, to slow that down. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think what they're saying is that they're not looking for the town to commit their support to this one group. They're just asking the town, do you oppose us saying something else? If you don't oppose us, are you willing to write a letter of non we, we did that at town meeting. town voted in the town meeting. So that's what they're just looking for, a letter of non-opposition so they can demonstrate that to DPH. That should be enough. That should be enough. Yeah, exactly. That's it. I mean, I mean, we, we've done what we're asked to do by state metal change and move around. We've done two things. We did not institute the moratorium, and two, at town meeting, we established overlay districts for marijuana dispensaries. And that's it. So that shows that we, we have, have as a support for this type of industry, but not necessarily the individual. And we're not asking to yeah. uh, to choose an individual here today, although you could have just as well any group that came here today. Yeah, everyone could have got a letter of non-opposition if you felt it was necessary or if it was merited.
counsel said letter of support. So there's a big difference, I think, there between that letter of support and that letter of non-opposition. You guys That's don't all. oppose the group. Any group that came before you, the, then you could write a non, we don't oppose your group. You worked with us, we don't oppose uh, your group. I understand that the, we got my you. understanding of this is the council is advising us because the Board of Selectmen is the Board of Health. And we will be the permitting process for this to happen. As and, well as regulators. And, and the regulators of this process. And if we were to support this before we issued the permits for it, it would probably put us in a um, compromising situation. Conflict, potential conflict. Uh, that's a, just a is that a letter of support? Because that's different, I think, than a letter of non -op. I think speaking to it at all, pro or con, would be prejudicial to their acting officially when it comes before them to act officially. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I'm the zoning guy, and I guess the only letter you could possibly get, to, in my opinion, would be that the zoning allows it. That's it. I mean, from my standpoint. A, a big part of the, a big part of, uh, of the application approval process is that is either that local support or local non-opposition. And the gentleman's right that the town d has done everything that that we could have asked for thus far. I mean, you, you folks have obviously dug through the regs. You, you've talked with folks. You understand what's at play here. Right. Um, but, you know, taking something away from the quality or the merit of their application, again, potentially puts it in a position where this RMD does get located somewhere else. And if these folks who we don't know who they are, if they don't have that experience behind them, if they are unable to operate this facility as intended, there may not be that delivery. And you may have people, hundreds of people growing in your basements. That's not a scare tactic. That's the truth. I don't think there's anything wrong with that personally. <laughs> I've grown in my home. Plenty of people do in Colorado and everybody has the right to, and it's not an issue. But people in this town will have an issue with that. And it's about how what you can do without supporting it to try to stop that from happening. And a non-opposition being that neutral stance relatively is it's pretty good. I, I don't have a problem with saying that we, we're in not opposition because I think that our, our actions so far has, has proven that. We would attach the town meeting vote um, and the, you know, that would be sufficient, I think. I, I can't see that. I think Nothing more than what was voted in town meeting should should be. I think. I, listen, I, I I hear what you're saying, but I don't think you're understanding the process of the permitting it. We in the town, we. Excuse me. He said Dick clarified it when he mentioned all those things. What did you say? Can you repeat what you said about? I I don't need the the steps, but what I'm saying is he didn't go over what it meant to get to the first step. And part of the process is a grading system that they go through and look at whether or not you meet certain criteria in a checkoff list. And one of them is either a letter of support or a letter of non-opposition from the community. That's for just a simple fact of the state. It's particular group. For, yes. For anybody that puts it, their name into the pot. They came to us and asked. They're all graded by points, Mark. That's what I just said, I thought. Whoever wins, wins. It's wins. Good. And <laughs> the thing about it is, to certain areas. what we've what we said at town meeting down town meeting floor, and what we've said at the ballot polls is that the majority of the people in the town support this endeavor, this type of endeavor. And we should leave it at that. That's all. Yeah, that's all. But it we're, is. that's so that's all we're asking. For. Not, no, you're asking. Wait, 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 no, wait. It was, it was question three. Question three. Deer, Deerfield residents overwhelmingly supported oh, yeah, the passage of question small. three. Yes. Yeah. Deerfield was 66 percent higher than the than the state. But, yeah. So that's all we're. I think, Dave, that's all we're. Gonna the town do. is supporting the concept. They're not supporting. A we're putting a letter of non. We're putting a letter of non. Opposition. It has it's nothing to do with support, than which is less than that. Okay. For points, they do. Yes. Sure. Okay. 
knew if they wanted the dispensary in the world. But we can't hear what you're saying. I'm just saying, I'm trying to protect your interest. It has nothing to do with the proponents, has nothing to do with generic proponents. It has to do with the fact that you wear these hats and you will have to issue permits, perhaps, if they get through the state process at a later date. And we were advised that, that there's a conflict, there's, a, there's ethical, potential ethical violations because you've got two permitting licensing roles ahead of you, and if were you to intervene at this point, it, it, there's question. But the non-opposition so. is not intervening. It's, it's simply restating it's what to, was already. It's speaking to a proposal that they're going to have to speak to if you make it through all those levels. I'm just, that's it. I'm done. Do what you want. I'm done. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, would you either call the train attorney first thing tomorrow morning and ask him to write a letter of non opposition? If they says yes, write the letter. If they say no, don't write the letter. I guess it's like it's absurd due tomorrow. That's okay. If she was a she'd be able to call the train town council right now. We it's my belief that a letter of a non opposition is a letter of support. No. It's it's not. But that's very different DPH. <laughs> DPH has even made the uh, The board can decide whatever it wants to decide. I'm done. So. Well, I, I think we should send a letter of non-opposition to the, this, uh, a dispensary because I, I believe I want a dispensary in town for the reasons of I don't want uh, unregulated certifications being given out in town. So. I feel strongly that we, and that's why I've been putting so much effort into making sure that we roll this out in the, in the most careful, thoughtful way, but that we actually have a dispensary in town. So I would like to say, make a motion that we um, commit to a, a letter of non-opposition to the, to the you know, um, process of, of licensing a dispensary in the town of Deerfield and attach our town meeting vote with our zoning um, and that's it. It's not committing to any group, so I don't feel like it's an ethical violation because we're not one group or another. It's up to DPH whether they go through the process or not. But, I mean, I, I am in support of a dispensary in Deerfield not, not for no other reason, and this is my sole motivation, is just not to have the certifications issued in town because I think that is an awful thing. It will be a nightmare for us. It is already a nightmare. The average the few people that I know, we're not, we're, we have no way of knowing who, who has them or not, and it's just anecdotal. But the couple people that I do know, they have four to six plants, not a problem. But like I said, there was a problem with one of them having 97, and I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. I would much rather have us have it regulated. So that's where I'm, my motivation is coming from. I have a motion on the floor. If you will not second it, I will for conversation. Okay. <laughs> second the motion on the floor. Further discussion? The motion is for us to write a letter of non-opposition to the facility being placed in the town of Deerfield. To a facility. A facility. Uh, I just, you know, Without talking to council, and from what I hear so far, I think that we're on a slippery slope if we do this without getting something official from Lisa. Is it? Yeah, Lisa. If we can call her first thing in the morning, if she agrees. Problem no. is, we, we no. can't no. vote. It appears that vote. <coughs> maybe, maybe we can make it subject to her interpretation. Mm -hmm. I, somehow we have to vote no. tonight. I think. A letter or non-letter is not going to make a difference in their application. I'm, but I'm pretty sure it will. It does. So. I think that the application is for I think very heavily for demonstrating <coughs> um, community support. In fact, I think there's 65 points awarded on that application scoring process. That's I mean, not even true. And so 65 percent, 65 points is 
So demonstrating community support, I believe, looks to be the largest section of, of uh, scoring for, for points. So the letter of non-opposition being you know, not binding to any one group over another, but just stating what the town has already said, that they, they don't oppose it, um, clearly would give JM Farms patient group probably um, additional points on the application process, which as um, Carolyn eloquently stated, would absolutely give the town of Deerfield an advantage over any competitor and any other town that's also going for a license, or put them at least on an equal footing okay. um, because of the letter of non-opposition. Of course, if you had a letter of support, that would be graded even more points than a letter of non-opposition, but that not having any letter at all obviously would hurt their application and the town of Deerfield from receiving the 90000 yearly a licensing fee, the, the 2% revenue that Nicholas Bagnola had pointed out, uh, et cetera. So. The, the patient population there is far greater yeah, too as well, you know. To write a letter, uh, such as the board taking a vote, making a motion, taking a vote, not to oppose uh, a facility in Deerfield, and just passing the minutes on to them. And I think that's something great that could still happen. The unfortunateness of our situation is that these applications are due tomorrow at 10 a.m. We only have this window of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to get them in, and they do require on this letter to have a, an original uh, blue ink signature. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's, it's really coming down to either it's done tonight or it may be uh, too late to, to have yeah. any effect on this application. So. Any further conversations? Same thing. We just want, uh, we just want to know that so you're not opposed to a compliant marijuana business operating in the, in this in this town. We're not. We're well. We would need it for the application. Yeah. It, it's not. We're not asking you to say we specifically support and choose. Suggest work. A general letter that anyone could pick up. Well, not many people have. Who's been in front of you? I I, okay. I really think the the letter is a reiteration of what you folks have already agreed on in the, in the town meeting it sounds like right yes, that yeah it's it's a reiteration that's of that but based off yeah I, i'm going to go back to my statement that uh it's allowed by our zoning bylaws in this district yeah, but, uh, uh, we are not a town that did a moratorium therefore it's allowed by bylaws. <coughs> does the board oppose Unfortunately, the DPH specifically requests a letter of support or a letter of non-opposition. So although the zoning every, is nice. Every other wording you're using, all the semantics you want to do is just that simple thing that goes into a court of law. It says, I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say. So it's to me, the issue is either we support it. In this case, I do support it, but I get the point that I can't because the legalities or the ethics of me being compromised and not be able to sit on the board at, on the discussion, I can't take that vote. That's fine. But the reality of it is my understanding of the stuff that I read, and I didn't read as much as Carolyn did, is they have a scorecard, and they start at the top, and one of the questions is, do you have a letter of support? Yes, you get X number of points. Do you have a letter of non-opposition? Yes. If the first one is no, the second one could be yes, you get so many points. Do you have no letter at all? You get no points. It's whether or not we want them to survive or not survive. That's all the question is at this point in time. Do you want to give them some chance, no chance, or a little bit of a chance? It's 
the choice of the of the thing. It's not a, the semantics of do we support it or not. Everybody already knows that we put the bylaws in place, that we did the things that need to do it. We're now asking, do we want to give them the points? That's the record. Do we want to give them the points on the application so that they can do it? Going, but I don't know who else is applying for this. And that's Those why it's left up to DPH. That's why. I would say I support that as the liability on the town. That's why. No, because that's not even. They go back and say, oh, yeah, you support it. You wanted it. Mike. You want it. You can. Who are you guys afraid? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Who is the town of Deerfield afraid of? Like, if you write this letter, what is the negative repercussion? The only negative repercussion that we have at this point in time it would be that when we were doing the licensing and permitting of the facility, we would be challenged of our, uh, ethically whether we were biased or non-biased to do it. Because we, as a board of selectmen, we also being the Board of Health, which would be the regulating body of that group, is compromised by writing a letter of support, which is one group over another. Yeah, which is why the the town of Framingham did the the non opposition for everybody that was interested. And that's what we're right. going to do. Yeah. We'll write if if we vote. I don't do understand this. politics, but if you don't write them a letter, you don't get a dispensary in Deerfield because there's another one of these meetings, and that town wrote them a letter. Mm -hmm. So then when they do the points, it's like oh, they got ninety of them. They keep going forward. You got eighty nine. Right in the trash. And, uh, that's just what I'm kind of. If if we do a letter of non-opposition, it would be available to anybody. Mm -hmm. and you can give a letter of support. It's not, it would not name anybody. It would be available to anybody. And. I just personally see more risk in that, considering you know no one has been in front of you to make their their plans public. But you know, letter we're, of non-opposition. We're, we're committing to a dispensary. Okay. Versus not a dispensary. That's. And, in your proposed zoning? All I want to do is support a dispensary. So, because I feel very strongly, um, and like I said, that's why I'm committed, is because I don't want unregulated certifications in our town. And it has to be within your, the zoning that was placed, right? Is there any way to use that language that you support a legal, you know, marijuana dispensary? Well, it would be per our zoning, per what was voted on town meeting. Be a letter of opposition, no, a letter of non opposition. In support of a dispensary in our zone air, zoned area, okay. mm -hmm. and that that would be it. Yeah. And the reason the town put in the zoning bylaws is if the planning board had not come up with an overlay, we would have had a moratorium. We we wouldn't have had a moratorium. We couldn't because well, we would have had a cluster. Oh, yeah. What would have happened was anybody that had a retail license or oh, any yeah. other agriculture yeah. could yeah. apply for apply and be in that any zone within the town because it's already zoned for that. So, so because of the overlay, it's in a specific area. You know, we've been putting all our ducks in a row. And the town, you know, like we said, 66% of the townspeople voted for marijuana. I'm a strong advocate for the marijuana. But I want to make sure we're not going to have a conflict because if we put something out there and it's construed that we're supporting you as opposed to somebody else, or, or you know as well as I do, there's lawyers all over the place or just or waiting for this. Or them before they come before you for permits. Yes. Whether they're the only one or there is yeah. another one. That, so, that yeah. it's, 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 it's dyadic there. So, that's, you know, it's the biggest, you know, and then you could really tie up everything. As soon as it gets into litigation, there's nothing that's fast stuff. That's for sure. So we have a motion on the floor to... Write a letter of non-opposition... In for support of in, for a dispensary in our designated area, or area. not naming any dispensary. No, no, just, no, no. Just, no. I'm, I'm thinking they're, non, you're saying that that's not helpful to you. I, I, you know what? At this point, yes. it, um, it, we, it's not. It's not helpful. It's not. It just lets DPH know that you're not opposed to to anyone being in your proposed zoning district. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that would, we, we would feel comfortable. You would not, it's or you would feel zone. comfortable. Yeah. That is. No, that's where the conflict comes in. Do you see any issue? Uh, no, we were, we were just talking about the. Uh, there is one. Uh, you gentlemen have one from Waitley. We do. Yeah, we, we already have a support letter from Waitley. Um, well, I think from, he was showing yeah. so that you could just just uh, as as a reference, really. Um, they they did throw in that. <laughs> well. 
A, a moratorium is simply put in place so that they can learn more about it and make a, a right, a, the proper decision like these folks are. It, it's not a ban. The, the state, uh, the, the Supreme Court, I don't know who it was, stated that you cannot ban. But I, I, I want to answer his thing about the way I have it an email. Place. I can email it. moratorium was put in place to run the clock out on it's anybody who was applying for an application. Email. That's a common knowledge to the DPH. Oh, it's in my bag. <coughs> I can grab it. And, and if a town admitted that, they would be ready? that would be against Twice. the law yes, for a town right. to admit that. I don't think all of them did it for that reason. They want to get their act in order. We we were going to do it, but we got our act in order. You folks put effort in. Mm -hmm. You folks put effort in. I brought it up. I'd rather take the chance. Said either. Do a more time or dot something. I'd much rather have them well, here than not have them The way here. you're describing the letter, I don't have an opposition to it. Just okay. generic? Huh? Yes. What would it say? Just, just what she said. Just we are, we, we are not, not opposed. We, what did you say? It? You said it nicely. We're not opposed to having a dispensary, in the town, right. medical marijuana the, dispensary in the town of Deerfield the within the zoning, right. this, the zoning overlay that's been... Yes. Voted by, by town, town meeting. meeting. Yes. And then you attach the town That's meeting it. vote. Right. And it's I mean, not, not town meeting nobody's delay. name is on it. No. Right. Right. Well, who said perfect? Okay? I think it was Joe. Is that, you is wanted, that suffice? You just wanted the name on it, so I'm... You think that'd be... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, as long as we it's got the, the original, the blue ink. That is the only request. Blue ink. Otherwise... On the signature. Yeah, otherwise DPH will... Do you want to? Well, I've made it difficult. Can we put it on a piece of yellow pad paper right now? <laughs> can it be on letterhead, please? I can write it on letterhead right now and bring it back to you, handwritten. In blue ink. Sounds great. Okay. Well, you have to decide. Uh, do you, would you like to see the the Waitley no. support letter? No. Okay. <laughs> it has no impact. On this. I understand. Just for thought. Not that we don't love Waitley. <laughs> we really do. Okay, all those in it, favor. <laughs> we'll make that unanimous. Thank you. Sorry for making it taking so long, and we appreciate your... I know, we're, we're going to cover it. We're going to go through a minute now. Thank you for now. your time. Before we do head out, I do want to reiterate that these guys are welcome to... Uh, the gentleman was talking about, you know, getting to know these folks. Let's these guys are willing to talk to you whenever, at any time, wherever. And I would as well. And I, I'll give people my contact information. If you have any questions about anything, I'd be more than happy to answer them anytime. Yeah, I think we also have been advised to talk about it. Well, he was giving, he gave it to them. He wasn't looking at us. He said those guys. All, all those he people went out to there. those guys. <laughs> You have so. to understand that we're both we're totally regulated. No, no you, you folks have been entirely fair with this process. I appreciate it. What? I'll come in and sign it. I will, I will ask. If, will the board authorize me to sign it? I will ask the staff to type it, and it will be ready by 8.30. 8.30. All right. You'll have a blue pen? They'll have a blue pen. They'll have a blue I'll, pen. I'll, I'm going to okay. have them draft it. I'll send them the language. <laughs> so who's coming in? I am. Okay. 8.30. No, this is basically what we do is authorize a signature for the Board of Selectmen. And is that for this evening? No, they're going to type in it in the morning and we'll sign it. I, can't, I, I, can't, I don't know where the letters are. All the letters on the, okay. on the uh, computer. So I don't yes. Know. All right. I, I, I know your point you're making. I know your point you're making. I get it. No, I, I never hear what you're saying. I'm just trying to protect you. So what do you want as the next item? Since you had said you have important stuff, uh, I don't think meeting minutes come in. Well, we have. Right uh, we're getting behind on those. So. Want another notebook? I got one Here's here. A, here, home business permit. Uh, renewal or? I, Julie Lord has said it was a renewal. I don't even know what the business is. I'm surprised it's not written on there. Anybody? Hey, does anybody know what Jules does? Julie Lord. I meant to ask what the business is, but. Well, we haven't had any 
you can play it <laughs> says it's a renewal. All right. I make a motion. We have plenty of business. Can you hear Carol? Carolyn makes a motion for us to approve the annual renewal, renewal, renewal for for Julie, Julie, Lord. Julie Lord at Jules at 30 Conway. Who's going to sign this? Yeah. It's a renewal. It's a renewal of something. Um, Some more money. A lot of people don't even get licenses. So. <laughs> All right, let's see. It says it. Yeah, 30 is on the other side. I don't know what it was, but we haven't had any complaints. Mm -hmm. Because we know about it. I can't type with one finger. Can we, <laughs> can we really sign this? Board of Health Use Only. Applicant number, permit number. Casey just handed it to me. Hmm? Casey just handed it to me. There's no place for us to sign, and it has to be signed by the officer of the. Oh, by Mary. Corporate officer. Mary has to sign it that she collected the fees, and then. Okay. We just voted. Let's just vote. Voted to. It's usually to form it. Yeah, we'll vote to authorize the renewal of it. Well, yeah, we'll vote Not to authorize. Not keep it track, but you already had one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We vote okay, to authorize so renewal. So won't, okay. there'll be no lying because it's on TV. <laughs> on it. Voted. Approved. we got to actually vote it, though. 11, Aye. 20, Aye. 13. Aye. All right. Aye. All right. The next. next thing. Yeah. Next. Yeah. I'll see if I can, uh, can enjoy it. This is the long awaited contract with the consultant that's going to do the feasibility study, the historic assessment and feasibility, structural feasibility study on the senior center building on the old grammar school. Um, and you feel comfortable with? Very. Thank you. <laughs> I know we had huge problems with. This is a different consultant. Yeah, I know. Who I've worked with. Yeah. Sorry? It's capital CPA money. CPA money. It's, it's, it's already coming, been authorized. It's, it's coming voted. $1,500 below the appropriation. Um, I make a motion we um, approve this long awaited person. Here, you can just. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Where is it? Uh, you haven't gotten down there yet. Which side is on the other side? Oh, it's on the other yeah, side. We haven't gotten to that right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, I move we sign the contract with Gregory Farmer for historical preservation study and structural assessment of the old grammar school, South County Senior Center for $8,500 $8, from the town's community um, preservation funds that have been already authorized. A second. You're slipping. Got it? No. <laughs> got to vote first. Yes. No discussion. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Wendy, for hanging in there and making sure this gets done. This has been All the hanging in there is coming up. <laughs> I know, but this has been really a lot, a lot. Thank you. That's been a little pain for a long time. Seriously. Thank you. Now we have the municipal agreement for the ambulance service. Okay. This is, the vote is... And I got this from Sunderland. It is not to sign the intermunicipal agreement. It's to, well, you see what the language is. That I, it's what Sunderland wrote. It's All to right. agree and cause it, basically. So. I move we vote to approve the agreement among Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley for the South County Emergency Medical Services Operation, including the deletion of the words non-voting member at the end of the sentence in Article 3, Transition, Item 2, and authorized signature of the agreement upon the approval of the agreement by the other participating towns on satisfactory completion of, number one, the terms of related building lease agreements for the primary building in South Deerfield and the reserve building in Sunderland, and two, the master inventory list of equipment. Oh, I guess that's it. Second. Wow. Okay. To Thank you. To Any further this. discussion? No. Yes. 
<laughs> well, we have the amended piece in that you brought up last night. I know. Night. I saw okay. that. Okay. Any questions on this? It's on the floor. This is a municipal agreement for the ambulance service? What, 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 if you're not signing the agreement yet, when we get those other two pieces done, the lease piece and the inventory list, they'll be attached. You'll have a whole document that will come back to you for your signatures. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we're... Voting to do this. To be yeah, the concept. I think it's to move the Board of Oversight like process, process along. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that, because that was like... Say aye. Aye. Uh, <laughs> aye. <laughs> Thank okay. you. What's in the Samson landfill contract? Uh, um, Sean left, but he, he was going to talk about that. It's been, it's gone through legal counsel back and forth with Weston and Samson. This is the contract for the landfill services, and it's for, I think, 70 something thousand dollars. Yeah, here it is. And how um, much was the contract with uh, Huntley? You know, I don't know because it's so old and it didn't get renewed over and over. Again. <coughs> so it's just. I think we're paying. Had to be appropriate. Had to be appropriated. It did have to be appropriated. It was just part of um, Sean's budget every year, so we actually didn't even appropriate it. Like we have contracts we don't appropriate. No, we, I don't, so I can't answer the question. I'm sorry. I wish I could. And how much is this going to be? This is uh, this is for the installation it, of the wells. Uh, Seventy-seven something. The contract, the the work that Huntley was doing at this point, or for the last many years, was simply testing right. and monitoring. This is for new installations, new I, testing, all of that. I'm going to go on record right now. I asked for an accounting of why we're doing this, and I asked for the hydrologist and everybody else to actually talk to us about why we would put wells in when the wells that were suspect are now pumping clean. This is ridiculous, it's ludicrous, and I can't believe that we're going to spend money for testing something that doesn't exist any longer. Uh, so Dick I would like someone from Huntley to come in and explain to me why and I asked for this up West from Weston and Sampson as to why we would put deep wells in to monitor something that isn't there anymore. Did, did we get the test results? Uh, actually, today I got a phone call from on the, uh, the um, Milnick well, and the dioxins in the well are nil. They're on the lowest possible reading of the scale that there is. And he's forwarding that to us. Uh, it should be in tomorrow. should have in Wendy's office tomorrow morning. And then he's going to take another test on Friday. Friday just to confirm it's just not a fluke. It's not a false reading. No. And we'll have that back next week. So which and well, what are you talking about? Which well are you talking Melnick about? Well. And then the one that, well. Yeah. But isn't that the one that proves positive on the, the start of this whole thing? Yes. And what, what can do you think we can meet with DEP again? Uh, Sean has already I, I had a conversation with Sean today. Test results are going to be given to him immediately, and he's going to call the DEP and have a conversation with them. Okay, so we, actually, That's we could. For can we then? Can we could just sit on this for a little bit, right? We can delay this. I, you, have to, you, have to ask, you should ask Sean about that because. Can we delay this, uh, Wendy? Then, if we're going to wait, I'm, I think he would say no, <laughs> but he was supposed to. You know, it, it, we just. He was but, here to talk to well, it the tonight. Been approved to town meeting, right, so. right. But the, I, uh, I know, but not, we but we need to. Until we get the full details, I think. Right, right. Well, I think we should meet with DEP again and say, you know, pending the test result yeah, on so Friday. Intelligence. Well, pending the test result on Friday is being Good luck. equally um, clean. Then it seems to me. Well, we you're going to have to wait another ten days. Or so, well, because they're going to take the other water test on Friday. That won't be back till the following Friday. So you've got ten days to two weeks to to wait. 
So okay. he just so, wants to be on TV. Um, <laughs> actually, then, uh, Mark, can we put this off? You wouldn't mind putting this off, I don't think, for two more weeks until we get the second test results so we can meet with DP. I would. Do you have Sean's number? Be totally in favor of that. Do you have Sean's okay. number? No. Is that okay I with don't. you? I don't either. Well, I'm perfectly fine with Sean, it because I don't see how call water now, flow from the piece. landfill yeah, is Sean, getting call way over in. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean. It's contrary to the flow of the. The, water the, in the, the whole point, the whole point of agreeing to the well plan and the was was to ha was to make sure the DEP did not give us um, an order. I and was only involved in coordinating the testing for uh, helping Sean get the well testing done because I. Well, then the I, will, I, will, I will. I will. I will take the responsibility then because I was at the meeting and the, we agreed on the test on the placement of the wells and, and a game plan based on the, the test but we've had since had clean tests and I would say that we should have another meeting so that we can have a new game plan that would be my feeling right that's how I feel I mean, we were willing. We came That's to the what table, to do. and we went to the and we went to town meeting. This is a contract to put wells in, not to have another meeting. Yeah, this is this is why I want to wait because this now we to have to spend seventy seven thousand dollars on something that is now clean. Well, we went. We we agreed. I mean, we went to town meeting, and we did get authorization for 80, up to eighty five thousand, which Sean put in a uh, a little bit of buffer in case there were some problems. But we shouldn't have to do that game plan if if the situation has changed so i think we should set up a meeting with dep briefly when i talked to sean today he said he had to call the dep to make sure everything was coordinated so i made arrangements so he'd get all the paperwork immediately when it came in so oh okay i mean about the test the results. test results yes okay yeah well then would you like to sign it and i will not send it until you are satisfied so hold it in abeyance and no I, i'm sorry i i i'm totally well upset I'm, by the fact that i sat in there a meeting with the the engineer sean and people in that meeting and i told them specifically what i needed to hear back from them and why we we're doing what we we're doing and I have not heard a single word or a peep from any of them. And now I have a contract in front of me to sign for something that I, you know, went out of my way to go to the meetings to listen to this stuff, to ask why we're paying for something that could not possibly have come from the dump and probably came from Irene. And there's nothing the town can do to fix it if, it, if they found it there. It cannot be removed. It cannot be fixed. If it's there, it's there. Put more wells in there to prove something makes absolutely no sense. And I didn't ask for a doctorate degree specification of it. I asked for just the common sense to be, or common courtesy to be informed of something that was being done. And it didn't happen. I don't want to sign it. I, I would be, as one person on the board, I would be very remiss if I signed this thing for somebody to implement it later on because that's just it doesn't I, I, make any sense I, I think we should have another meeting with DEP because um, you know this the reason for having this these extra wells is is now gone now there is some we might still have to do one or two more wells based on some of the other testing but it's not immediate and I think it's right. negotiable what, what we have right now is we have a company that did not do their job for a year we're picking up the pieces. We don't know what the problems are. We don't know what the trends are. We have no maps that tell us that this, any of these contaminants have gone up or down. We have nothing that shows us what we're signing money away for. And it may be very legitimate. I'm not upset with a legitimate thought process, but we asked for it, or at least I asked for it to come to the board so we could look at it together as the reasons why. None of this is, makes any sense whatsoever, and I feel that we are deserving of at least why we're spending that kind of money on something that does not add up or make any sense. Well, I think, like I said, Mark, the original 
rush was to make sure that DEP did not send us a letter where we had no choice. The idea was to be proactive. We showed that we were proactive. We had a plan. We went to town meeting. The tests now are <coughs> becoming clean, and hopefully the tests on Friday will be clean. And um, that will prove to DEP that we need a new game plan. And so hopefully it will be a reduced game plan. So, um, or, you know. Change well, Weston Samson tell you the select board us to the town something and then they did something different? No, it was Huntley. Huntley. It, it was a different engineering group. They didn't do their job. They didn't they didn't they didn't do any tell us anything and then all of a sudden a, a, a sample showed up that was seven months old or eight months old. They didn't file the paperwork and it showed a little increase in in the contaminant in a well on personal property, not in our town wells, but in personal property. Yeah, we don't even know if we did a sample. We didn't get a secondary test. We didn't get a reset. It could have been a contamination that somebody cross-contaminated. Mm -hmm. It could have come from Irene. It could have come from many different things. We didn't have any legitimacy. It could have been done, you know, in, in many applications. Mm -hmm. So all I was looking for from them was tell me how it got there. And if we don't know and we want to test around that well to see which way it came in, great. But they want to put wells up by the dump, which is across a stream mm -hmm. and across a roadway, mm -hmm. away from where the protect yeah, where it was, sense. where you know, and basically it actually had to go buy buy some other wells that weren't contaminated. I, from my point of view, I think we deserve a little bit of an answer as to why, and I'm. Uh, You're talking about DEP at this point, yeah. not these engineers. Not it's the DEP engineers. G the oh, DEP no. asked for this stuff, and the engineers jumped up and said, okay, yeah, we'll do oh, that for okay. you. No problem. We can do that for you. But I wanted to back off and say, hey, listen, why am I doing this stuff if there isn't anything that we can do about it? What happened is DEP, instead of sending a letter of, um, you know, telling us what we had to do, they agreed to meet with us and um, discuss stuff because they had some responsibility. They did not know that we did not submit the paperwork. And what happened is Huntley had a contract with us to submit the annual, for years, to submit the annual testing from the dump, uh, you know, transfer station. And um, they didn't submit the paperwork, and DEP didn't catch it for months. So, I mean, they were just as, had problems. And so we, 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 we change engineers to Weston and Samson. We, yeah, this is just. We, I'm not going to work tomorrow. <laughs> I know, poor Wendy. The bottom line is, the is town of Deerfield should not be responsible for you this. Made up some correct. Way. correct. We're yes. just moving Thank on, you. Mark. Yep. Mark, just move on. I understand. Okay, discussion and sign of the CCIC grant. All right. Mm. From three. Here we go. You After this, I can go home. <laughs> Did you give them a copy of this? Yeah, um, no, I have it here because I just had to redo it. Dick, why don't you just give us a quick summary? Because I, I already need to know. Look at this. You, you oh, need okay. to look at the numbers, but uh, this is for the online permitting. Online permitting. Because there is, it asks for. Uh, this is uh, number three. Cost. Number three. Yeah, this is the third one. So it's Dick, this is Dick's baby. Okay, short yeah, short version of the story is we've we've researched many online permitting scenarios. This is the same online permitting system that Franklin County's using. It's the same one Berkshire County's using. It's the same one Northampton's using. So they've got a lot of experience. Uh, Lennox is using it. I've, I've been to Lennox and viewed it. Uh, Wendy, myself, and Pat went to Pittsfield for a seminar on this. Uh, it looks good. Berkshire County, or Berkshire people. They also did a demo here for everybody. Yes, they did a demo here, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, and this is a very expandable uh, program, set of software. Uh, the grant that we can get, as you can see, from the building permit side is $11,297. The grant we can get for the Board of Health portion, if we choose to go with that too, is 10917 What it does have, though, is it has a commitment down the road that the, for a three-year commitment 
uh, fiscal 15 to 18, which, as you can see the numbers down there, we're, we're looking at winding up paying 6350 a year for building permits and 5300 for a Board of Health module. What this would do is would just store all our permits, reduce them all to uh, reduce them all to the computer and software, and they'd be printable back up, and it would eliminate our ongoing problem in our file room. Um, this this is also uh, can be the start of correcting our file problem, where we start with a cutoff date and we just start doing everything electronically and then worry about the files that are lingering behind later. So clerical wise, this would really support you? Absolutely. This, this would be uh, inspections can be done by the tablet and then just input into the computer just by plugging it back in when you get back. Uh, the ISO thing? The uh, ISO thing. Then. The, the ISO issue. Oh, yes. There's, there's one of the issues. We had an ISO insurance audit on the... They didn't do it for 10 years, and they've downgraded the town of Deerfield for insurance points for a new construction of buildings. So the people's insurance rates will rise on any new building that's built in town. If an industry or something came in, they'd have to pay higher insurance premiums. And one of our reasons for downgrading is the lack of the lack of total organization in the building departments, in the plumbing and the electrical departments. And we have we <coughs> had to come up with a plan to improve our conditions, which we've already got some points back through uh, some like educational credits that I had and through uh, checklist, paperwork, and we had to give them a game plan that how we were gonna bring uh, our permits on, you know, where they were retrievable. They've been, you know, not kept here at town hall. So yeah, all our permits are not at the town hall. Organize all of the permits. Yeah, we, we're, we're. Bills are at, home, at his yeah, home. We have things spread around, so. You don't have to say we're absolutely committed to We're not signing a contract at this point, but they do want some semblance of um, the board supports this and understands that uh, if they get the grant and we accept the grant that there's going to, there was a contract, but they know you, we can't bind town meeting, you know, appropriations. So it's, it's not yeah. that kind of. Yeah, we could get the grant and then you could turn it down at town meeting and we'd be, that would end it. I wouldn't quite put it like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty simple, isn't it? But what I understand is we're going to grant for $22,000, and then we're going to be assessed $19,000 for three years. For that, three that's years. the contract to keep it uh, maintained, updated, new permit, uh, you know, that the state might, whatever, enter new data, whatever, training. Whatever it has to. You know, it's, it's the maintenance contract that you have with any kind of software program. With the no, it's with, with this the company. company. Okay. Um, full circle technology. So are, we get it for basically nothing, but we have to pay. Yes, we get the fee. basically you get the first year for free. Yeah, well, the whole setup. Yeah, the, all the equipment. With the whole setup. Yeah, yeah, all the equipment, I all the training. But then it's eleven thousand dollars a year to maintain it. Uh, no, no, it's sixty three fifty a year after. But then you also for the board of health modules another. 53. Oh yes, yeah, correct. If you do that, what this also is, it can add on assessors modules. And all that, it can add on several different things. Maybe but how user office friendly and, is it? You know. It's very user friendly. It's for the add-ons. Yes. Okay. It's very. Um, work. Actually, work. actually, uh, most places have a computer terminal set up, like on the table here, that people can come in off the street and punch in their name and address and stuff, and get their. Uh, building permit uh, all filled out with all the pertinent information and it'll correct you if you make a mistake and that's it it's uh, very user friendly with software a lot of times yeah. you're told it does something special but 
doesn't work as That's what my question was. Can we back out of it? And if so, you use this you program? Except for paying your bill. <laughs> That's the other advantage. Somebody like Mike, a contractor, they input their initial info. Well, I hate it, but it, but it is really easy. It's just very frustrating when you're trying to put your check in. It, it gives you not enough time Which? to input. Unless you have your credit card, your checking account number memorized, it will out. Yeah, but I there's... I without permits, and I wait till they send me a letter, and then I mail them a check. But except for that, it knows They, once you enter, you once you enter the contractor information, it saves all his information. And so it's, yeah. Um, I'm glad you have some input. Um, I would make a motion to. S <laughs> I, I, I move that no, we. No, that was my question when I asked him how user friendly the apps were. Oh, we actually have a user. Well, the question was if, if you don't like it, can you opt out of it without. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No penalties. And can we retrieve, if you, for some reason, don't like it, is all that is information easily, easily retrievable, whether it be Microsoft Word, Excel, or Adobe, or something like that? Absolutely. So not, you know, it, no matter what, that's, that's 6300 bucks is a lot of money. This is the only um, permitting software that Dick has had. Any input that works, in. We've, and it well, works. Well, you can get out of it. In, yeah, in we've bought two systems that it's do not been, work. It's been in use by, and this is probably where you've had oh, access we've it's through the cooperative inspection programs, which serves how many towns for like four or five years or longer. They've worked the kinks out ahead of us. We're going through the Berkshire Regional Planning Council, which has been working with several towns. They're not part of a cooperative, which is why we're we can't do it. We're independent. Um, and they've been working the kinks out. So we're, you know, we're not the beta version, which is good. Um, I would like to see the, con the ongoing contracts be less, and I'm going to be talking to the, you know, if this goes forward, I'm going to be talking with the vendor about that. Because I think it may be high based on the number of permits from this past year, which were particularly high because of the buildings up at the academy and all of that. Yeah. So I've got my eye on that. Yeah. Very good. I move we, we vote to support and sign the CIC grant for the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission Multi-Community Building and Board of Health Online Permitting Program. That's the actual... Second. I have to scan that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. We don't have it yet. Yeah, I think it's expensive. Well, if he's working on that and it's a grant to get it started, I think it's worth at least running up to see if we can get it to fit I'm into the process. I'm going to check on that within the next day or two. The, the grants are due Friday, so I'm going to call the vendor okay. independently. Put that on my list. Do you, do you want me to read that, um, why they're signing that? Do you want me to just read that uh, letter? Let's see if it's okay. Yeah, and don't forget. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Okay, um, this is what Wendy came up with. It's, the town, like the Deerfield right Select Board does not oppose the siting of a medical marijuana dispensary in the medical marijuana overlay district as voted by the Deerfield Special Town Meeting of October 28, 2013, amending the zoning bylaw. And then it's just signed by you. Is that okay? I think that's. I'd what. like to add one word. What? Because it was a word that you put in there. That you put in. Uh, <coughs> town of the town of Deerfield Board of Selectmen does not oppose the siting of a medical marijuana dispensary. In. Dispensary in. The medical. But what you had here was. However, supports a medical. We don't oppose it, but we support okay. placing a medical dispensary, medical marijuana dispensary, in our areas. 
It's not that we support theirs. It supports, we support having one put in the district. Right. So you I, put somebody's. support right in here. That, it's, it's right in here. It says uh, we do not oppose no, it. I have to send that to um, I suppose that the site. To However, it. we support nope. a no, medical decision in the town of Deerfield. Getting good nights. Deerfield Select Getting Board does not oppose the siting of a medical marijuana dispensary in the me medical marijuana overlay district. And here it said it's in, you know, the siting of this. However, the Board of Select would support How about having we just one say in that the district, having a medical marijuana overlay. Why don't we just having say one that? In the overlay. How about the Deerfield Deerfield Select Board does supports the siting of a medical marijuana dispensary in the medical marijuana overlay district. That works for me. How about that instead? That, that's different than you voted. No, he, she had the word in there, and it, she said, "I do not. We do not oppose it. However, we support having one in the town. We do not support one. That, a, a person. We don't support a specific one." However, we do support having one in the town. That's not what the vote was. What was the vote? It says, it's, she did, <laughs> I, was, I asked several well, times, because what she said was we do not support this one, but we support having a facility in the town of Deerfield. And that was a word she used, and I questioned it twice because she had the word support in there. She said it's not opposition to this facility. All right, any why don't we just vote on why don't, we, why don't we clarify this by voting this letter? The Deerfield Select Board supports the siting of a medical marijuana dispensary in the Medical Marijuana Overlay District as voted by the Deerfield Special Town Meeting of October 28, 2013, amending the zoning bylaw. I agree to that. You. Is that your motion? Yes. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is it Corrected. Ready? Right. Yeah. The, the, the Deerfield Select Board supports. I want to go home. <laughs> the right. siting of a medical marijuana dispensary in the medical marijuana overlay district as voted. Yes. Okay. Very nice. All right. The next you more we have more grants. Do we have more grants? Yes. Yes. Two more grants. Oh, where are they? Um, I move we vote to support and sign the CIC grant for the South County Regional Emergency Services Program. Second. Um, what? Okay. So Mark has seen this, what I have here for you. This is uh, uh, this is, oh, okay. the budgets. Um, I'm just only working on the budget. We mm -hmm. still, I'm still working on this grant. This is what we did last time. <laughs> yeah. It's primarily equipment. Yeah. You're cool. We're cool. Right. I got it. That's no problem. <laughs> okay. Carolyn's the only one I don't think. Uh, I need a signature. Um, I'm fine with that. So you think 162,000? I think we're going what? higher than that. No, it's okay. <laughs> we don't want that on it's there. It's okay. Oh. Because it's going to go a little higher. We asked oh, for okay. modify yeah. it to take a little higher. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say that seems awful low, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are putting in some more. I'm okay. working on it on Friday, and it's due mm -hmm. Friday night at midnight. Okay. So uh, you I sign make that motion here. That we support it. And whatever you can come up with, okay. more money is better. Sure. Mm -hmm. If they'll give it to us. Thank you. Can you. Hang on to that. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, oh, okay. I'll hang on. Hang on to it. <laughs> okay. I, I'm an eye, too. Okay. All eyes. Where do you want, where do you want us to pr just do the bottom um, here? No, turn it around. Um, Sh it shouldn't be, should it be just marked because it's a regional one? Shouldn't it be no, just? No, each of all, we're going to have every board every member board sign it all time. Okay, out. so this here? Mm, well, I'll start. In. No, wait a minute. Hmm. Where do yeah, you want me to go? <coughs> mark, mark and sign here. Okay. And then you sign there somewhere. Else. Okay. It doesn't matter, actually. No, I don't care what the order is. No, we don't really pay attention to that. It's whoever has the paper first. But 
But she's going to make me sign anyway. I'm going to make you sign first anyway. Okay. I move we vote to support and sign the CIC grant for the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Collection and Recycling of Agricultural Plastics Program. Second. That was a, that was a success? Um, yes. Oh, great. I don't the, know all the details. They I just know, know there's the a tabs. lot more out there, but they said it was a, a pretty good success. Oh, great. Yeah. And I think it's only going to be like 60,000 or something. Now, this, this looks like it's just Mark's signature, right? That's, yeah, I, I prefer to have all, but that's what she's sending, just to have okay. the board. Um, I think it should be all three, but that's the form she sent me, so that's okay. why I printed out the three, three ones for you guys. Oh, we have to vote on it, actually. Oh, we just did. Did we? I'm sorry, I didn't vote. I voted yes. Then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, sorry, it's just getting, getting confused now. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get stuff now, too. Right. Should have waited to done that contract till the end. Do you want to do the minutes tonight, or you want to let them pile up? We still have to do the sewer abatement stuff. I make a motion that we uh, accept October 9th and 23rd as written. I am only honorably mentioned in them. I was not present in okay. either one of them, so... Right. You, uh, so I, but I, rec I make a motion because I am part of them. We went through this last time. One of you can vote on one. One of you can vote on the other. So you can only vote on the ones you were attending. I make a motion. We I approve was not both. One of them. Well, I can. I was at both of these. Those two are both. I was not at either one of them. I showed up at the end of one of them. Right. And Dave wasn't here last time, so that's why. I don't see why I can't make the motion. Yeah. And you can approve it, and then you can guys can vote, and I'll sustain. All right. Sustain. Or abstain. Abstain. So stain. <laughs> be stained. Whatever. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Those are done. Well written, by the way. Okay. Yes, thank you. There's a lot of detail. Um This is the bill this is abatements. You want us to do abatements first? Commitments and abatements. Yeah. I that came to me late, so I didn't know. Do we have the CIC grant for the multi? Only, only, I, only I signed that one. Oh. Okay. You guys voted and I signed it. Okay. It's the only one slot, so. Okay. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to, um. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. <laughs> Dave, thank you for your comments. I uh, very much appreciate it. I appreciate it. Good night, Dave. Long night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Um, so, what do you Can want I to write something about sewer? Yeah. I move we sign the uh, FY14 sewer commitment for $279,970.52. I second it. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Give me the last scone. Hmm? Give me the last scone. Can that appeal to you? <laughs> hmm? Apples, apples. Who's going to take all the apples? Yeah. Oh, I'll have some of John Eagles. I love them. Can I split it? <laughs> no, no. The John Eagles. John Eagles are my favorite apples. Okay. And then there's the. Uh, Mark, can you say, yo, Carolyn, those are really good scones. Carolyn, <laughs> both of them are very good. Yeah, she's quite, the, quite the baker. I know. I had we had a meeting earlier with the undersecretary that we were so we were just trying to bribe him with food. Oh, we're still on TV, you know. Oh, Come on, it's late. No one's we watching. Had, we had bribery going on here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> what other? These are really good too. Well, I want to take it home. Yeah, I'll wait till afterwards. <laughs> no, you can have one. They're really, they're really good. Yeah, they oh. are good. Mm. It's pumpkin. Yeah, like everything. Are you allergic to nuts? <laughs> are you allergic to nuts? No. Oh, good. <laughs> my well, both my daughters are. She I can't be. She attends all these selectmen's <laughs> meetings. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've done that. Yep. And then the, abate, and the abatements. The, the abatement. The motion oh. on the abatements as well. It's the second thing. This is the second thing. Mm -hmm. Um. 
I move we authorize the abatement of residential sewer counts of those customers whose winter consumption is above 125% for the FY14 commitment number one in the amount of $25,161.87. Now, I just had a question. Is this, uh, I went over this with Barbara. Second, yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, second. <laughs> Thank you. I went over this with Barbara, <laughs> and I, I think I understood what this was, but um, did you? Explain it to me. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I think what happens is what, it, it, they, we've just picked an average of 125%. So if um, our customers should have a, a reading that um, is almost the same, mm -hmm. but if it's anything above that, then they automatically get a rebate. But my question was, um, do you take into account, like, if somebody has a leak or something like that? I mean, nothing is... I taking into I account don't know how she, th this is a different slightly different you voted this the right. two of you voted yeah. this at your last meeting mm -hmm. I would it's differently different than the way that Bernie calculated it uh, Barbara calculated it she gave a rationale I can't answer that question I don't know I, ha I kind of have similar questions well the only reason I, I didn't have a problem with the thought process behind it. Uh -huh. But then afterwards, I was thinking, if someone has a leak, we're encouraging them not to, I mean, we're actually rebating to them. Right, but if they don't fix the leak before the next cycle, they pay double. I guess that's true. Very good reason. Yeah, actually, Mark, that's good. That makes so sense. It's, it's to their benefit okay. to fix the leak. I just hope they see that they had an increased consumption of water, which they will by their water bill. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they should go looking for it. Okay. I guess that's what, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. They would be able, they would, well, they would get penalized the next cycle. It's time if they for a public service announcement. Yeah. By the way, um, I hope that, um, and just put this out here, we, we are, we do want to put that notice in the sewer bills about um, what not to flush because it messes up the treatment plant. So I did put a, a Don drafted something and I edited it. So oh, good. that should be going out. So it's, a message from your sewer commissioner. Is it Has says, he so. looked at putting new impellers in with cutters? The second project. Um, say that again. New because with the, cutters on them. Yeah, because it's becoming more and more of a problem. I talked to a person that handles this type of pump, and he says they you can they have the impellers with the cutters on them now that will handle this when they do it. I don't know. We'll bring it up to him. We'll pass it along, but. I think um, I think it's better to encourage to them not to put it in things. on at all. Well, that's the best way to do it. But, you know. So, but I, I, cutters would save us a long, long run just to yeah. advertise that we have them. Yeah. Thank you. Next thing I'd like to take care of is the appointments. Who's the appointment? I move we offer the position of town clerk, treasurer, collector to Barbara Hancock at grade um, six, step one level of the employee classification plan. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No, I'm really excited that Barbara's willing Welcome to do aboard. this. Welcome aboard. Thank yeah. you very much. And okay. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make that unanimous, please. Do we have any other appointments or? I just want to say that we're, um, uh, we've advertised for Barbara's position and getting resumes in for that. And, Hopefully, on to the next. <laughs> I know the personnel board continued to meet, so perhaps we'll get something from them about the outcome of their meeting relative to the, if they continue to talk about the town administrative position and we're not doing with that. I'm sorry I missed that meeting. I apologize. I, you know. What? Oh, the yeah. Personnel committee meeting. I was um, over here. Can you send us a copy of your reports, email or otherwise? Well, the reports are basically all of this work that I put a million hours into. So right. I've been thinking about, you know, the, the, the long form update that you used to have. The parking lot, yeah. Um, and I, when I have some time, I'm writing, you know, I'm, I'm working every weekend, I'm working every holiday, trying to keep up with stuff here. We have a million people leaving, coming and going. I've gotten all these projects going now that um, we're not going. Mm. We're trying to get the green communities. And I say to myself, oh, I should do a report. This is my report. 
Your, your agenda is my report, so that's essentially yeah, it. Yeah, Unless yeah. you have a specific thing, sorry. No, nope. but I think that at this point you've internalized all this stuff. It's time for you to, to shepherd someone to help you either write a report or put things into order so that they understand what a report would be consistent of or give you some break from all the amount of time that you have to put in. You sh should be able to delegate this, some of that to. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is my report is this. I, I understand that. But I, you're I, you know, I, rather than write up when I just said sign this, you know, this is the compilation of the hours of work I put in. I drafted a contract. I spent hours working with the consultants and our legal counsel and their legal counsel putting a contract together. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry if I'm missing your point, but that's what I'm trying to say is that I, doing the, this is my report, is the quantity of work that I bring to you okay. at your meetings and, you know, and t giving you a report about we're, this is the hiring process and where we're at with that and what's you know, bringing that. I, a report would simply be writing it all up all over again on top of doing it all. So. Um, Your minutes uh, reflect that my my work. So I. <clears throat> I don't need you to submit back to us what you've done in your pile of all the hard stuff. What I'm missing is what do you need help in, and how can we help you? The report should be what are the obstacles and what things do you, we need to fix or tackle or something of that nature. You've got it all on your shoulders and well, I've, I've, put a lot more, I've, I've put a lot more time in to make sure that we have, I'm available to help you than I ever have in the past. But it's one of those things that if you don't have some mechanism to get us the message of what you need or some help we're going to burn you out before you get to February. I need, that's what the report I'm looking well, for. I'm not looking for you to recant what you I did. Think I'm not looking for I we need to decide what priorities, what the priorities are. I know, you know, it's budget season and I'm going to be sitting down with Skip and we're going to come up with a timetable and look at the, do look at the forms and, you know, figure out if they need changing and talk to Tom also about capital planning. Um, Skip came with, to the last meeting, sat through the whole meeting, basically saying he wants you to focus on that. What are your priorities? Forget exactly what his message was, but he basically wants the board to think about that too in terms of the budget process. Okay. So that's sort of your task. Um, um, and that would be helpful to the overall task of, of budgeting. I had hoped to be gone before budget season. I have more than enough to do without undertaking the FY15 budget. Um, so, I mean, we had that monstrous town meeting. <laughs> that was a tremendous amount of work. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get various personnel things through. I've been working closely with the personnel board. Um, um, I just I want know. to know. I, 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 you know, I said today, I said, oh, my God, would it be better or worse if you met every week? You know, I can't tell. Would it be easier or harder? Because so much, you know, I spend a tremendous amount of time putting the agenda together in your packets on Friday so you can come in and get them and have them and digest them before your meeting. Um, I, you know, it's still not you, clear uh, to me what information you want and what format you want it in before the meeting to make it work best for you. I you usually come very in. very prepared tonight, so, you know, I think it would, yeah. I usually come in. Um, on Tuesdays and or early Wednesday and pick up, and mm -hmm. so I apologize this week mm -hmm. that I just wasn't even around. Okay, yeah, and that's why I thought it was here because I, I, I know, and I and I usually pick it up, and that's why I apologize because mm -hmm. I'm wasn't really prepared. I, I, I <coughs> sir, is there something we can help on. you with? Oh, hi. Is, is the meeting still on? Or is this yes. yes. Oh, no, we're still on. Then, then, then I can Are you asking me whether you, you're, I should del you want me to delegate things to other people? I think I hear mm -hmm. that in part of what you're well, saying. Well, we're just worried that you'll be burned out. I'm burned out, you know, and rekindled and burned out and rekindled, so, you know, or whatever, how it goes. It's so. not fair to you that you spend that much time putting this stuff together, and I think you honestly, what you just said to me, you don't know what the priorities are, you but you don't ask. 
We can't give you what prior. We don't know what's happening. How can we but tell you what's a priority? You've been here for how many years? I just came in July. You have to tell me what your priorities are. I'm not. You know, you should assume that. Uh, you need to tell me. You're my boss. Okay. How You're many of the things? <laughs> how many of the things on the special town meeting did we know about before they hit here? Before they hit when? This building. This room. They came the day. The day People of. just piled on. You know it before we know it. We can't give you a priority if you know something we don't know. You're asking us to give you priority and guidance on something we have no idea exists in that office. No, Mark. Mark, uh, I think this is getting out of hand. Uh, we just Excuse feel me? really bad. We just feel really bad that no. you're working so hard, mm -hmm. Wendy. Well, it's two different things. I, I, I hear that, and I hear what Mark is saying. She's, there's no yeah, blame. What do it's you want on fault. your agenda next meeting? What do we have? Our agenda usually consists of what comes in that office between the meeting we have tonight right. and the next meeting. I don't get a shopping list of what it is that we're dealing with until the end, until after your agenda comes out, I get a notice of what mail came in the office. David calls me almost every day and asks what's going on. So that's what you want? Is this, you want I don't know. What, what do you want? What works for you? <clears throat> is that I don't, you know, and also what would be best is what would work for all three of you yeah. consistently, not like do one thing for mm -hmm. Carol and one thing for Mark, one thing for David. I don't think that would. Well, I thought we were doing it for the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. It's not for any of the individuals, it is for what the Board of right. Selectmen needs That's to do. So and this is a part that bothers me because I haven't figured out how you get the horse on both sides of this train. I can't make judgments on what is important if I don't know that it exists. Now, David can call in every morning and talk to you, and you can tell him everything. You see. Then I can call in, and we can talk about the same thing you talked about, David, and Carol can call in. So we've now, we've now consumed three times, a, three times the amount of time to get the message of it, and you still don't have any I, idea what's important. I send emails out all the time. Um, what... What are you asking? What, how would you, what works best for you? What would you like? I, I don't know how to inform you. I, we don't have a mechanism for that. Or if you did, I was not told what that is. Do you want to end this meeting? <laughs> Poor kids want to go to Yeah, bed. we can conclude and continue to talk and not make, I, deliberate. No, I, like I think that we've broke some pretty good discussion areas, things to talk about, mm -hmm. and how we're doing it to think about it, because I'm obviously on a different page, and and I, I need to get back my head back around with what I think needs to happen. Um, so, sir? Two. Can you? I, I think we voted um, that it's available to anybody. Yeah, Wendy is doing it up right now. We can sign it. Oh, actually, no. Mark is coming. It's going to get coming. typed up in the, by the staff in the morning, and um, and Mark is going to sign it. Yeah, it was copies. not a letter of support. It was a letter of support for a to place a dispensary in our um, overlay district. Mm -hmm. Now, who are you? Terrence Noonan. I'm here with uh, a new leaf and now incorporated. We were on the, we were on the agenda. Um, yeah. We removed ourselves. Um, but I heard that. Um, he did stuff with it. And, um, make sure that there was time in the morning to actually grab a couple of questions. Thank you. You're welcome. No. No, we do appreciate that. We do support it. and. Unfortunately, as far as we can go, is that we support the concept in our town. So there. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Y'all have a good night. You okay. too. Me too. So yeah, come. I don't. Eight thirty-nine. You have to get the applications in, I guess. Yes. So they'll be in. 
I'm going to leave it for the staff to type up in the morning, and Mark's going to come and run 8.30 to sign it. Wonderful. Thank you. 8.30 9 o'clock. I, yeah, I'm assuming Casey will be in regular time, so I'll leave it on her chair. Mm -hmm. It's not ready yet. Ask someone else to do it, because that's <laughs> yeah. what it's going to be. All right. Thank you. So I'm not going to be in there. Great, we're going. You'll that be signing it later was. today. The letterhead wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we keep going. You know, we didn't have any letterhead. It was in the computer. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. So I, st I still don't know what you're wanting me to do. Or how you want me to do what it is you want me to do. I have a regret about the special town meeting. We should have closed it a week earlier, and we should have had a meeting to discuss that. Yeah. Absolutely. That was a mistake. Yeah. And there was such a pile on about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, are, you t are we still on? <laughs> I make a motion okay, we're to, still on. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> so, do we, do we um, do this before we I don't regret, adjourn? you know, I don't want to say this in public. Mm -hmm. You also have the warrant to sign. Oh, oh yeah. We have to Sorry. appoint. Well, we don't have one. What? Oh, we have I'm to sorry. Point. Can we make an appointment to the South County EMS oh. Transition or Board of Health or Board of Oversight? Yeah, last time you only appointed one, which is and you get you. three, and and this sort of with this approval, I think of this non yet fully signed off on IMA, you can no. de no, designate on, your on, board of oversight. On the note here, it says that you think the fiscal agent should be the town administrator. That's my recommendation. This is not. I don't particularly want to do it, but I feel like it should be the person who really is knowing what's going on with the money and the setup and the yeah. hiring and the you know all of the internal. Someone should be paying attention. Yeah, and I, yeah. I don't see how. I don't know who else it could possibly be. Okay. Your decision. I'm fine with that. There's been some talk about appointing. I think I've mentioned this at an earlier meeting. Some talk by the other town administrators about having alternates, and I think I did bring this up, and you were not supportive of that idea. But who wasn't, wasn't supportive? I don't know. I came away from a meeting. I think it's great. I think it's great. I think we should never miss. We should. I wanted actually. I wanted an alternate okay, because so I wanted to make sure if so Mark couldn't come, somebody would come. If Dave was interested, he should. So that could be brought up at the board of members, the next transition meeting or whatever we're calling it. I wanted to make sure that we had someone always there. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn. So. Well, nobody. nobody took it, so it went, it went belly up oh, okay. at this point. What about so I guess it, huh? Do you want to? Uh, the other towns have appointed their two. Yeah. Do you want to appoint the appoint? town administrator as a fiscal rep agent? A non -verbal. I don't. I don't have an issue with that. You know, it's originally. I my do, and I don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, originally I was thinking that either the town accountant or the Administrator should be the fiscal agent. Well, the, the town um, is the uh, fiscal uh, agent, uh, but the because we're the fiscal agent, you get to make another. You may get to make three appointments to it. Right. So you have already been appointed. Right. You, you get another one, probably be the EMS director. It's to your, your decision. The fiscal component is going to be run by the town. Yes. So they're going to weigh in on what are. The mechanics of the process. The fiscal agent, the person who's supposed to be looking at helping with that, could be a, the fiscal, could be the clerk or the uh, whatever, or it could be just anybody who has a financial mind that can help administrate the process and understand how it all works. Hmm. I don't have any problem with the town administrator being that person at this point in time. I don't either. Do you have an opinion? Oh, I, I was fine with the, yeah, having the town administrator. I said that in the beginning. Because I think someone should pay attention. Matt, did Matthew um, so, turn down the appointment? I'm not aware. You didn't so, appoint him. Make a motion. <laughs> didn't want to be. I make a motion that we appoint Mark Gilmore. No, he already has been appointed. Well, <laughs> reaffirm Mark Gilmore, uh, Matt Russo, who's our ambulance director currently. And then our fiscal agent is uh, Wendy. 
Well, the also, position of town administrator, right? And I town also, administrator. Um, I'm not your fiscal agent. I'm I'm the fiscal agent's rep. rep and rep. since Deerfield is the fiscal agent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I also. Um, we still on? About, can I appoint We're you? We're still on. <laughs> can I appoint you as the alternate? We haven't got an LT. We don't yeah. have that yet. Yeah, we're, we're going to go ask for that. Yep. Oh, that's okay. going to be an, agenda, uh, an item that we add to, right. the, to the MOU. All right. You, you wouldn't mind, Dave, would you? No. Okay. I just think it's important. Um, before we go, so this check is for um, tomorrow night? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, oh. And um, the other thing. So who's supposed to bring the... Um, and when are you guys going to bring the, um, the gift? gift for Apple? Would you? I'll try. Okay. And then Casey wants to know who's going to the MMA annual meeting. I think I've already been signed up. Uh, she said no. I was the only one that had told her. I told her. Oh. When it first came out. David, are you interested I told her as well? That was going. Okay. So. All three. You should really you go to bring the, Bonnie. Yes. Dave, are you going to bring your wife? Do I have to? Oh, wait a minute. We're on Davey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm a single. My husband, my husband can't go. That's too bad. Okay. So you're. The only reason my wife wants to go is because somebody's daughter might be there. Oh, well, so. she will. <laughs> single, double, double. David. I'll put her in the double. My daughter can sleep with her. <laughs> I'm still stuck on Mark's. Can I, can I have thing. a uh, motion to I think adjourn? He's just feeling bad for you. I'll second it. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think he does. All those in favor? Aye. Quite the issue. We're done. Is there someone who's not working enough?